have a list. I was asked earlier by Senator Revilla, in fairness to him. The list will include Senator Villanueva, number two, Senator Revilla, number three, Senator Dawson, number four, Senator Pangilinan, Sen number five, Senator Pacquiao, number six is Senator Marcos, number seven is Senator Poe, eight is Senator Ontiveros, nine is Senator Go, ten is Senator Caetano, eleven is Mr. Pimentel, twelve is Mr. Angara, thirteen is Mr. Villar. Senator Villanueva, go ahead. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. And uh, first of all, let me thank you for this opportunity and uh, for calling for another hearing. Let me also state for the record that in the very, very first hearing of this committee, uh, I share the sentiments of our Senate President, Minority Floor Leader, and yourself, Mr. Chairman, because uh, during that first hearing, we already asked for this uh, listing, Mr. Chairman, if you would recall even the uh, medicines that are about to expire or expired uh, where they are in the catch-up plan of the OH. But uh, we will continue to wait, uh, Mr. Chairman. I'll go straight to the point, Mr. Chairman. Let me first ask uh, Mr. Wang Zhu Yen, the chairman of uh, Farmally uh, Pharmaceutical Corporation. Sir, are you there? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Yes. My, my, my first question, uh, just for the record, you are the chairman of Farmally Pharmaceutical Corporation. Is that correct? Yes, Mr. Chairman, that's correct. Yes, and it was incorporated in September 2019. Is that a correct statement? Yes, Mr. Chairman, that is correct. Yes, and uh, in the uh, um, 2020 audited financial statements, you uh, submitted that uh, your total assets in cash is 599,450 pesos. Uh, this is uh, reflected in your 2020 audited financial statements. Is that correct? Right. Um, I am showing you the uh, a copy of what you submitted uh, yes. after audited uh, financial statement. Yes, Mr. Chairman, that's the number reflected in our Thank financial you. statement. Thank you. In the same, in the same manner, let me show you what you submitted. No? Uh, I, I couldn't see anything like loans or uh, disclosed loans in the 2020 audit financial statements. Not, let me go to last hearing. Last hearing, um, in the Blue Ribbon Committee hearing, September 7. Excuse me, 20... excuse me, uh, Senator Villar, I didn't mind to uh, want to disturb your train of thought. There's uh, an echo coming in. It sounds like a Chinese guy is interpreting. Do you have an earpiece, Mr. Wang? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm, I'm, I don't need an interpreter. I'm fluent in English. I think. Uh, uh, what about that headphones? Uh, is somebody dictating to you what the answers you're going to be giving? No, no one. I don't. I think it's coming from uh, um, this from my screen. It seems is uh, DOH ten director Joe. So some there's some noise coming from there. Not me. Okay. Uh, will everybody please unmute or rather mute uh, DOH ten? I can see director Jose R L. Uh, can you unmute please? All right, can you uh, go to mute? Lacuna? Jose Lacuna, please mute. Go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I, don't, I want them to... Thank you, much, Mr. Chair. Thank, you. Thank you very much. So last hearing, let me just point this out. Last hearing, I was reading at the transcript of the last hearing. Mr. Lau made mention, hindi po, um, uh, when, when a question was asked, whether advance payment was made by the government to formerly pharmaceutical corporation before delivery of goods and uh, mr lau uh, answered saying no uh, despite we are authorized to make advance payments we constrain ourselves from paying advance payments in fact we only paid full payment to formerly after full delivery after inspection and after acceptance by doh now my question sir uh, being the chairman of formerly pharmaceutical corp how did you finance the April 14, 2020 initial order of 2.4 million pieces of face masks totaling 54 million pesos? Um, I, again, as I showed you earlier, I did not see any uh, uh, loans, uh, financial loans in your uh, audited uh, uh, financial statements uh, submitted by Farmily. Um. Yes, uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, um, it, to answer the question, I, um, when I first started the comp, when we started complaining with my partners in pharma, pharma pharmaceutical cooperation, um, the goal 
we were a startup, we didn't envision the need to infuse a lot of capitalization as um, the primary business was to introduce good pharma companies to come invest in the Philippines. So that is that. But Mr. Chairman, you are not answering my question. My only question is how did you finance? Because it is very clear, I showed you earlier, 599,000, you submitted uh, your uh, 2020 audited financial statement, 599,000. You, you and Mr. Lau said, uh, uh, they, they, they only paid you after the inspection and acceptance by DOH. This is just the first order, Mr. Chairman, first order amounting to 54 million pesos in April 14, 2020. So I wonder, where did you get the money? Um, to answer your question, Mr. Chairman, we have access to the inventories of our of suppliers. And what we do is we negotiate a preferential um, payment terms with these okay. inventory with these suppliers so that we can get the hand the stock at hand. Mr. Chairman, let me just place this on record. If again, if I may show you the audited financial statements, it doesn't say anything about your inventory. In fact, if you look at the 2019 up to 2020, there's nothing, Mr. Chairman. I just want to uh, put that on record. Another yes. question that I'd like to ask there. Yeah, what is the answer? Mr. Mr. Chairman, what uh, is the answer? Mr. Chairman, if I may. I, when I refer to inventories, I didn't refer to the company's inventories. We have access to the supplier's inventories so that we can relocate these supplies to deliver first. So, Which was not reflected, Mr. Chairman, in their 2020 audited financial statement. Again, Mr. Chairman, if you look at the supplies, the inventory, uh, it's not there, Mr. Chairman. As I made mention earlier, this is just the first order. 54 million, yung mga succeeding orders po, ho, no? Let me just go continue, Mr. Chairman. No? Uh, let me Mr. ask Chairman, you. Mr. Chairman, the indulgence of San Joel. Yes. The chair. The is. indulgence of San Joel. Please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, with the permission of Senator Joel, uh, Senator Rivera, try to try to let the the uh, our, our colleague uh, finish because I think unless you have something really paramount to come in, go ahead. Uh, it directly related. Uh, well, he may be laying the predicate for that question, so I would like to ask you to let him finish, so you can come in later, and I will allow you. Okay. Is that okay with you? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think he was moving to uh, another question this earlier, but uh, if if not, uh, send Joel. Then I will. It was a follow up to the question that you had just asked. Okay, yeah. Can Can we so let him finish, and then you can make the follow up? I will allow follow up. Thank you. Go ahead, uh, Senator okay. Joel. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Senri. So uh, I, I would just like to uh, yes, uh, lay the predicate here. No? Uh, another question that I'd like to ask is, if you have employees at Farmally, sir, how many employees do you have? Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, we have seven full-time employees. While during the course of our transactions, we, we employ ad hoc employees so that the deliveries are timely um, Timely delivered. Just seven, Mr. Chairman, just seven employees. Yes, Mr. Chairman, we have seven full time employees on our payroll. But to, to facilitate with all the deliveries, we do hire ad hoc employees to in terms of packing and um, um, delivery. So we are very nimble in that aspect. Okay, seven full time employees plus probably you hire a, a contract of service job order employees. Do you pay SSS, PhilHealth, pag ibig contributions, uh, uh, Chairman uh, Yen, Chu Yen? Yes, Mr. Chairman. But for our full time of, for our full time yes. I think we believe we pay all the necessary benefits. Oh, that's 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 what you believe, sir. No, because I have uh, uh, documents here stating that you have zero contribution to government mandated contributions of. Uh, PhilHealth, Pag-IBIG, and SSS. And so at this juncture, Mr. Chairman, may I request the uh, committee to uh, uh, request, if not subpoena, this uh, 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 documents showing proof, Mr. Chairman, showing proof of payment by uh, 
formally of government mandated contributions. May I understand you're asking him to submit documents of proof of payment. Yes, Mr. Chairman, because I have documents here, Mr. Chairman, that states that uh, not formally uh, did not uh, pay or uh, uh, contribute, Mr. Chairman, to this uh, government mandated contributions, SSS. I think, I think the gentleman is well within his rights to confront him with your statement, and if he says no, then he's lying. So can you show him the document that says he's not, uh, he's not been paying, they're not been paying? Yes, well, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Um, it is the same document that we receive, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, from uh, the Blue Ribbon Committee. And uh, uh, as I asked the question a while ago, the chairman of Farmally made mention that they are paying. That's correct. Uh, the SSS and the uh, Pag Ibig and the PhilHealth, Mr. Chairman. If he approved to the contrary, he just confronted him. And if he says yes, then he could be liable for false testimony. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, I, I have here with me, Mr. Chairman, but I am not sure if I'm allowed to, to share this uh, in public, but uh, uh, with your permission, Mr. Chairman, I, I, I can show it. Uh, Go ahead. That, that uh, if you look at the annual income tax return, Mr. Chairman, the SSS, GSIS, PhilHealth, uh, zero po ito, Mr. Chairman. We can show it if you, if, if you may. All right. You have been confronted with that uh, incontrovertible proof that you have not paid your contributions. What do you say, uh, Mr. Wang? Um, Mr. Chairman, allow me time to collect the records from our company to show that we do, as I recall, our, our company do pay for this welfare. But let me provide and collect these records to counter that um, statement. Well, you've been confronted with your income tax payments, which include all your expenses, including GSIS, SSS, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct, Senator Villanueva? Yes. Yes, Mr. Uh, I think the certified public accountant is here. I will give you all the, uh, uh, what is her name? Uh, will the CPA of Farmali please speak up? Illuminada. Yeah, yeah. Ms. Illuminada. Ms. Illuminada Sebial. Sebial, opo. Nagbabalit po ba ng SSS, GSIS? O oh, SSS, hindi GSIS. SSS at saka uh, hindi lang tapin natin uh, pag-ibig. Yes, Mr. Sebial, please answer the question. I will check there, sir. I will check... Uh... After this, sir. Excuse me? I will check for. You respond. I'm sorry. I will she will check. check. She, will check. she will check. Would you mind taking your mask off? Ikaw lang ba na dyan? Para hindi tayo mafold. Yeah. I will check the record, sir. Mr. Mr. Chairman, can I make a manifestation? This is Senator Villar. Yes, you recognize. Okay. You know, I'm in business. Misan kasi yung kumpanya, distributor lang of a bigger company in China. So you cannot expect them to be big, but they can deliver a lot of products because they are doing it in behalf of a bigger company in China. They don't really have to pay. They just get a commission for what they're doing. So we just make sure that this Farmali is uh, really an operating company that takes the risk or they're just distributor from China. Kasi yung mga nadinig ko before, parang nanggaling sa China yung mga product. Parang sila lang dito sa Pilipinas ang nag, uh, nag uh, ano tawag doon, nag bid ganun. But actually, the one uh, uh, providing the capital is the bigger company in China. So uh, it is really uh, a model also, a model also, and that should be considered also. Kaya hindi kailangan malaking malaki yung kumpanya dito kung sila ay distributor lang na isang malaking kumpanya sa China na yung taga China ang nagpifinance ng lahat ng uh, mga product nila na ibebenta dito sa Pilipinas. I just want to clarify that because that is a business model also. 
So I just want to clarify if that's how they do their business or they're really the supplier. I, I am just, ano, kasi nasa business tayo, nakikita natin yung ibang kumpanya, ganyan. Hindi naman sila malaki sa Pilipinas. They're just uh, representing a big company in China that wants to do business in the Philippines. I just want to have it clarified para maliwanag tayo. Oh, or they're the one uh, doing it or they're representing a big company in China. That's all. Thank you very much. Your point has been made, and I, I think Senator Joel was just asking whether they pay SSS to their Filipino employees. That's mandated by our laws, Mr. Chairman. And perhaps it's also uh, important to note whether formally is just a middleman, uh, Mr. Chairman. Again, uh, the records will show, and I have, I have shown you the record, 600,000 yung uh, uh, kanilang uh, assets, capital assets, cash, pero nakakuha ng bilyon-bilyon na uh, uh, proyekto. So, I I'll go to that, uh, Mr. Chairman. No? But I think it's important to note na importante yung tinatanong natin, Mr. Chairman, last hearing, nabanggit natin yung mga nawalan ng trabaho. Ba, nangyayasasif ko rin. Nawalan ng trabaho, <laughs> hindi pa nagko-contribute sa ating uh, government-mandated uh, contributions. Anyway, Mr. Chairman, uh, I will uh, continue if I may, uh, Mr. Chairman. Just a moment. I just want to put it on record that the question is appropriate because you're asking them as a company doing business here whether they do pay SSS. It's not a question of whether they're an agent or a distributor or whatnot. When they have employees, they should pay the SSS. That's your point, isn't it, uh, Your Honor? Yes, Mr. Chairman, you are correct. All right, the point has been made then. Okay, uh, continue. Uh, Mr. Wang, are you going to speak up? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I do. We do have records of our company paying for SSS. Uh, I I not entirely sure to which specific welfare, but based on my recollection, um, all proper welfares are should, should be paid to the employees for our company. Well, you will appreciate the fact that I asked your certified public accountant, and she still has to check, and you have to check. That's a simple question. Uh, now you can answer. In Tagalog, dapat alam mo yan. You should know. Because kung di mo alam yan, then you're a poor businessman. You're, you're a little businessman, sabi nga ng Senator Villar, pero ang hinahawa kang pera, you're, the money that you're, uh, you're being paid by this government goes to the billions of pesos. So your littleness doesn't have anything to do with your obligations to the little people of this country. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, um, we are here to ferret out the truth. Kung meron pong dokumento, uh, we will be happy to look into it because what we have right now, uh, as I mentioned earlier, wala po. No? Uh, let me continue, Mr. Chairman, by asking our PSDBM, perhaps uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, former PSDBM Undersecretary, Christopher Lau. Um, can I ask you, Mr. Lau, you're there. Mr. Christopher Lau. Present. Yes. Present. Yes, sir. I would just like to ask you, ano ho yung uh, kinakandak ninyong due diligence uh, uh, para ho pumili ng uh, supplier natin? Uh, sino po yung in charge dito? Paano ho yung proseso nito? Because at the end of the day, this is in aid of legislation. We wanted to find out if the system works, if there are lapses in the system, and how we can improve the system. Okay. Okay. Um... We get documentary requirements based on the law. Um, during that time, um, wala pong requirement ang bayanihan one. We just um, got some guidance based on the previous law, which is a procurement, procurement law, which is RA9184. Uh, so basically, we ask for the income tax return, the omnibus sworn statement, uh, the mayor mayor's permit and yung mga technical requirements po na bibilhin namin that they should also have uh, submitted it in technical specifications. Other than that, there is no requirement by law. So that's basically it. Uh, uh, sir, you may mention about your examination of perhaps financial statements of the company. Did you say it uh, uh, right? Word statement lang po. I'm and sorry? Omnibus uh, so yung um, financial statements, hindi nyo chine-check yun uh, as part of your process in checking the financial statements of a bidder? Hindi po required yun, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so it's not required by law. And uh, I, even sa regular procurement, hindi po siya required. 
So, but don't you think it is important, sir, to find out if the supplier can actually supply? Because I have here with me itong uh, 2020 audited financial statement ng uh, Farmally. At makikita nga po natin dito, no, hindi lang kaninang binabanggit natin yung capital kung hindi. For example, sir, uh, ito sa 2020, ang kanilang uh, capital ay napakaliit lamang. Pero dire-diretso pa rin po yan, no, 2019, 2020. Tapos 2021, nakakakuha pa rin po sila ng uh, mga kontrata. No? Uh, did you clarify the following figures before awarding formally several document deals? For example, 33 million in donations, 1.35 million in salaries. Let me focus on that. 1.35 million salaries. Kanina, oh, binanggit nung chairman, may lima, pito silang uh, empleyado. No? Sa buong taon, that's only 1.35 million. Kung meron kang CEO na making about 100,000 pesos plus 13 month pay, that's 1.3 million na already. So parang uh, isa lang ba yung uh, empleyado nito? Kaya nakakapagtaka yung uh, uh, pitong empleyado na full-time plus yung mga pinapasweldo pa ho nilang iba. Hindi yung ba ito kasama sa uh, pinag-aaralan uh, bago i-award ang isang uh, kontrata? Um hindi po siya part of the documents, uh, Mr. Chairman. So, hindi po. Okay. Yes. Um, yung field jobs po, hindi ba kailangan may field jobs na, na part sila? Because field jobs actually accredited them. In fact, I think in June, naging uh, platinum po sila. Si sino ba in charge ng field jobs? Um, Director Rosa is in charge. Um, but during that time, Mr. Chairman, hindi po kasi siya required under Bayanihan 1. Mm -hmm. Um, so it, we did not make him look into that. We only looked at the basic documents uh, that uh, for us to assure us, uh, kahit hindi yung required ng batas na to get documents, we just check on it. Uh, mayor's permit, ITR, and OSS. Ang basic po na guidance talaga namin during that time is to get the items delivered and to protect the interests of the government. We refrain from parting our money. Hindi yung kami nagbabayad. That's the Again. Safeguard na ginawa namin. Yes. Hindi kami magpapayad until ma-deliver. So if yes. they don't have capacity... Binanggit niyo po yun and uh, I agree with that, sir. No, And I agree with that. Uh, again, uh, we are here to uh, improve our system. Uh, now that this has happened, uh, do you think it's important now that we look into this? Because I think uh, parang uh, common sense siguro na kailangan tignan to because you can easily figure out that there are red flags already just by looking at the audited financial statement. It is upon the wisdom of the legislative department, uh, Mr. Chairman, to do. But if you are to be asked, would you say it should be? Your Honor, we just implement what is under uh, the law. Kung sa wisdom, it's we rely, rely on Senate uh, to legislate the laws. Sige, I'll, I'll, I'll ask the field jeps, no? Kasi ano pa yung uh, ginagawa ng field jeps? May screen ba talaga nila? If, if, if I may ask who is in charge ng field jeps? na screen po ba nila? Kasi if you look at this uh, audited financial statement, easily eh, you can, you can, you, you, you would have these question marks sa iyong pag-iisip na kaya ba nilang mag-supply? Mag itong, itong salaries and wages, 1.3 million, uh, bibigyan mo ng 8 billion na kontrata, etc. Baka nga, uh, dito pa lang, makita mo na middleman lang ito, uh, Phil Jeffs. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon. Your honors. Uh -huh. uh, with regards to your question, uh, actually the, the field jobs office, uh, the field jobs registration is not an accreditation. Uh, you can see that under section uh, mm -hmm. Actually, ano pong ginagawa ng field jobs? Ma'am, ito na lang ho. Anong protection ang inyong binibigay para sa ating mga taxpayers to ensure na legitimate at maayos yung nabibigyan natin ng kontrata. Kasi no, noong pong June 8, 2021, in fact, uh, in-upgrade nyo pa ho to platinum status yung uh, formally. Hindi ko alam kung ano yung basis for that. Actually, the, we check the completeness of the documents as required under the IRR of RA 9184. What is required is the Class A eligibility documents to include the registration certificate, which is the SEC certificate, mayor's permit, tax clearance, 
the audited financial statement stamp, stamp received by the BIR. And then there's also should be accompanied by a sworn statement in a form that is prescribed by the policy board that documents submitted are complete and authentic copies of the original and all statements and information are true and correct. So, so ma'am, ma'am, thank you for, for us, saying that, no? Yung list na binanggit nyo, hindi ko kasama dun sa list na yun yung uh, financial uh, statements ng isang kumpanya? It is included, audited financial statements, stamp receipt. And, and, and that's my question, because looking at it, hindi ko ba kayo nahinala itong financial statements na sinabmit ng Farmaly? Uh, we, 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 and at the same time, ma-upgrade. Na-upgrade po sila to uh, uh, platinum. Actually, we don't check the uh, so, hindi yun, hindi sila, uh, for, for anyway. sale for a while. We don't check the, the document as to the uh, if they are financially capable or if they are technically huh? capable. Uh, what we check in the system is the documents are complete. A merchant's registration under the the field ships is not contract specific nor understood to be tantamount to finding an eligibility. It, Hindi it, it, check kung kaya nila i-deliver yung kanilang pinapangako. Sir, it is the box responsibility. Uh, the uh, field ships is uh, just a registry of suppliers. Uh, it and, is a repository of documents, and, sir. And that is the reason, Mr. Chairman, I'm raising this because Parang wala din pong nangyayari na screening talaga, no? Let me go to the last point. With the permission of uh, Senator Villanueva. Yes, Hindi please. Hindi ko chinet At sinabi ni Undersecretary Lau na yung mantra nyo, basta nagsabit sila, parang sinasabi niya, bahala na si Batman. Eh kung talaga hindi makadeliver, nakita niya maraming kung hindi nakadeliver, sino ang lugi? Sino ang lugi? I mean... Yes, yes. Di ba malulugi ang tao? Mr. Ah, Mr. Lau? Pag hindi sila naka-deliver, Mr. Chairman, they will oh. not be paid and they will be blacklisted for a year. I, I don't care about the blacklisting. That is why you have to look, do your duty, due diligence. Hindi ba? You have to check the financial records, you have to check the technical capability, and uh, you, have to technical, uh, you have to check their capability to deliver. Di ba? Kaya nga may two envelope eh. You check the technical capability, you check the financial capability. Kung hindi na sila pumasa doon, talo sila. Pag hindi nyo ginawa yan, eh hindi nyo ginagawa ang tungkulin ninyo. Medyo napupundi ako doon sa sinasabi nyo. Hindi ako nagagalit ha. Sinasabi ko lang, para naman yung niloloko yung mga gumawa ng batas dito, na yan ang patakaran, hindi nyo sinusunod. Eh kung hindi nga nag-deliver, ay, ah, iba blacklist namin sila. In the meantime, bali wala sa inyo na madidelay. Una, may delay na pagka hindi na naka-deliver. Alright? Now, with the permission of Joel Villaleva, let me just ask somebody that I invited here. Raymond Abrea, are you there? Mr. Raymond Abrea? Mr. Chairman. Uh, can you please... Uh, there you go. Alright. I heard you on TV the other day, and you said you had a critique. I will give you with the permission of Senator Villanueva just an overview for the senators and for the public. And if we can say it in Tagalog, mas maganda para maintindihan ng tao. Tama ba yung mga ginawang procedure? Yung bakit tayo kailangan na uh, uh, nitong mga... Ano kailangan din ba? Sabi mo, only registered in September 29, 2019, pero what was able to engage in government procurement immediately. Tama ba yan? Opo, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if you will allow me, I have uh, prepared three slides. Para sure, po magunawaan ng uh, committee at ng ating mga kababayan. The permission of my colleagues, para ma 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 maliwanagan natin kung ano talaga ang ground rules at yung mga taong nanonood, maliwanagan yung ground rules. Go ahead, sir. Mr. Mr. Chair, 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 Chair uh, ito po yung tinatawag na basic due diligence or uh, financial analysis. Mr. Chair, uh, just uh, a clarification. Mr. Pangilinan, uh, can you please allow me to finish with this? No, with I just want to know and... what is his expertise? Uh, it was not He's a CPA. He's a CPA. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. So, yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, 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 an accounting firm. Go ahead. Ito po, uh, dahil po nga dun sa inquiry ng media, uh, binigay po sa atin ang mga uh, dokumento mula sa SEC. 
at ito po ay uh, inanalyze ng aming uh, opisina at ako po mismo ang uh, nag-aral. So, uh, sa basic due diligence for financial analysis, importante po na maunawaan natin yung basic company background. Sino ba yung kumpanya na kung saan kanino tayo makikipag-transact? At dito po sa usapin, uh, malinaw po formally pharmaceutical na narehistro lamang nung September 4, 2019. Uh, sa kanila pong line of business or industry, G46421, ito po ang ibig sabihin nito, sila po ay nagrehistro bilang wholesaler. Hindi po manufacturer, kundi wholesaler ng mga medicinal at pharmaceutical products. At malinaw din po sa kanilang primary purpose na sila po ay importer. Meaning pwedeng mag-import ng mga produkto, pero hindi po nakalagay sa kanilang notes to financial statements kung sila po ay nagkaroon ng importer's license. Ngayon, sa kanila namang pong principal office, Malinaw po at kahit sa previous hearing sinabi na Port Victoria Tower Bitagig City pero ang opisina po ay hindi uh, nakadeklara bilang asset ng kumpanya or kung ito ay inuupahan dahil wala pong lease agreement or rent expense na kinlame ang uh, Farmali uh, Corporation. Pagdating naman po sa mga incorporators, importante po ang mga personalidad o ang uh, management ng kumpanya na nagtatransact tayo Uh, tatlo po sa kanilang incorporators ay uh, nagdeklara ng parehas na residence address. At uh, ang napansin po namin sa Articles of Incorporation, uh, ang kanilang mga TIN number or tax identification number ay narehistro lamang mula 2016 hanggang 2019. At si Jay Garado ang pinakahuling nakakuha ng TIN uh, or tax identification number noong March 5, 2019. Ano pong ibig sabihin nito? Ibig sabihin po, uh, itong taon lamang sila nagsimulang magtrabaho or magnegosyo sa Pilipinas dahil importante po ang TIN. Alam po ng lahat ng ating kababayan kahit mga empleyado or minimum wage earners. Pagdating naman po sa kanilang puhunan, ang initial capital, which is malino, uh, na, alam na po ng lahat, 625,000. Gusto ko lamang po banggitin na nabanggit naman ni Senator Villanueva na kapag ikaw ay importer, uh, ikaw ay dapat may uh, letter of credit or sa banko, bank to bank ang transaction, uh, wala pong disclosure kung ano po yung banko nila at uh, kung nakakuha sila ng letter of credit para bank to bank ang transaction sa pag import ng mga goods. Hindi rin po nakadeklara kung may related party transactions or may nag nagpondo mula sa ibang kumpanya uh, na related sa Farmali. Uh, sa nature of business po, malinaw po na... Hindi po alam kung saan ang galing yung perang 625,000. Ano po, Mr. Chairman? Hindi po alam kung saan ang galing yung perang 625,000 pesos at tatanungin mo ngayon kung saan nila gagamitin yung pambayad sa gobyerno. Opo. Yung, uh, But, uh, uh, yeah, opo, go ahead. Mr. Chairman. Sige po, sige at the nature of business po, at kung tayo ay makikipag-transact sa kahit anong kumpanya, siyempre titignan natin ano ang kanilang resources. Bilang uh, wholesaler, dapat mo may inventario, may equipment, or may warehouse. Pero sa kanila pong uh, audited financial statement, pat katulad po ng kanilang opisina, walang lease agreement or walang rent expense na kinlame at hindi rin naman po siya nakadeklara bilang asset ng kumpanya. Um, Siyempre, importante din na malaman natin ano ba ang produkto o serbisyo ng kumpanya na Uh, kung saan tayo makikipag-transact, wala din pong nakadisclose kung ano ang kanilang produkto. At kung ito ay imported goods, gusto ko lamang pong klaruhin dahil sa mga kumpanyang tinutulungan natin, kahit po sila may problema sa BIR, hindi po nila isasarado dahil mahirap pong kumuha ng importer's license. Dahil maliban sa talaga may background checking and BI clearance, i uh, kailangan patunayan mo nasa ang opisina, i-ocular ang warehouse, may proof of financial capacity, may bank certificate at dapat i-endorso ng uh, district collector ng customs. So hindi din po malinaw sa kanilang uh, notes to financial statements kung sila po ay nagkaroon ng ganitong, uh, uh, kung sila po ay nakapag-secure ng importer's license. At sa customer naman po, uh, syempre high risk po ang kumpanya na, na walang, list, uh, walang masyadong kliyente at sa pagkakataon nito parang lumalabas, gobyerno lang ang kanilang kliyente, kaya yung TILJEPS, uh, registration ay mahalaga dahil doon manggagaling yung tax clearance mula sa DIR. Ito po ay company background lamang po para po mas maintindihan ng ating uh, komite at ng mga kababayan natin kung bakit dapat uh, uh, bigyan pansin yung uh, audited financial statements. Lahat po ng kumpanya ay uh, nagre-registro at namumuhunan. Uh, sa accounting po, tinatawag yan na accounting equation. Dapat po mapatunayan natin po ano yung mga resources uh, at saan ng galing o yung sinasabi nating sources. Sa pagkakataon pong ito, noong 2019, nung sila ay nagrehistro, ang kanilang pagmamayari o resources ay uh, ang 625,000 na cash investment. So, dun po nang, yun po yung kanilang kapital. Ang uh, dapat po malinawin ng komite is tulad na nabanggit ng ating uh, buting, mabuting Senador Villanueva, 
nung sila po ay nag-purchase ng 7.2 billion based po sa kanilang notes financial statements, hindi po naging malinaw kung yung 7.2 billion ay ilutang or uh, additional investment dahil wala po sa kanilang notes to uh, financial statements. Ulitin ko lamang po na karamihan sa mga importers gumagamit ng letter of credit. Maliban na lamang po kung sila po ay may dollar account or may account doon sa bansa kung saan sila nagtatransak para mas mabilis ang pagbabayad or transaksyon pagdating doon sa negotiation ng presyo at pagbabayad. Pagdating ng uh, pagtatapos ng 2020, mula 625,000, ito na po ang kanilang na-accumulate na assets. Bigyang pansin lang po natin yung sinasabi natin na inventario. Required po sa Bureau of Internal Revenue na isumite kung nasaan po ang mga inventario at ang halaga nito. Uh, wala pong deklarasyon kung nasaan po ang warehouse at kung, at kung ito po ay registrado sa BIR dahil hindi po tayo pwede magdeklara ng inventario kung wala pong inventario. So yung 121 million na inventario, uh, hindi po malinaw kung nasaan siya dahil wala pong uh, warehouse na nakadeklara. Pagdating naman po dun sa sources sa kanilang uh, 2020 audited financial statements, uh, meron silang 1.7 million na diniklarang uh, liability pero mas uh, malaki din po ang diniklara nilang deferred tax. Ibig sabihin po buwis na hindi pa binabayaran, nagkakalaga na 17.88 million uh, pesos at ang kanilang kapital 284. Hindi pa po ito yung financial highlights or analysis. Uh, punta po tayo sa pangatlong slides. Uh, dito po mas mauunawaan natin na yung increase na 44,000, 149% ay uh, hindi po normal. Hindi po ito, uh, sana po lahat ng kumpanya, ganyan ang nangyayari, na sa malit na puhunan ay malaki kagad ang kapital. At hindi ko po sinasabi na ito ay illegal o uh, suspicious. Ang sinasabi lang natin, hindi po normal. Hindi po ordinaryo na nagkakaroon ng ganito kalaking uh, increase. So pumunta po tayo sa financial highlights para mas maintindihan natin kung bakit mahalaga na tinignan natin o pinag-aralan natin yung financial statements ng uh, kahit anong kumpanya na kung saan tayo magtatransak. Mula po sa 625,000 capital na paulit-ulit na po natin narinig, sila po ay nagdeklara ng 7.5 billion sales. Ibig sabihin po, meron po yung halos isang billion na value-added tax na babayaran kung wala po silang kinlaim na input tax. Pero base po sa kanilang... Uh, Balance sheet, audited balance sheet, sila po ay nag-claim pa ng excess, excess input. Ibig sabihin, mas malaki pa yung, uh, hindi, hindi, uh, maaaring hindi sila nagbayad ng VAT at uh, BIR po ang pwedeng mag-check uh, niyan kasi po uh, audited financial statements lang ang ating uh, tinignan. At ito po ay nagresulta sa 265 million na profit. Ibig sabihin po, uh, sa kanilang 5.25% na margin bilang uh, wholesaler, sila po ay kumita ng 265 million profit or 42,344.24% return on investment. Uh, maaring tama po yung isang uh, senador na sinabi na uh, kahit malitang uh, puhunan, pwede mag-transact ng malaki, pero hindi po naging malinaw kung paano po nila pininance o uh, pinatakbo ang kanilang operasyon. At ang isa pa pong uh, source ng income nila na dapat bigyang linaw ng komite, yung tinatawag yung diniklara nilang foreign exchange gains. Kasi po wala po silang pera pero nagdeklara po sila ng uh, halos isang uh, daang milyon na foreign exchange gains. Ibig sabihin po sila po ay may uh, foreign currency. Uh, 29 million po ang nasa notes to financial statements at ang kanila pong sinasabing uh, unrealized foreign currency, uh, foreign exchange gains ay umabot ng 63 million. Kaya po sila nagdeklara, kung maalala nyo kanina dun sa accounting equation, nagdeklara po sila ng 18 million deferred tax. Ibig sabihin po, hindi pa po nila binabayaran itong tax na to dahil unrealized pa yung foreign currency gains nila. At ito po, uh, ang uh, 265 billion, sila po ay nagkaroon ng uh, provision for income tax na 113 million. Mapapansin po natin na 30% corporate income tax ang ginamit nila dahil uh, nag-file nag sila bago pa ang effectivity ng create law. Pero ang nabayaran alam po nila ay 95 uh, million at meron din silang kinlaim na excess tax credit or sobrang withholding ng uh, gobyerno kung, kung gobyerno lang talaga ang kanilang kliyente dahil nag-withhold po ng 2% ang kliyente. So ito po yung sa income side. Pagdating naman po dun sa expense or cost side, ito po yung uh, kanina natin binanggit sa 625,000 na capital o puhunan, sila po ay nakapag-import ng 7.2 billion na purchases. Mahalaga pong malaman kung anong panahon o buwan na import ang mga uh, inventaryo na to dahil nagpasa po tayo ng Republic Act 11494 or Bayanihan 2 at base po sa Revenue Regulation 28-2020, 
exempted po sa VAT, sa excise at sa ibang fees and other fees ang mga import, uh, ang pag-import ng mga COVID-related supplies and equipment. So, uh, wala po sa disclosure kasi kung ano kung kailan po at ano yung uh, schedule ng 7.2 billion na purchases. Uh, pero meron po silang kinlay na 17 million freight duties, taxes and brokerage fees. Siguro po uh, customs po makakapagpatunay kung ito pong mga expenses na to ay nabayaran at ibig sabihin may importer's license po sila kasi po may mga kumpanya na nakakapag-import pero walang importer's license dahil dumadaan sila sa broker or may ibang kumpanya na nag import para sa kanila at binabayaran na lamang nila ito. Kung ito ay inaalaw ng customs or hindi, uh, customs lang po ang makakasagot nun. Uh, then sa liability po nila, medyo dapat lang pong uh, bigyan linaw ng auditor dahil sa kanilang cash flow statement, meron po silang uh, diniklara na 61 million na liabilities. Pero pagdating po sa balance sheet, note, note, to financial statements number 10, 1.75 million na lamang ang kanilang liability. At dito po, lumalabas, merong 1.5 million na advances from customers. Kung ang kliyente lamang po nila ay gobyerno, ibig sabihin advances from government po. Yung nasa notes uh, to financial statement number 10 po. At lumalabas po, 200,000 ang kanilang accounts payable or pagkakautang sa kanilang uh, supplier. Then sa kanila naman pong uh, capital expenditure, mula sa 625,000 na puhunan na cash, sila po ay nakapag-invest ng uh, 13 million na motor vehicles. Hindi po malinaw kung anong motor vehicle ito, kung ito po ba ay motor-motor siklo, sasakyan. Wala pong deklarasyon. Uh, at dapat po meron kasi dinidepreciate po siya. Uh, then container vans worth 250,000 pesos at uh, computers worth 276,000 pesos. At uh, ang isa lamang pong dapat bigyan linaw din uh, yung kanilang uh, sa salaries, uh, alam niyo po sa Bureau of Internal Revenue required din po ang mga kumpanya, katulad namin, na magsumite ng alpalis ng kanilang mga empleyado. Sila po ay nagdeklara ng 1.4 million na salaries pero ang kanilang donations ay umabot ng 33 million at ito po ay subject sa 6% donor tax unless otherwise mapatunayan nila na ang mga donasyon na to ay may kinalaman sa uh, COVID or sa BIR accredited uh, foundation. Bakit po ito nakalagay sa financial highlights? Kasi po 79% ng kanilang operating expenses ay naging donasyon o donation po sa nagkakahalaga ng 33 uh, million uh, pesos. Uh, ulitin ko lamang po ito po ay basic due diligence at uh, pag-aaral ng kanilang audited financial statements. Wala pong assumptions or wala pong ibang informasyon na ginamit kung hindi kung ano yung nasubmit sa kanila sa Securities and Exchange uh, Commission, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Sisimplihan ko lang. Itong mga patakaran na ito na kailangan kumuha ka ng import license, siyempre mag inward remittance ka. Tama po ba yan? Opo. Wala naman silang pinakikita kundi 625,000 lang. Tama po ba yan? Tama po, Mr. Chairman. Ay, yung sabihin yan, para makapagpasok ka ng madalaking uh, talagang tambak-tambak ng mga, ng mga face mask o PPEs mo sakasakali, Ito lang, dapat pakita mo, saan ang galing yung pera ang pinambayad mo para makapag-import ka? Tama po ba yan? Tama po, Mr. Chairman. So kung wala silang may pakita, pwede bang pumasok yan sa tinatawag natin, nabibigla na ako, ah, arm money laundering? Na, pero kung di na may paliwanag, saan ang galing yung pera yan? Na, pwede mang galing sa droga yan? Tama ba yan? Hindi ko po masasagot, Mr. Chairman. That's the question. I'm just speculating. Biglang may pera eh. Ang pera mo, 625,000, magpapasok ka, makakapagkuha ka ng negosyo na 7.2 billion ang biglang sales mo, nakakapagdonasyon ka, wala ka namang income na pinapakita ng 10 million, nakakabili ka ng mga coach na 30 million, eh saan kaling yung pera niyan? Yan tatanungin ng dapat ng ating mga uh, gobyerno, di ba, ng BIR, ng customs. Tama ba yung sinasabi ko? Oh. Tama po Mr. Chairman, uh, pagdating po doon sa komento niyo ng uh, money laundering, uh, alam ko po ang mga banko po, uh, uh, inaalam po nila kapag biglang may malaking uh, amount na pumasok o tinransak ang kahit sinong uh, kumpanya o depositors. Mr. Chair. We are aware of that. Pero the point that I'm trying to say, kaya mo pinakaya kita pinagpaliwanag niyan para makita kung bakit ginawa ng gobyerno itong mga patakaran na ito at time share to have three years na import license bago ka makakuha, right? Kailangan pa kung ito ng taong ka na nagninegosyo. Ito, naging corporate ang September. By uh, six months later, nakakuha na sila ng malalaking kontrata. Tama ba yan? Tama po, Mr. Chairman. At para makuha nila yung kontrata yan, kailangan dinudiligyan siya, nilalaw, at saka nilalihong 
O oh, sabi ko kukunin yung pera mo? Ang laki-laki ng kakaya mo ba yan? Di ba yan ang due diligence sa dapat? Lawyer yung mga yan eh. Yun po ang due diligence, Mr. O Mr. Chairman. So sa mga din, talagang sa tingin mo, salat sa due diligence? Uh, base po sa aking uh, mga records or uh, information na nakuha, uh, obvious po kasi yung mga dapat tinanong at kinlarify, Mr. Chairman. Pero hindi tinanong. Kaya ngayon, Nakabili sila, napahirapan pa yung mga Pilipino corporations na nagbabayad ng lahat ng buwis. Pag pumasok sa import license, napapahirapan. Pero ito, sa isang kisap mata, kwarta na. Dahil nakakapag-import na sila kaagad ng napakalalaking halaga na hindi pa may palawanan. Sa palagay mo, saan galing ang perang yan? Ikaw ay CPA. Saan galing ang perang yan? Uh, diba? May mga pagkakawa ka ng... Pwede sila yan, di ba? Dealer, di ba? Lumalabas, dealer. Opo, wholesaler po. Opo. Wholesaler. Kung wholesaler sila, dapat may pambili ka. Dapat may letter of credit ka. Pagka nagpunta ka sa banko, hahanapan ka ng letter of credit, anong pambabayad mo sa letter of credit? Tama ba yan? Tama po, Mr. Chairman. So, sa makatwid, kung ikaw mahirap, hahanapan ka lahat ng letter of credit, hahanapan ka ng pera para makapag-import ka. Kung wala kang koneksyon, lalo kang patay. Tama po ba yan? Tama po, Mr. Chairman. Mahirap po makakuha ng letter of credit, dapat po may pera ka sa banko. Eh yeah, kung, ay, kung wala kang pera sa banko, ang tatanayin ko ngayon, may pera ba sa banko yan? Yan ang mahiwagang tanong na susunod. Tama po ba yan? 625,000 po. 625,000. So, hindi ako, na, 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 hindi ako natutuwa. Na, nakukuha lang ako na, para bang napakadali? Napakalakas itong bagyo ito na makakapasok na walang pera makakakuha ng kontrata tapos hindi pa tayo nakakasiguro nagbayad sila ng mga sinasabi ng mga uh, buwis nakakapagbigay ng donasyon kaliwat kanan at uh, tapos eh uh, itong mga abogado ng uh, PSDBM si Warren Leong excuse me Mr. Warren Leong you're a CPA lawyer certified public accountant and lawyer yan ang nakita ko sa iyo kaya ako medyo naasiwa eh ha? ito si Lau lawyer Ha? Lawyer, nagturo pa sa Ateneo de Davao. Eh naku, diga Ateneo ko eh. Pare-pareho sistema namin eh. Ano bang wala nang uh, mabilis masyado? Pero tanongin ko kayo ngayon, sa tingin mo ba dapat pinayagan niya kung, nag, kung naggawa ng due diligence yan? Kahit na nagmamadali pa tayo, kahit na talaga nagkakamatay na tayo, papapasukin mo lahat kaga dyan ng 7.5 billion, kamang gano'n, unti-unti kunyari, 54, sa 54 million pesos ba? na ang kanilang kinita nung una, yan ang lumalabas sa aming uh, pagsusuri, ang kanilang unang kontrata, 54 million. Dapat ba sinuri na yung kanilang kakayahan? Dapat po, Mr. Chairman, kasi sa importer's license pa lamang po ang financial capacity at uh, bank statement ay required po base po sa kanilang uh, uh, website, Mr. Chairman. Now, kung 54 million pala, palpak na. Tapos sa sumunod later on, mga billion-billion na. Di ba? Papakita ko sa inyo yung mga kanilang... Uh, uh, importation, di ba? Uh, yan, oh. Ang una kanilang kontrata, surgical mask, na nakakalaga ng 54 million. Uh, si Lau ang usag dyan, ha? Yung force, eh, April 16, surgical mask, 500,000 quantities, 13.86 million. Kakikita ba nila yan? Oh, yung April 20, surgical mask, 10 million. Oh, lumabas 220 million. Di ba? O, oh, tapos sa import sila ng 75 thousand six hundred million umabot na sila ng 887.86 million tuloy-tuloy yan hanggang umabot ng hanggang sa maba nag-import na naman 688 million umabot na ng 1.5 billion yung April 2320 umabot na sila ng 1.875 billion na suma total at pagkatapos hanggang May 8 umabot na sila ng 5.6 billion panang yung supply nila supply na supply walang nagtataas ang kilay walang nagsasalamin para makita nila yung kanilang sinasabi at kapat, makita kung kanilang working capital ay sapat sa kanilang press contract. 624,000 ang kanilang unang kontrata. Wala man lang kung nakalusot doon sa 624,000. Paano naman nakalusot doon sa 54 million? Paano nakalusot doon sa mga kontrata na ang pagkalalaki na? E talagang pabaya o may kooperasyon ang government authorities. Will it be unfair for me to conclude that or for the Senate Blow Removal Committee to conclude that? Sir? 
Ah, uh, pwede niyo pong itanong sa kanila, Mr. Chairman. Well, ang kinakausap ko kayo, kinakausap ko ang bay- taong bayan. Ang taong bayan dapat nakikinig kung paano talaga biglang yumaman dito sa ating bansa kung ikaw ay konektado at kung ikaw ay talagang kapal mox na hindi mo papansinin na naghihirap ang tao, ipapasok mo na ipapasok yung mga gadyang pera at wala kang kinakatakutan sabagkat hindi ka na-check ng customs o kung hindi ka na-check ng BIR, hindi ko alam, sila sabi ko lang yan, hindi pa ako dumarating doon, pero nakarating na ako kay Lau. At narinig niyo yung sinabi niya kanina, hindi kailangan eh. Meron kaming bayanihan Lau, doon ka nagtatago. Ang sagot ko dyan, kaya tayo may two envelope rule, technical at saka finances. Tama ba yun? Titignan mo muna yan. Tama po ba yun, sir? Tama po, Mr. Chairman. Pag bumaksak ka doon sa finance, talo ka na. Pag bumaksak ka sa technical, talo ka na. Tama po ba yan? Tama po, Mr. Chairman. At hindi na hindi na sususpindi yung batas na yan kahit na tayo ay nasa COVID pandemic. Sapagat walang kadipidipensa ang mga tao natin. Kaya ngayon, hirap na hirap tayong lahat. You are a certified public accountant. Saan po ba galing ang pera ng gobyerno? Hindi po ba sa mga taxes, sa sin taxes, lalo na sa health? Tama po ba yan? Tama po, Mr. Chen. So, madaki yung tabalala, kahit na sino ka pa, dapat babantayan mo yung perang ibibigay sa iyo sapagkat ang lumalabas dito, laway lang ang kapital at pagkakaibigan lamang ang kapital, kikita ka na ng limpak-limpak. Kaya ako ho, ay eh, talagang nagugulat. Siguro nagugulat sa akin ang Pangulo, nagugulat sa akin lahat sila. Dahil ba't ang lakas ng dating natin dito? Hindi ako nagmamalinis po. Ang sinasabi ko lang po, hirap na hirap ang bayan, biglang kikita ng 7.5 billion itong Singaporean na si Leong, ah, si, itong si Lau, yung kanyang tatay na nawawala ngayon, hindi niya makita, tinanong ko siya ng isang araw, nasa ang tatay mo, hindi niya makita ang tatay niya. At hindi man lang nagtanong, tama po ba na dapat tanungin, isang pindot lang makikita mo yung family sa Taiwan? Papayagan niyo po ba kung kayo nakaupo? CPA lawyer kayo, katulad kayo na ni Attorney Leong. Tama po ba na papayagan niyo, nakita niyo, Merong stock manipulation? May warrant of arrest? Papayagan nyo? Mr. Chairman, hindi po ako abogado. CPA po. O, oh, di ba? CPA ka. Okay. Kahit hindi ka abogado, kahit hindi ka CPA. Pag nakita mo, ang laki-laki ng kontrata na ibibigay mo sa kanila, tama po bang ibigay mo pa rin sa kanila kahit nakita mo na na sila ay may warrant of arrest? I'm sorry, I'm laying it on you. You don't have to answer. Ang sasagot na yung mga tao na nanonood. Nakikinig. Thank you, sir. Salamat ni Sir Chairman. Uh, uh, Senator Villanueva, I'm sorry, Senator Villanueva, I just wanted to lay the overview para maintindihan natin lahat kung where we're going. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. And just to uh, uh, join you, Mr. Chairman, nakakadismaya po and thank God we have uh, Sir Mon Abrea here to uh, to uh, crystallize itong ating mga pinagtutuunan ng pansin. And uh, again, We are not picking on any uh, particular company, not even formally. Ang gusto lang natin ipaabot sa lahat ng kumpanya na gustong magsamantala sa kaban ng bayan, eh meron po tayo mga sistema na supposed to be, gaya ng sabi ni Sir Mon, may mga basic, these are basic uh, things that you need to check. At uh, kitang-kita ko, may mga red flags pero wala hong nangyari. No? Uh, Uh, we are here again uh, dahil gusto nating bantayan ang ating mga sistema. One last point na I would like to uh, to, to ask Mr. Chairman, yung process po, no? I've been talking about the process, the system, how we would be able to improve. If you look at PSDBM, uh, gusto ko lang tanungin yung PSDBM, uh, whether yung current or yung dati, si uh, dating USEC Law. No? Uh, tinitignan ko po ito, yung, ano ba yung process of inventory management of uh, PSDBM? I wanted to find out which division is in charge of the delivery of uh, procured items. Mr. Chairman, if I may be, please be allowed to comment. Please, please, sir. Uh, the For the de- delivered items, Mr. Chairman, it's under the operations group. Once mm-hmm. we receive the procured items, common use supplies and equipment. We store it at our warehouse, Mr. Chairman. And if there is a demand from our regional depots, we ship it to the regional depots. As to the DOH requirement, 
we delivered it directly to the DOH warehouse po. Okay. Thank you, sir. Gusto ko lang tingnan niyo po itong table na ito. What, what's DB, PSDBM's explanation for the unavailability of an average of at least 31%, eh? 31% of its stocks of common use supplies. Binanggit na natin for so many hearings. Ano ba yung common use supplies? Ito 31%, no? Uh, kung titignan nyo po yan, ayan, yung dyan yung monthly na, na, na nakalagay, ito yung mga stocks, etc. Pero ang average po is 31%. There are 308 items listed as common use supplies and equipment on the PSDBM website. Pero an average of at least 96, 96 of the total 308 items were not available per month. Hindi ko pa parang ito yung dapat na ginagawa ho ng PSDBM supposed to be, di ba? Para mag-bumili, mag, mag ito yung uh, uh, inyong mandato, bumili ng mas murang halaga para makatipid ang gobyerno dahil bulk yung bibili ninyo. Pero kung 31%, hindi naman available itong mga common stocks. Parang ano yung ginagawa natin? Uh, Mr. Chairman, that is actually what we are addressing. Uh, it can it cannot be denied that there are out of stocks in 2020. Uh, the pandemic really did have an effect on our uh, operations, considering the lockdowns imposed and the logistical issues attending our deliveries to the uh, regional offices. <laughs> You don't deny this data, this this particular uh, data, the 31%. One third, Mr. Chairman, one third of its common use supplies are unavailable. Hindi ba ito dapat yung practice na I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I could... the, my, the question is you don't deny these figures. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Okay, Mr. Thank Mr. you for that. Mr. Mr. Chairman, let me end by asking... Uh, uh, our chair of the Commission on Audit, uh, Chairman Aguinaldo, who I uh, respect so much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Ang dami na ho, nagdaan itong mga hearings natin, no? Panlima na po ito. Nakita natin of PSDBM, how they're doing their job. One-third of its common use supplies are unavailable. Ala, rinig na natin, Mr. Chairman, yung pagta-transfer ng funds para makaiwas doon sa... Uh, para hindi uh, bumalik sa treasury, ipapark dun sa DBM at bahala na kayo, kayo na yung bumili para obligated na. At uh, yun ay naging nakagawian. And uh, Senator Drillon even mentioned yung PITC, ganun din po. No? Uh, pangatlo, yung supposed to be na savings, hindi natin napikita dahil mas mahal pa nga yung supplies na nabili ng DBM nung uh, ibinebenta na and lumabas din po yan last year. So ang tanong ko lang po sa ating uh, COA chair, uh, Chairman Aguinaldo, epektibo pa ho ba itong uh, PSDBM para gawin itong mandato nila? Baka dapat eh, i-abolish na lang natin ito? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I don't know if I can speak for the commission when <laughs> I say this kasi medyo opinion na yung hinihingi nyo eh. Although personally, uh, from what I've seen, parang I, I would join the... Um, I think there are several bills that have been filed seeking the abolition of PITC and PSDBM. I think it's it's high time that we look at how we procure. Um, the, one of the criticisms of uh, Republic Act 9184 is, is, is that it's too focused on accountability at the expense of efficiency. So, mm -hmm. maganda siguro may konting balance, no? Um, you know, balancing efficiency with accountability. So, I, I would support um, the, the, the measures that have been filed, and I would be very willing to provide some suggestions on uh, changing the nature by which we procure um, common use supplies in particular uh, to make it less, perhaps, susceptible to you know, um, any kind of uh, alleged corruption or, or, or the like. So, yun lang po. Um, and uh, I, I, again, I, I support the bill and I would be very willing to provide some input uh, for the consideration of the uh, Honorable Senate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman Aguinaldo. I think it's loud and clear. Kung hindi natin nakikita na ginagampanan ng ating mga ahensya ng pamahalaan, gaya ng PSDBN, nabanggit nyo rin yung PITC, 
eh, abolish na lang po natin to and I'm in full support of that if that's the case. Nakikita ho natin dito, parang tinatanong, dapat tanong natin ulit sa kanila, what are we here for? Kung kung ano yung dahilan, bakit nandito tayo? Nandito tayo para bantayan ang kaban ng bayan. Kung hindi natin ito nagagawa, hindi nakakatipid ang ating mga ahensya, hindi nakakatulong ito sa ating mga ahensya, then we might as well abolish this. So maraming salamat, Mr. Chairman, for your patience. Uh, dear colleagues, I know a lot of my colleagues would ask uh, questions. Maraming salamat sa ating mga resource persons. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. God bless. Thank you very much. Uh, with the permission of uh, share, uh, the uh, our colleagues, uh, I just want to ask... Uh, Para tuloy-tuloy ang trend of thought, if I may. Uh, let me ask, uh, ay sinasabi ko lang, tama pala ang ginawa ng COA. Na talagang ma masita sila. Now, uh, may I ask Mr. Wang, because of all these statements made by our resource person, Mr. Wang. Mr. Wang? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. It has been established that you are the importer, correct? Yes, we are the, the, the business functions of families for the goods in distribution. But and your documents should be able to support that business. And it seems that your documents does not support that you have that capability. You only had 625,000. Otherwise, you cannot import. Um, I'll explain that. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, during the pandemic, I think what really determined the is determined the factor is the access to the supplies, access to um, a, a tangible um, negotiations with suppliers so that we can get the supplies first. Is uh, we do not dis uh, disagree that the company at that point in time does not have a lot of assets, but the for example, when we face to the mass that we delivered in the month of April, all these supplies, we were able to source it from distributors and suppliers. And we delivered first to PSDBM before any payments were made to us. That is all I can say. You are telling us that you are the principal access, you have the principal access connectivity. Yes that you can deliver all these goods is that what you're saying us yes mr chairman we um, it doesn't matter that the government should check whether where you got the money um mr chairman i do not i did not Are you saying the government to check where you got that money to import all that mr chairman we will comply with all the documentary requirements no, no you did not you did not have any import license the import license is so questionable all the other bidders have also have access to their suppliers. Even a Filipino firm was able to make uh, the masks. So um, if your only argument is access, you're the primary access, then let's forget everything. Uh, you're the only one that can provide. So we should have gotten everything from you. Would that be correct? No, Mr. Chairman, I do not think the government gets everything from the company. Somebody please but, uh, be called. Um, um, no, Mr. Chairman, I respectfully disagree. You have no um, other clients, right, in the Philippines? We do have some private sales. Oh, did it? How come you did not say that? Uh, what clients do you have? Um, Mr. Chairman, I don't, because of non-disclosure agreements, we cannot disclose. No, no, I don't believe in that non-disclosure agreement when people are dying out there. When people are dying and are sick and they cannot work, while you can work and while you can have all this money and enjoy your life. Shall I tell you the possibility? Were you not, con were you not, uh, you are now, uh, your father, you said you cannot see, you cannot find, correct? That's correct, Mr. Chairman. You've not gotten in touch with him, correct? Yes, Mr. Chairman. And your father uh, and you were in that meeting in Davao. Is that correct? Uh, yes, in the meeting Davao in 2017, March. Yes, that's correct, yes. Mr. Chairman. There's but nothing only... wrong with that meeting. You were coming in and making a presentation so that you could do business in the Philippines, correct? Uh, so that my father's company could do business in the Philippines. All yes. right. But unfortunately, when you bid it uh, afterwards, we found out that your company has... Uh, uh, cheated many Taiwanese stockholders and, and to, to show that the Taiwanese uh, have already issued a warrant of arrest for you and your father. Uh, 
Mr. Chairman, may I first state on record that I have never held or owned any single shares in that company. And I was only appointed to be the director of the company in June 2017 to manage the Philippine operation. So you were brought by that company in. All right. Okay. I'll accept that Mr. for Chair. the moment. But yeah. let me ask you now. Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, sorry. Senator Aimee. Senator yes. Aimee, do you mind? Uh, yes, sorry. Uh, let me just finish. My, I don't want to lose my train of thought here. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Uh, it was just uh, in reference to what uh, you inquired about earlier. In the ITR, uh, there are some sales indicated to other companies. So they have other private clients such as Watson's, PH Pharmacare, GN Power for approximately 29 million of the declared sales. That's all. What is your point? Yes, my point being that uh, there's a small amount uh, that they declared as sales to private companies. So it's not 100% to government. That's all. And that's late. They have not shown that so far. And you're the one saying as to us now, right? And that's a fact. They have not shown us that one. And he could have answered, all right? And he said that he had, and I said, I, I said I was willing to do that. But let me point this out. <laughs> Maybe this is unfair. But $50 million <clears throat> were lost in Taiwan. Now, uh, when you, how much is that in pesos? $50 million is approximately 2.5 billion pesos. Um. Sorry, all right. People with shares of Parmelee face an estimated 1.5 billion NT dollars or 50.81 million dollars in losses. Having allegedly colluded with Chinese businessmen to falsify accounts and financial statements in one of the largest securities fraud in recent years involving a Taiwan stock exchange listed firm. You and other executives left Taiwan, face charges for alleged contraventions of the Securities and Exchange Act, stock manipulation, fraud in financial statements, and illicit transfers. An international warrant for Wang Wenlai is valid for 37 years. Now, let me ask you a question. Could that have been the source of the money? No, Mr. Could Chairman. Could be the source of your money here? No, Mr. Chairman. The amount of contribution I have to the company in terms of loans is approximately $1.5 million. Only. I'm sorry? The source of funds that are contributed by me is approximately $1.5 million. I, I never declared to be very rich. As I've said, the company and its directors source for the supplies through our negotiations mm -hmm. and from our communities for these supplies. Mm -hmm. I, I cannot understand what you're saying, but did you have a letter of credit to be able to buy all these uh, uh, supplies from Taiwan, uh, from uh, China? We did have, um, subsequently, we did have a letter of credit from a local bank in the Philippines for uh, these supplies. How much? Uh, At this point, uh, with the permission of the Senate, <coughs> I'd like to ask the Money Laundering Council inspect all the bank transactions that may have occurred with this company so we will know the money trail i saw directly the, uh, the, uh, the director general of the with the permission of the senate president that the money laundering council be asked to find out whether there is a money trail uh, to be proven here uh, because there's so much billions of pesos that have occurred here and we don't even have a money trail. Where this money came from? Saan ang galing ang perang yan? Uh, at bigla sila nakakapag-transact sa gobyerno nang wala silang pinapakitang kapital kundi yung $625,000. Yes, sir. On right? uh, yes, so we will, uh, do the we will take the necessary steps, uh, uh, Chairman uh, Senator Gordon. Thank you, sir. On that note, I will let, I will I'll stop there, Muna, and I'll reserve it because I want to have the others follow the spur, if you will. 
uh, if that's is your pressure, but uh, I think there are enough senators here that can follow the track. And I'm glad Senator Laxon is next. Uh, Senator Laxon. Uh, Mr. You know, Chairman, with Senator, the indulgence sorry. of Senator. Senator uh, Revilla is next uh, to answer. Yes, go ahead, uh, Senator. Uh, with the indulgence of Senator Bong Revilla. Yes, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Senator Tavares, with the permission of Senator Revilla, go ahead. Yes, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just an addendum to what the chair has, the chairman has just stated uh, in relation to securing the documentation from the Anti Money Laundering Council. May I just uh, add, Mr. Chairman, that considering that the Philippines and Taiwan have an agreement on mutual legal assistance in criminal matters, uh, could uh, this representation, Mr. Chairman, also request that the committee subpoena the entry? and exit information of Huang Wenli and Huang Tsuyen from the Bureau of Immigration. Uh, because Mr. Chair, there are, Chairman, there are reports that although Huang Wenli was in the Philippines in 2017 to meet with the president, the last official record of his entry was dated 2005. So lastly, Mr. Chairman, that raised, creates another mystery. Paano siya nakapasok sa bansa? No? Para ba itong PPE na ginamit yung C-130 ng ating armed forces? So, uh, I respectfully move, Mr. Chairman, for uh, the subpoena of those entry and exit information of the Mr. Huang uh, from the VI. Uh, I so move, Mr. Chairman. Thank You're you, Mr. Chairman. The, Thank you, Senator Bong. The lady is asking, the lady is asking uh, if we can subpoena the immigration records. Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, specifically the entry and exit information yes. uh, of Huang Wenye and Huang Tsuyen. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, I so move. And of course, the Anti-Money Laundering Council should be informed as well about uh, the movement of money, uh, which the Senate President has already agreed to, right? Yes, Mr. Chairman. So my motion is an addendum to what the Chairman and the Senate President have stated. Uh, I so move right. and thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, with the permission of Senator, uh, so the so ordered uh, to the Director General, may we ask which Hello. bank, uh, Mr. Wang, just one question, may we ask one, which bank you transacted with? You uh, claim you, you opened a letter of credit allegedly with a local bank. Which local uh, bank did you transact that with? We had a credit line certificate from the Union Bank. Union Bank? Union Bank of the Philippines. Yes. And when was that date? Uh, November 27, 2020. November 27, 2020. 20, 20. 20. Your transaction occurred in April 2020, correct? Yes, that's correct. And may we know how much that letter of credit consisted? Uh, 500 million pesos. And you got the letter of credit? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Okay, we'll take your word for it at, for the moment. Uh, let us bring all the attention of the Anti-Money Laundering Council here, uh, and the Director General is uh, should uh, make that part of the request uh, to find out uh, how that transaction was able to take place. In other words, from April to November, when you were already being paid, you now had the capacity because you were able to get paid by the Philippine government. Sa Tagalog, nabayaran na kayo ng gobyerno. In other words, you were already paid by the government, so now you have something to show uh, uh, to provide a letter of credit, to get a letter of credit. Is that correct? Yes, Mr. Chairman. A letter of credit will not be issued unless you have the capacity to pay. Yes or no? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, may I call on Senator Revilla? I'm sorry if I were dragging anchors here, but it's very hard to really uh, follow the trail. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I would like to take off from the uh, questions of our colleagues in the previous hearings, particularly the transfer of $42 billion from DOH to Procurement Service, uh, Department of Budget and Management. Yes, sir. Yeah. Sir? For COVID-19 purchases. I would just like to... Who's talking? Please uh, turn off. Okay, I would just like to, to see the whole picture so we can uh, appreciate 
their circumstances surrounding this matter. Uh, we hope to receive responses either from the DOH or PSDBM for the following questions. First of all, gusto ko po sanang itanong ang issue regarding face shields. So may we know from PSDBM, either Attorney Wayan, uh, the OIC of PSDBM or former DBM Yusek Lo, or uh, Yusek Lau, may answer. Uh, my first question is, tama po ba na ang face shield ay uh, considered as common use supply and uh, equipment falling under the category of uh, personal protective equipment for utility staff as uh, contained in Annex B of GPB, GPBB Resolution Number 03 2020, dated the uh, 9 of March 2020. Tama po ba? Yes, uh, Attorney Wayan? Or, or uh, Yusek Lau, may answer? Uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Sino to? Uh, please state your name, please. Attorney Wayan po, Mr. Chairman. Okay, Attorney Wayan. Is this correct? Uh, my Our interpretation is that facial forms part of the personal protective equipment po, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Kailan po yung unang nag-request? ang uh, DOH from uh, PSDBM ng uh, supply ng uh, face shield? Oh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I would have to check our records first on that. Yes, please. But I believe that uh, it was after the issuance of the GPPB uh, resolution, Mr. Chairman. Nang mga panahon na yun, uh, no, March, April, May, ay uh, may inilabas ba po ang uh, suggested retail price o, o SRP para sa face shields ang uh, DOH? Kung meron, kailan naglabas at uh, magkano? Uh, based on my recollection, Mr. Chairman, there was no... SRP for the face shield. There was, however, an SRP for the surgical mask. The SRP for the face shield came out on the later part of 2020 na po. Okay. Anong, anong later part? Uh, uh, August? September? What? Uh, if my memory serves me right, Mr. Chairman, it's around September... Because we had a public bidding last December setting the uh, maximum price for a face shield at around 50 pesos. Po. So, what is yung SRP? Uh, between C, uh, bit, maximum of 50 pesos. Po. That's the ceiling price. Okay. Did the Commission on Audit question the price? at which uh, bought you the face shields. Sinabi ba ng POA na overpriced ang inyong uh, face shields? Uh, no, Mr. Chairman. The, the AOM that we received is, was actually on the inventory issues. Okay. Now, may I know from uh, the DOH, Secretary Duque, may answer? Dahil wala pa po kung uh, kayong uh, inilabas na SRP para sa face shields ng mga panahon na uh, bumili ang uh, PSDBM from March, April, May 2020. Ang uh, ibig po bang sabihin nito eh, kahit anong presyo, kahit ito ay eh, 120 pa, acceptable po ba ito para sa inyo as long as they meet the specifications that you require? Secretary? Secretary Duque, we can't hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. 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 can you hear me, uh, Your Honors? Yeah, Mr. Yes, Chairman. Yes, yeah, thank you. 
At that time, nung ang presyo ng PSDBM was, uh, I think, 124 pesos, uh, yun ay uh, walang uh, SRP na na-establish. But uh, at that time, we, are, we were already badly in need of this uh, protective, uh, personal protective uh, equipment uh, for our healthcare workers. No? And uh, we value the uh, life of uh, our healthcare workers. And we wanted to make sure that whatever protection uh, these PPEs, loose uh, PPEs such as the face uh, shield uh, can, can give, Uh, should be uh, most welcome uh, to our healthcare workers. But the, the SRP came out uh, sometime in uh, August 10, 2020, and the SRP had a floor price of 26 pesos and a ceiling of uh, 50 pesos. So, so acceptable yung, po yung price na yan. Acceptable po. At the time, uh, yes. There was no uh, SRP. We had no. We had no uh, idea. What was important was the protection of our healthcare workers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Dahil lang dito po tayo sa usapin ng SRP, I would also like to further shed light on this matter. Uh, bakit po nag-issue uh, ang DOH ng SRP para sa face mask at uh, face shields? Uh, ito po ba yung kaugnay sa mandato nila sa ilalim ng Republic Act number no. 7581 or the Price Act kung saan ang DOH ang tinalagang implementing agency which has jurisdiction over basic necessity or prime commodity uh, with reference to drugs? Yung uh, amin kasi pinamili, it wasn't meant for the public, no? Usually, say yung SRP. This is uh, for uh, the general public no? to have an idea how much would be a reasonable price for a uh, piece of uh, personal protective equipment. No, so kami talagang ang habol namin was for the protection of our healthcare workers, and during that time, it was uh, very important uh, to make sure that hindi sila matalsikan ng uh, mga laway o mga hininga na pwedeng may uh, dalang uh, COVID-19 virus. So, yun na po, uh, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Uh, pagdating sa face mask at face shields, uh, ang DOH ang uh, magtatakda ng SRP at hindi ang uh, DTI. Tama po ba ito? Uh, kasama po ang DTI at saka ang DOH. Uh, halimbawa, doon sa face mask, yung uh, surgical mask, ang, uh, I think, kung di ako nagkakamali, uh, bandang Marso, naglabas ng uh, SRP jointly ang uh, DTI with the DOH at uh, 28 pesos, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Okay, uh... For, uh, thank you, Mr. Secretary. For PSDBM, uh, does this SRP also serve as guide for uh, PSDBM's procurement of uh, face masks and uh, face shields? PSDBM? Uh, that would be correct, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Uh, Now, Mr. Chairman, I would like to connect this matter about SRP to, uh, to the fund transfers or, uh, and uh, agency procurement requests, or APR, of DOH to PSDBM in relation to the procure procurement and face masks and face shields. Dahil medyo uh, nagulohan po ako sa discussion last hearing at gusto ko lang po bigyan linaw ito. Now, Secretary Duque, nag-transfer po ng 42 billion pesos ang DOH sa PSDBM. Yes or no? Uh, uh, yes, Your Honor, but uh, this was not a uh, one-time uh, transfer. Thank you, Mr. Your Honor. Okay. Mula po sa 42 billion, nag-procure 
ang PSDBM ng face mask? Yes or no? Just yes or no? Uh, yes, uh, Your Honor. Face shields? Uh, yes, Your Honor. PPE sets? Yes, Your Honor. Noong nakapag-procure na ang PSDBM gamit ang pondong 42 billion, na-deliver po ba ng PSDBM ang face masks, face shields, PPE sets sa DOH? Yes, Your Honor. The supplies were all delivered. After the delivery, may binayaran po ba ang DOH sa PSDBM? Uh, wala hong binayaran dahil nauna na hong nag, uh, nakapag-deposit uh, uh, ng bayad. So, nung uh, dumating yung mga gamit, yung mga PPEs at mga iba pang mga uh, gamit, ay uh, dineliver sa Department of Health. At wala nang binayaran ang uh, Department of Health dahil may nauna na eh, na deposit na binigay Kanya ang sagot doon kung may binayaran pa pagkatapos ng delivery, wala na po. So wala pong double payment dyan? Uh, wala po. Uh, in fact, uh, Mr. Chairman, meron lang po akong uh, kasulatan dito galing kay uh, COA, Chairman Aguinaldo, na binibigyan na uh, liwanag yung uh, pag-iisip ng iba na baka meron double billing or double payment. So ito po ay sinumite ng uh, kagalang-galang na tagapagulo ng COA at ang uh, sinasabi dito kung mamarapatin ninyo ay ang uh, dalawang bagay. Una, sa para sa Department of Health, yung parehong common use and non-common use supplies and equipment using the 41.464 billion fund transferred uh, from DOH, ito po ay... Uh, ay uh, galing doon sa appropriations under the Republic Act number no. 11494 or better known as Bayanihan 1. Yung pangalawa naman po, for all government agencies through the PSDBM virtual store, meron po silang para tinatawag na tindahan na yung mga common use supplies na binili ng PSDBM gamit ang sarili po nilang revolving fund of the PSDBM. Ito naman mga supplies na ito, ay uh, available po ito na pwedeng bilihin ng nino man uh, government agencies. No? Kasama rin dito ang uh, DOH, ano po, syempre. At uh, batay po sa mga ulat o records, ang uh, Department of Health purchased common new supplies from the PSDBM virtual store gamit po dito ay hiwalay na budget. Ito po yung GAA 2020 funds, no? Para A, before the deliveries of the supplies, yung malakihan mga uh, bulto na mga PPEs na in-order namin, hindi naman po kasi kaagad dumarating yun. Eh. Matagal bago makarating, kanya kinakailangan namin mabigyan ng protection yung amin mga healthcare workers, bumili muna kami uh, sa kanilang virtual uh, stores. No? So, sa pangalawa, dito rin sa kasulatan ni uh, Chairman uh, Aguinaldo sa Blue Ribbon Committee, ay... Uh, Pinapakita na even after the deliveries, ang uh, DOH uh, office or ang mga medical centers, yung ating po mga hospital, ay uh, bumili din ng mga supplies mula sa PSDBM virtual store kasi nga hindi pa nila natatanggap yung kanila pong mga uh, supplies. Yun lang po. Maraming salamat, Mr. Chairman. Hey, Mr. Secretary, please submit uh, the COA letter to the committee. Meron na po, Sarate. Mr. Chairman. Pinatalan na daw po kanina, uh, Mr. Chairman, ni uh, Chairman Aguinaldo. Salamat po. Okay. After the transfer of uh, 42 billion, uh, meron po bang ibang transfer of funds ang DOH to uh, PSDBM to procure medical uh, supplies? Ah, alam ko rito, yung uh, 41.464 billion, inclusive na lahat po ng mga uh, supplies. But uh, subject to uh, validation, titignan ko po, sisiguro din ko lang po, uh, Mr. Chairman. We will give a report on this as well. Okay. 
Now, sapat po ba yung uh, supplies na nabili mula sa 42 billion o kailangan po bang uh, bumili pa ng karagdagan, Mr. Secretary? Uh, at that uh, point, ang alam ko po ay uh, sapat na po. No? Pero syempre, depende po yan sa gamit. Eh. Dahil kung maraming mga pasyente at uh, alam naman ninyo, magastos talaga sa PPE ang uh, atin po mga healthcare workers para po sa kanilang protection ay uh, hindi po natin na uh, kaagaran masasabi na ang ah, binili natin, tama na ito. May projection po tayo. In fact, ang projection natin was 15 million uh, PPE pieces for uh, about 30 billion thereabouts. No? So, yun po, uh, Mr. Chairman. Kung sakasakali po ang kailangan pa ng karagdagan ng uh, DOH o ng ating mga regional hospitals, Saan po kinukuha o kinukuha yung mga pondo at pambili nila sa karagdagang face mask, face shields o PPE sets? Ah, gaya po nang na, nakapaloob dito sa sulat ng uh, ating butihin chairman ay meron pong GAA source, funding source, ang mga ospital, ang uh, mga regional offices at yun po ang ginagamit nila. In fact, uh, ito po ang uh, pinag-usapin uh, ng uh, face shield and face mask. Ang ginamit po rito pambayad sa PSDBM virtual store ay yung kanilang uh, uh, DPCB, Disease Prevention Control uh, Bureau, uh, para po sa uh, central office and uh, regions. At mga hospital, may sarili naman po silang funding source. Salamat po, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Secretary. May we know from the PSDBM, Attorney Wayan, kapag nag-transfer po ng pondo sa inyo ang DOH, ito po ba ay may kasamang APR, ang Agency Procurement Request, na nagsasaad kung ano-ano ang kailangan bilhin ng pondong yun at kung ano-ano ang specifications ng nasabing pondo. Produkto. Ah, Mr. Chairman, uh, yes, that would be correct, Mr. Chairman. Uh, for every procurement request that DOH transmits to PSDBM, it contains the technical specifications of the items that it wants to buy from us. And the money that was uh, initially uh, transferred is considered as advance payment, which is deductible for every procurement request that DOH sends to us, Mr. Chairman. Okay, kapag natapos na ninyo yung, uh, ang uh, procurement process at na-deliver ng mga face masks, face shields, uh, PPE sets, uh, ibinibigay na po ba ninyo ang mga produkto sa DOH? Uh, kailangan pa po ba nilang uh, magbayad muli sa PSDBM based on the... Uh, based on the SRP that they issued kahit na nag-transfer na sila ng funds? Uh, no, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the funds are already with PSDBM. So whatever item we procure for DOH that is uh, indicated in the agency procurement request, uh, we deduct it from the funds available. It may be lower than the price or the budget allocated by the DOH in the said APR, Mr. Chairman. Okay, sa mga tawid, meron po bang double payment sa face masks at uh, face shields na binili ng DOH through its fund transfers to PSDBM? Uh, no, Mr. Chairman. Uh, there is no double payment. So All no the... double payment. Were the items... Uh, Delivered completely? Was the quality check and accepted by DOH? Nasin yes, nasiguro please. ba maayos lahat? Yung mga PPEs na yan na dinilever dyan, kumpleto po ba? Hanggang sa kahuli-huli ang numero? Uh, it, that would be correct, Mr. Chairman. For every agency procurement request made by DOH, we always ensure that the quantity as indicated in the APR is all accounted for The technical specifications are complied with, and before we issue to the DOH the procurement service delivery receipt, it 
it passes the acceptance. It has to be accepted first, Mr. Chairman, by the DOH. Okay. Related to, to the classification of face masks and face shields as common use supplies and uh, equipment and the procurement of these items by the PSDBM, uh, did you procure face masks and face shields apart from, uh, apart from and uh, outside the order of the DOH or apart from uh, those bought using uh, the 42 billion? Bumili po ba kayo para magkaroon kayo ng stocks para sa inyong store na ngayon ay online na? Yes, Mr. Chairman. We actually have PS stocks uh, for surgical masks and some of the items uh, as classified under common use supply and equipment by virtue of the GPPB resolution issued last March 2024. Okay, ang ibig sabihin ba nito ay maaari na bumili sa inyo ang mga ahensya ng gobyerno at mga ospital ng face masks at face shields katulad ng pagbili ninyo ng uh, office supplies? Yes, Mr. Chairman. It is available to all agencies that need it. Sinusunod pa po ba ninyo ang SRP na ini-issue ng uh, DOH? Para sa pagsusupply ng face masks at face shields sa mga government agencies at uh, hospitals? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Required po ba kayong uh, magsagawa ng uh, market scan para sa mga produkto ito? That is the preliminary activity before we procure, Mr. Chairman. We check the price in the market po, Mr. Chairman. So did you actually conduct market scan? Ano po ang sulta nito? Uh, based on the market scan, we we base our procurement on the lowest price available. And when we set it for procurement uh, for a bidding, that would be the ceiling that would be uh, advertised for a bid. So, it, with the permission, just a quick interjection. One quick question with the permission of uh, Senator Revilla. Go ahead, go ahead, Senator Pangalina. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Uh, 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 yung suggested retail price na binibigay ng uh, GPPB memo, just to, retail, just to clarify, the purchases or importation made or, or the, the contracts entered into by DBMPS is not retail, di ba? Pag mabili kayo ng, pre, ng, ano, ng face mask na 20 plus pesos of face shield na 122 pesos wholesale yon di ba uh mr chairman can you please re re repeat the question sorry i was not able sorry. to um sinasabi nyo na yung, yung just to clarify no yung srp iba yon sa presyo na binibili ninyong wholesale di ba iba yon no uh pag ang srp ay 28 di ba uh, tapos ang inyong wholesale price na binili ang isang uh, uh, mula sa supplier ay 28, uh, hindi ibig sabihin parehong presyo yun. Kasi mas mataas talaga ang retail kaysa sa wholesale. Just just placing that on record. Hindi ba? Wholesale is should be cheaper than retail. Just for uh, the record. Mr. Chairman, uh, whenever we conduct procurement, we check the prevailing SRP. So we set it we set it as a limit. Yes, yeah, yeah, no no but my point is SRP is retail. Tingi. Diba? You buy in bulk wholesale. Diba? So that's medyo, correct, Mr. Chairman. Diba? So dapat yes. pag wholesale, I mean in, in in the ordinary course of business, wholesale is much, much cheaper than retail. Just just placing that on record, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, other than Parmali, did the PSDBM also procure surgical masks at 27 pesos per piece from other suppliers? Uh, 
Yes, Mr. Chairman, but it was it is not the same at at that price. Uh, is it lower were, or higher? There were lower prices offered by some companies on different dates. Uh, the date actually is uh, crucial uh, in this. Uh, Iklarify mo yung dates para maintindihan ng tao, no? At okay. that time, the Farmally was uh, able to get the contract. The SRP was at uh, the ceiling price at that time was 28. Now, subsequent to the initial procurement of PS, the prices uh, varied depending on the availability of the supply and the quantity. Po. Okay, now to uh, tie up all my questions concerning uh, the issues of uh, overpricing, double payment, and transfer of funds. Isang uh, katanungan lamang po para sa COA, Chairman Aguinaldo. Uh, you said during the last hearing that your uh, audit observations on PSDBM dwelled on the weak control over inventories. You have uh, also heard answers and uh, statements of uh, DOH, uh, PSDBM, and of course, when COA audited PSDBN or DOH on their transactions concerning the procurement of uh, face masks, face shields, PPE sets, tinignan at binusisi nyo lahat ang mga dokumento patungkol dito. Now, may I know, uh, Chairman Aguinaldo, uh, are there uh, findings of uh, overpriced and uh, double uh, payment? Uh, at may anomalya po ba sa mga pagkakabigay ng kontrata sa family? Mr. Chairman? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, the findings of the audit team of PSDBM focused really on the uh, inventory management of uh, supplies, uh, at least specifically no, yung sa COVID-related supplies. Uh, wala po silang findings on overpricing. Uh, if you look at the mass po kasi, I think yung DTI price at that time, and we're looking at March 2020, was about 28 pesos. No? Yun yung ano. And um, uh, based dun sa records kasi ng PSDBM, mukhang yung, yung uh, price at which they purchased from the different suppliers, including Farmalino, was between... I think 1350 and 27. So from the point of view ng auditor, sabi niya, well, it's below naman the suggested retail price. Kaya siguro hindi na sila nag-finding on overprice. Now, in terms of the face shields, it was difficult kasi nga, I think si Secretary mentioned earlier, wala kasing SRP yung face shields. And so medyo mahirap gumawa ng uh, pricing ng face shields no? kasi wala silang source na makuha. And I think they may have had problems also in the pricing of the PPEs. Hindi nila alam uh, how to find you know, a, a retail price for that. Kasi hindi naman talaga nire-retail yan. Eh. Uh, it's usually specific for the hospitals. In terms of the formally um, bid, although pinapatingnan po natin sa auditor yan, uh, ang importante from the COA point of view though is really whether the funds were actually disbursed and the goods were actually delivered and inspected at ginamit po. So, in so far as uh, our job, which is settling accounts, um, mukhang wala naman silang nakitang anomalya dun sa aspect na yun. No? Kasi the money was disbursed at saka na deliver naman. Now, whether Farmly should have been given the contract or not, uh, it's really more, uh, I think, an ombudsman issue uh, rather than a COA issue. Kasi nga, at the end of the day, nasettle yung account, eh. uh, na-deliver at binayaran. And wala namang nakitang um, defects dun sa goods that were purchased. Um, yun lang po, siguro linawin ko lang kasi nga ang mandato po ng Commission on Audit is really limited to settling, auditing, examining, and settling accounts. Uh, pagdating po sa issues of corruption, while we can help uh, provide Uh, data and evidence and leads to corruption, kami mismo, uh, we do not have the mandate to probe corruption, which is why we have to work with other government agencies when it comes to probing corruption, such as the Ombudsman or the uh, Department of Justice. Yan lang po.
Okay, Mr. thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, can I ask a question? This is already my last question. Thank you, uh, Chairman Gordon. Thank yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Dick, Mr. Senator Gordon, can I just ask one question in relation to that? From the yes, 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 please, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Chairman uh, Aguinaldo, uh, did, did, uh, was COA able to examine whether purchases of face masks and face shields were made by the regional hospitals and by the DOH run hospitals or by any government agency from, uh, from, from, from PSDBM? In other words, there was a SRP, uh, a suggested retail price. The assumption is that it was for sale as part of their inventory. Now, has COA uh, uh, examined these documents, whether in fact sales took place uh, within, the, uh, uh, within the suggested retail price? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, during the last hearing, I think it was the Senate President who brought up the issue, no? Because uh, uh, he was referring to uh, a statement I made during the budget hearings for the House that there were some hospitals that actually were procuring from the uh, regional warehouses of PSDBM. And I guess it created some confusion kasi nga, bakit pa sila bibili? Eh, may pinasa na silang 42 billion sa PSDBM. So I asked the uh, auditors to please take a look at uh, this. Ang nangyari po is, uh, nung March 2020, uh, the GPPB had classified certain COVID-related supplies and equipment as um, uh, common use supplies. So soon thereafter, siguro within a week lang or, or so, uh, PSDBM started procuring already some of these common use supplies using their own money. Meron silang revolving fund which they used to purchase. How Tapos, much was that, Mr. Chairman? How much uh, funds from PSDBM was used to purchase? Ang, what, what ang pinakita sa akin, about 350, uh, just a second, Mr. Chair, I think 350, 355.8 million. Okay, 355.8 million. What was transferred yes. from DOH to PSDBM was 42 million to purchase these uh, huh? Billion, yes, 42 billion, uh, 42 billion yes, sir. was transferred by uh, DOH to PSDBM. That's correct, sir. And um, there were also funds of PSDBM to the tune of about 300 plus million that were port that were used to purchase the supplies in early March. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, so, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Uh, um, so there, uh, how much was the total purchases of uh dbm uh, uh psdbm how much were the total purchases for for this uh, uh medical supplies uh, face mask face shields which were considered as common use uh supplies uh the total was as of december 31 the the total that they were able to, the total uh, value of the contracts they entered into was 39.076 billion plus 355.83 million. So you okay. in total as of December 31, Paul. Therefore, Mr. Chairman, uh, apart from the 300 uh, and so million pesos, which was, per, which was used uh, for the purchase of these common use supplies, which came from the funds of PSDBM, 39 billion or so came from the budget of DOH transferred to PSDBM. Is that correct? That's, sir? That, that's correct, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Uh, Senator Revilla, are you still uh, asking a question? He's done. I finished. Okay, so uh, I, I, uh, I have other issues later on. I'm done, uh, Mr. Chair. I'm done, Mr. Chairman. 
Okay. Share now, call Senator Luxon for your interpretation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I was supposed to raise first the issue on the grossly overpriced ambulance units with equipment that the DOH supplied to the LGUs. But so as not to deviate from the main issue at hand, I will direct my questions to Mr. Michael Young, if he's still around. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, can Senator Lakson be so kind enough to remove his shield? I can hardly hear from I'm, where I sit. I'm by staff, so this is COVID-19 related mask. <laughs> okay. I'm in my, uh, I'm in my office, uh, Mr. Chairman. So yeah, okay. with your indulgence, I'll just sorry, speak sorry. a little okay. louder. Yeah, just for the record of this committee, Mr. Michael Young, what is your place of residence? Uh, residence in Chu Chai Nai, the Tifang. Chu Chai Mani Na 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 Xi Jiu Hao. Mr. Uh, Chairman, uh, Mr. Yang said that his place of residence is nine, at 19 Nara. 19 Nara Street, South Forbes. South uh, Forbes. City. Oh. Is that correct? That's correct, that, Mr. Chairman. That is the same place Nekashi. where the OSAA, our security unit, the Senate security unit, served the subpoena on Mr. Yang. Is that correct? Mm, see. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Which the, I think the security guard uh, denied. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, according to Mr. Yang, uh, because he has been out of the country for a period now, maybe the person uh, thought that he may not be coming back. And that's why, uh, so, so, so he thought that Mr. Probably Mr. Yang will no longer be coming back. So maybe he got, that's why he said, and then because he is an ordinary staff or employee, that's why he gave that response. Okay, I, I think uh, at least that's clear that, that that is his place of residence. How long has he been staying in the Philippines? I'm, I'm sorry, can you repeat the second question? How long has he been staying in the Philippines? I'll remove my mask. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How long? Well, <laughs> Uh, Mr. Chair, num to answer your question, number one, uh, yes, uh, that is his place of residence. Number two, uh, he has been in the Philippines for 22 years. 22 years. Okay. My next question is, when, how, and why did you become involved in uh, with Parmalee? Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Yang said that uh, he doesn't know and he has no relation to formally. I would like to remind Mr. Yang that he's under oath, huh? uh, Mr. Interpreter. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Yang is aware that he is under oath and it is only through the news that he found out that uh, of the existence of formerly pharmaceutical. So he maintains that he has nothing to do, nothing to do at all with formerly. Is that correct? Senator Lakson, just one moment. I just want to call the attention of the official interpreter of the Blue Ribbon, Ms. Lingling Ponce. Uh, Ms. Lingling Ponce, please yes. make sure that we're having get, getting an accurate translation. Yes. Ms. Lingling Ponce, are you there? Yeah, here. Sorry? Can you see me? Uh, my video is on. Yeah, here. 
Okay. Are you giving us an accurate interpretation? Make sure that we're getting an accurate interpretation. Sure. Thank you. Go okay, Ms. Arms. There's a variance, tell us. Go ahead. Thank you. Okay. You may answer, Mr. Yang. So, you you said that you don't have any relationship with the family of the family? You said that this is too much. 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 帮他，我不知道他用这个公司，我只有他人来找我，我不知道他的公司。Okay, ah,、uh, Mr. Chairman, what Mr. Yang said is that initially, ah,、uh, he doesn't know of the existence or the whereabouts or anything about formerly pharmaceutical. Later on, ah,、uh, they did approach him, ah,、uh, for some assistance. So it is not true that he has nothing to do, or he had nothing to do with formerly. Uh, Mr. Chairman, your question pertains to the corporation, uh, corporation or on the operations. We just like to clarify on that part. First, the corporation, formerly pharmaceuticals. Chu Shi, you know, you, yeah, you, ah, 关于这个公司的成立注册有关系吗？没有，我没有。Okay, ah,、uh, Mr. Chairman, we'd like to clarify that in terms of. The regist、uh, registration or setup of formerly corporate of formerly pharmaceutical, Mr. Yang has nothing to do with it.、Well, that is correct. But does he have anything to do with the operations of formerly pharmaceuticals at any point? Now, 关于他们的运营，你是否有查涉到吗？没有。In 我不知道他，我没有。Mr. Chairman, in terms of operations, ah,、uh, Mr. Yang has not been involved, or he has no idea. Does he know Wang Chu Yan? You 认识黄楚彦吗 ？The chairman of Parmali. 假如说一七年他跟他爸爸来见过我一次，后面我就没有什么没有见过了。Ah,、uh, during the 2017, he met Mr. Huang Zhuyan together with his father, and after that, ah,、uh, they have no any communications. Does he know a certain Lincoln Ong? You 认识一个 Lincoln? Yes, he know Mr. Lincoln Ong, Mr. Chairman. How did he know Mr. Lincoln Ong? 你怎么认识 Lincoln Ong? 他以前他们亲戚也跟我熟，就是这样联系了。Ah,、uh, before ah,、uh, Mr. Yang knows the relative of Mr. Lincoln Ong. That's why he got to know him. Did he have any business dealings with Mr. Lincoln Ong? Neo, Neo. In his personal capacity or in his capacity as one of the incorporators of Parmali Pharmaceuticals. Okay, Neo, Neo, Ken Lin Li. 啊，做过生意，特别是在这个 Parmali 制药公司。Mr. Chairman, no. No business dealings with Mr. Lincoln Ong. Neo, may or can Lincoln Ong your own? Ah, Mr. Chairman, can you just be more? Ah,、uh, sorry, can you just repeat the question? Did they have any business dealings with Mr. Lincoln Ong, whether in his personal capacity or as a stockholder or incorporator of、uh, Parmali Pharmaceuticals? Okay, Ni Yo Mei Yo Gen Lin Li, this Lincoln Renhe the business transaction trade is in this formerly pharmaceutical company. You say the transaction is when? Say the transaction is when? Okay, ah,、uh, Mr. Chairman, ah,、uh, Mr. Yang would like to ask, ah,、uh, in terms of what specific period you were pertaining to? In the supply of PPEs, medical supplies like、uh, face masks, shields, etc., etc., in relation. To the transaction uh, uh, dealings of Parmali with the PSDBM, to、okay. be more specific. So, Mr. Chair, just just to clarify, your question is if he has any dealing or anything to do with the transactions pertaining to PSDBM and Parmali Pharmaceutical. Yeah, PPEs for PPEs. Supply of PPEs. Supply of PPEs. Surgical masks, face shields, face masks. Okay. 你在这个啊、uh, 有没有
跟 farm 那个预算部和 farmerly 这边呢啊，有有没有任何关系？就是干涉到你提供啊材料像哎资料啊物料像这些口罩、面罩、防护衣。你给我解释哦。对，花明你去竞标，我我从来没有不知道，也没有参与过。你先讲这些。Mr. Chairman, ah,、uh, Mr. Yang would like to clarify to say that, ah,、uh, when Farmerly did get their their contracts, he has nothing to do with any of those contracts or awards. 第二，第二就是后面他们以前前面做生意不知道，后面有一个 PP。林姑娘来找过我帮忙，我有给他介绍中国的朋友，给他们有这个资源，有这个能力也帮他们。Okay. Then eventually, ah,、uh, Mr. Lincoln did approach Mr. Yang, ah,、uh, and then he helped him them or Mr. He Mr. Yang, ah,、uh, introduce ah、uh, friends to Mr. Lincoln who could help them with their supplies. That is correct. That's、uh, the point, and I was trying to. Uh, point out, uh, mm. uh, Mr. Chairman, that、uh, Mr. Michael Yang was the one who acted as a go-between or middleman between Lincoln Ong or Parmali Pharmaceuticals and the suppliers from China. Is that correct? Ah,、uh, so Mr. Chair, your your question again. Ah,、uh, that Lincoln and no, Mr. Michael Yang、mm -hmm. acted as a middleman. Okay, you should show it. Between Parmali Pharmaceuticals through Mr. Lincoln Ong and the Chinese suppliers of the medical supplies in relation to the、uh, procurement. Okay, you show the Parmali Pharmaceuticals and the Chinese suppliers of the medical supplies in relation to the procurement. Okay, you show the Parmali Pharmaceuticals and the Chinese suppliers of the medical supplies in relation to the procurement. Okay, you show the Parmali Pharmaceuticals and the Chinese suppliers of the medical supplies in relation to the procurement. Okay, you show the Parmali Pharmaceuticals and the Chinese suppliers of the medical supplies in relation to the procurement. Okay, you show the Parmali Pharmaceuticals and the Chinese suppliers of the medical supplies in relation to the procurement. Okay, you show the Parmali Pharmaceuticals and the Chinese So that was his only role. He introduced the suppliers to Mr. Lincoln Ong, and then he had nothing to do with the、uh, with the, the supplies anymore. So, so you only have this role, which is to introduce them, and then you have no role. So, you only have this role, which is to introduce them, and then you have no role. So, you only have this role, which is to introduce them, and then you have no role. So, you only have this role, which is to introduce them, and then you have no role. So, you only have this role, which is to introduce them, and then you have no role. So, you only have this role, which is to And he stopped all his participation. I'm sorry. Come again, Mr. And Chairman. And he stopped all his participation in the dealings between the Chinese suppliers of the medical supplies that I mentioned and Mr. Lincoln Ong. They just he just left them on their own. Then how many are there Chinese? Ma. Yeah. So I just introduced them. They have no. I saw they went to where to buy. I don't know where to buy. I don't know where to buy. I don't know where to buy. You know, I'm not. I just want to show you a part of it. Okay, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Yang said that he only introduced as to where or who they close their dealings. Ah,、uh, he's not. Ah,、uh, he 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 does not know ah、uh, who or where did he actually purchase those stocks. And he never guaranteed. Ni mayo tang with his Chinese suppliers the credibility or the ability of Mr. Lincoln Ong to pay them. Ni mayo tang pao. 没有，我只有给他们介绍朋友，他们自己去谈，可能朋友有帮他们垫资，还是帮他们出钱，我不知，他们去谈的。所以你说你只有帮他们介绍，对对，介绍。然后呢？就是你介绍他们，他们自己自己去谈谈去买嘛。嗯 ，OK， so Mr. Yang only introduce and then they negotiated on their own and. The... Yeah, and then probably he the first initially introduced friends introduced some other friends for them to negotiate all of their dealings. How many suppliers did he introduce to Mr. Ong? You introduced how many suppliers? Six, 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 six,
that's it. That's his participation. Introduce and then left them alone. 所以你的角色就是介绍，然后就让他们自己谈谈。对对，他们就去。Yes, Mr. Chairman. Is Mr. Ong around? Mr. Lincoln Ong. Yes, Paul. Yes, Paul. Yeah, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Lincoln. Narinig mo lahat yung sinabi ni Mr. Yang. Yes, Paul. Yes, Paul. Okay. Apo, apo. Ano masasabi mo do sa kanya pahayag na ang role lang niya inintroduce kanya do sa apat na Chinese suppliers wala na siyang kinalaman at all. Ikaw na lahat ang nagipagdeal, ikaw na kipagtransak, ikaw ang uh, uh, nag-usap na lang kayo kung paano susuplayan yung Parmalee Pharmaceuticals na mga face masks, face shields, PPEs and other items. Is that correct? Uh Mr. Chairman, uh, totoo po yun na may pinapakilala po si Mr. Michael Yang ng mga suppliers at yung mga friends na tumulong para dito sa PPE project. Totoo po yun. Yun lang ang role niya. Hindi na siya nakialam pagkatapos ka maipakilala sa mga suppliers. Uh, I'm not privy to their uh, what's their discussion, eh. pero may pinapakilala talaga siya. Kung ano yung discussion nila, hindi ko na alam. Hindi nga, hindi maliwanag. Ano? Okay. Ang sabi ni Mr. Yang, ang role niya lang, ipinakilala sa iyo yung mga tao sa China na kakilala niya. Pagkatapos wala na siya kinalaman, ikaw na lahat na nakipag-deal do sa mga suppliers. Is that true? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, nakikipag-usap talaga kami sa mga supplier na pinakilala niya. Yes po. Hindi. Ang tinatanong ko, wala na ba siyang kinalaman? Umalis na siya, kayo na lang ang nagtuloy-tuloy ng usap at hindi na nakialam si Mr. Yang. Uh, di ko well paano po yung diretso na... sagot lang uh, Mr. Lincoln ah uh, sige ah uh, sige po uh, Mr. Chairman na po ulit yung tanong niyo para may maintindihan ko na maayos at isagot ko na ganito maayos ganito ang uh, flow no sabi ni Mr. Yang ang papel lang niya ipinakilala ka sa apat na suppliers from China opo, opo. at wala na siyang ginawang iba pa ikaw na lahat ang nagpatuloy kung paano makipagtransaksyon, kung paano uh, tumanggap ng supplies at makipag-deal do sa mga suppliers na sinasabi niya ay pinakilala lamang sa iyo. Uh, in addition to that, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, he also guarantees for us. Nagka-guarantee sila para sa amin. Kasi uh, uh, totoo po yung, uh, yung, yung analysis ni Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman na, na medyo challenging talaga pag pagdaring sa financial. Anong klaseng guarantee? Ang uh, ginagarantiyahan niya na makakabayad ka? Ah, uh, yes po, yes po. Uh, Magkano na ilabas mo na ka? Can, uh, can you turn take out your mask para maintindihan ka namin may ka? Ah, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, positive po ako sa ano sa uh, COVID tapos po ah uh, may mga tao din po yeah. sa bahay, dito po ako sa sala. Ito okay. kasi kwarto ngayon, hindi isa kasi kwarto. Hindi po, hindi po. Nandito, nandito po ako sa sala namin kasi nandito po yung mga computer at yung well, uh, iPad. Ano kasama dyan? May, meron po eh. May, may baby po ako at uh, mga tao. And then this is medyo open space din. So, so then speak a little louder, okay? Opo, opo. Yes, yes, yes. Mr. Chair, yes po. Okay, Mr. Ong. Oh. Okay. Sorry, Sir Interlaxon. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Dahil sinabi mo na wala nang kinalaman si Mr. Yang kung hindi mag-garantya, paano mo binabayaran yung mga Chinese suppliers? LC, money transfer, or cash. Paano mo binayaran ah. sila? Kasi malaking halaga ito eh. Yes po, Mr. Chair. Uh, may mga portion na kami na nagdiretso nagbayad sa mga suppliers dahil meron po naman kami mga pondo sa amin. At uh, syempre, uh, mga savings ng mga uh, uh, our uh, incorporators, our partners. And then there are, they, they are uh, certain items that... Uh, We need. We we don't have enough funds to to settle. So, Mr. Michael, yung guarantees for us. So, hindi totoo na pinakilala ka lang at tapos na. Tuloy tuloy ang kanyang participation by way of continuously guaranteeing sa mga suppliers na babayaran sila. Parang utang. Sabi na natin na credit. I think. Medyo may na-miss si interpreter kanina uh, na I think Mr. Michael Yang also, also mentioned that uh, he guaranteed for us. 
no guarantee meaning salita lamang laway lang na okay. ito si Mr. Ong kaya kayong bayaran nito yun lang ikaw lahat yes, ang nagbayad ang tanong ko sa iyo how did you pay the suppliers Manny Transfer uh, LC we, we, yung mga ibang supplier namin talaga nagta-transfer talaga kami uh, wala po naman pong uh, LC nung time na yan Uh, tapos may mga ibang supplier na hindi namin kaya kayang bayaran. Eh humingi na po kami ng tulong kay ano Mr. Michael Yang which uh, he guaranteed with the supplier na pag nakatanggap po kami ng bayad from the government and then that's the time we pay we, we pay na lang. There you go. So medyo laway ang puhunan. Hintay mo na kayo makasingil sa gobyerno at hindi naman kayo makakasingil sa gobyerno kung hindi kayo nakapag-supply. So utang at garantiya ni uh, Mr. Yang kaya kayo pinayagan ng suppliers na tuloy-tuloy ang pag-supply sa inyo sa pamamagitan ng garantiya ni Mr. Yang doon sa mga Chinese suppliers. Uh, parang tama po kayo. So, ganito po yung, ganito, more or less, ganito po yung logic. Yes, po, yes. So, parang tama. <laughs> Lincoln, ganito, no? Yes, po. Kasi, yes. Mahirap na makipag-transact ka sa napakalaking halaga nang walang involved na mga letters of credit. No? Yung cash, parang garantya lang ni Mr. Yang, babayaran kayo niyan, pautangin kayo ng sabihin na nating daang milyon o bilyon, maski i-convert no ng uh, RMB, malaking halaga yon. So tama na yung garantya ni Mr. Yang na babayaran kayo ni Mr. Lincoln Ong Supplyan nyo yan at sigurado makakasingil yan. Ganun ang adison yung palabasin, di ba? Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, nung time na yun, uh, actually we were expecting the, the project to be very quick. Eh. So, yun po. Humingi po talaga kami ng tulong kay Mr. Michael Yang. Hindi ko, parang ano eh, parang sari-sari store na, o kaya parang transaksyon na bilihan ng sasakyan lang na o gagarantyahan ko, babayaran ka nito, binigay na sa isa sakyan. Eh ito, bilyon nito eh. Ganun ba kadali yun? At saka government It transaction. Was... Dapat, kumpleto yung inyong papeles, mga import permit, siyempre sa customs, mahigpit, hingan kayo ng mga letters of credit, eh di ba? Eh sabi mo, walang letters of credit, wala kang maipapakita na LC. Ang sabi mo, kung hindi cash, eh garantya lang ni Mr. Yang, eh dumarating yung supplies ninyo. Eh billion ito. Ganun kadali? Uh, Mr. Chairman, hindi po talaga madali nung mga nangyari nung panahon na yun. Hindi, uh, hindi talaga tumar... madali. Kaya alam mo, uh, Lincoln, hindi nga ka panipiniwala eh ganun kadali ang transaksyon involving billions of pesos. Yun ang sinasabi ko. Na garantya lang ni Mr. Yang, darating yung supply ninyo at sigurado ro kayo makakasingil. Ngayon, paano magagarantiyahan ni Mr. Yang na makakasingil kayo? Kaagad, para mabayaran yung mga sinusupply ng mga Chinese firms, yung apat na Chinese firms. Mr. Chair, uh, I cannot answer for Mr. Michael Yang. Ayun nga, nagtuturoan na kayong dalawa ngayon. Sabi ni Mr. Yang, ikaw ang diretsyong nakipagtransaksyon doon sa mga Chinese firms at siya lang ang nagpakilala. Ngayon, hindi ka privy sa pag-uusap ni Michael Yang doon sa mga Chinese suppliers. Ang sinasabi naman ni Mr. Yang, hindi siya privy sa pag-uusap mo sa mga Chinese suppliers. Now, which is the truth? The truth is, uh, Mr. Chairman, the, the truth is talaga, Mr. Chairman, uh, tumulong talaga po si, si Mr. Michael Yang. And then, uh, I, I, I think he is really connected in, uh, within in China. Tapos po, uh, meron naman po kaming no one nung time na yan. So I think uh, it's also a good proof and boost of confidence to these suppliers. Yeah, I know that. But this is a government transaction. Hindi ito yung bilihan. Nakita kayo sa isang lugar, sa isang restaurant, pinakilala sa yung supplier, at naniwala yung supplier, sinuplayan ka ng kung ano man yung uh, pinag, uh, pinag-uusapan yung bilihan. This involves bills of peso. Sabi ko nga, hindi ganun kasimple na isang garantya Pagbibigyan ka ng suppliers. Ang sabi ni Mr. Yang, hindi, na siya, hindi niya na alam kung paano kayo nag-uusap ng suppliers. Ang sinasabi mo ngayon, hindi mo na alam kung paano nakipag, nakipag-usap si Mr. Yang sa mga suppliers. Ang tanong ko, alin ang totoo sa dalawa? Uh, totoo po yun na 
pagdating sa negotiation ng mga delivery at pricing, uh, kami na po talaga ni, ni supplier nag, uh, nag-finalize. Totoo po yun. At uh, inaamin ko rin po na, nagka, na pagdating sa mga bayaran, we, need, we also need Mr. Michael Young's guarantee. Parang paniwalaan niyan, Lincoln, ano? kasi napakalaking halaga nito. At government transaction pa ito para isimplify nyo ng ganon ang inyong uh, pakipag-usap. So, wala kayong LC? Ano po? Uh, LC wala po? Wala LC. po. LC. Wala. Walang gamit na LC. Wala po. Wala Money po, transfer. Wala po LC po. Money transfer. Meron po, meron po. Meron po, meron How? po. How did you make the money transfer? Bank to bank? Ah, uh, pag pagdating po sa in our uh, our internal operation, pag uh, nagre-remit po kami sa mga supplier, we uh, we use sa uh, Telex. Yung yung maayos po na ano na, na transaction. Do you have documents to show your uh, proof of payment to sa mga suppliers? Uh, we we have all those those documents uh, as long as uh, uh, it's a uh, wala naman pong rights or uh, may violate sa amin. We are more than willing to cooperate. Okay. How much in total did you pay the four suppliers? Doon sa mga dumating, ha, yung na-procure na ninyo so, as, uh, and, and, and supplied to the PSDBM, uh, magkano yung binayaran nyo sa mga suppliers? Uh, sir, uh, Mr. Chairman, wala po kasi sa amin yung mga... Sa akin po, uh, wala po talaga sa akin ng record. Uh. I, I think I have to access the, our accounting records. No, but ikaw nakipag-usap sa mga suppliers, may idea ka kung magkano yung presyo na binayaran mo doon, di ba? Uh, Mr. Chairman, kasi it, uh, medyo, ano po, medyo ano na po yun, eh, uh, trade secret na po yun. Eh, uh, parang hindi po kami komportable na i-bulgar na na po sa publiko. <laughs> uh, just as an intervention na Senator Lacson, Go ahead, uh, with the permission of Senator Luxon. Yes, uh, sir, these are public yes. funds. These are subject to audit by the COA. And you better, and even if you do not testify, COA has the power to inquire. Pwede po tanungin, tingnan ang records ng uh, family kung magkano binayad nyo sa inyo mga supplier. Lalo na po, kagina may testimony dito, na mukhang wala naman kayong pera, paano nyo na-erase yung 7 billion na pambayad din nyo? So, pwede pong tingnan yan ng COA dahil transaction dahil pera ng taong bayan yan. Uh, pwede pong uh, nasa, nasa kapangirihan ng COA na tingnan. So, sabihin mo na kung, kung uh, uh, ano ang totoo. Dahil pwede ma-check po yan. Uh, Mr. Chair, thank you po to sa enlightenment. Uh, uh, Definitely, makikipag-corporate kami sa mga sa mga ahensya pagdating sa mga ganitong uh, investigation. Salamat po, Mr. Chair. Kaya nga, di sabihin mo na, makikipag-corporate. Tinatanong ka na, hindi mo naman sinasagot. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I, I myself alone can't uh, uh, answer that question kasi uh, kumpanya po kami, uh, allow, allow us to... Uh, uh, have a meeting on it, tapos pag-usapan namin and then seek, we seek guidance with our accountants and lawyer and then oh, definitely uh, pagka kinakailangan namin makipag-corporate sa, sa COA uh, gagawin po namin yun. Hey, Mr. Lincoln Ong, uh, with the permission yes, of Mr. Mr. Chairman, may I continue? Go ahead, Puro please. Verbal, Puro verbal ba usapan niya? Did you have any uh, document Kung ano yung, uh, meron kayong parang joint venture agreement with Mr. Yang? Uh, we do have agreement po. Yes. Do you have a copy of that uh, agreement? I, 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 I don't have it uh, with me, Mr. Chairman. What kind of agreement do you have with Mr. Yang? I, hindi ko po talaga maalala nung, nung, nung mga specific content niya, Mr. Chairman. But uh, uh, sana po maintindihan nyo na kami po sa community namin, minsan uh, totoo po yun. Pagka minsan may mga transaction kami na minsan verbal-verbal talaga. Uh, bis- negosyante no, lang po. But in this particular case, yung supplies ng mga PPEs, sinabi mo, meron kayong pinirmahan na agreement with Mr. Yang. Ang tanong ko, anong klaseng agreement 
Anong klase yung pinirmahan yung dokumento? Anong form? Is it a joint agreement? Is it a contract? Mr. Chair, uh, can you please wait for the question to be uh, formulated before you answer? My apologies, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, what document, document did you have or did you sign with Mr. Yang? It's so far as the supplies Mr. Of, the, of the materials. Mr. Chairman, I'm not really uh, privy or hindi ko talaga ma-recall ngayon kung ano yung content, but we have, we do have kasulatan po. Uh, very important document, hindi mo matanda kung anong form, joint venture ba, contract ba, hindi mo malang maalala kung ano yun. Um, meron, meron, meron po talaga ganun. Anong klase nga? Mr. Chair, hindi ko po maka, hindi ako maka, ano eh, hindi maka, kasi an, baka po uh, mali yung mga masabi ko ngayon, tapos yung iba na may nakita ko. Can, can you produce that? Hanapin ko po, po sir. Yes po, yes po. Mr. Young yes po. signed that document, I suppose, correct? As well as you did sign the same document. I have a question. You haven't answered. Both Mr. Young and you signed that document which you said uh, is in your possession, di ba? You cannot just recall kung ano yung pinirmahan nyo, but you did sign uh, on the same piece of paper, on the same document. Yes po, yes po. Can you produce that and submit that to the committee? Hanapin ko po, uh, sir. Hanapin ko po and then definitely comply kami sa kung, kung kailangan talaga. Okay. So, <laughs> so when you were dealing with the Chinese suppliers, you were traveling to China? Ay, hindi po. Hindi po. Oh, who, was who was traveling to China to deal with them? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, kasi nung time na yan, uh, that, was, that was pandemic. Maraming mga bansa na mga, mga, mga so, borders, mga sarado po. Okay. So how did Mr. Yang introduce you to the Chinese suppliers? They came here, you went there by phone. Puro, puro by phone lang po, Mr. Chair. Tapos uh, may mga tao Tele po naman kami sa China. Telepono lang, tinawagan ka ni Mr. Yang, pinakausap sa yung Chinese supplier, all four of them, maybe one after the other, and that's it. Yes, um, yes Mr. Chair, yes po. Okay. So, meron ka bang nilabas na cash? Dito Para... po sa site namin. Sa yes. site po namin yes. ng Farmally. Sa Farmally. Oh. Ah, yes po, yes po, yes po. Magkano? Estimate, how much cash did you, for, the whole, for this whole transaction, how much cash did you shell out? Whether it's advance payment, partial payment, how much? Uh, Mr. Chair, I really have to refer it to uh, to to our other partners for that. Because I really don't have to record it with me now. Sino partners ang pwede sumagot? Nandyan lahat yung partners mo eh. Mr. Mr. Wong, uh, do you think you can uh, you can you can uh, access any any document, Mr. Chair? Who are you referring to, Mr. Wang? Mr. Wang, probably. Okay, Wong, Mr. Wang. Mr. Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Huang, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, baka po pwedeng makahingi po ng opportunity na para mag, makapag uh, opening statement po si Mr. Huang, Huang Su Yan. No, 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 no. I'm asking him a question and you you referred me to him. You referred the committee to Mr. <laughs> Huang uh, para sagutin yung tinatanong ko. Ha? My apologies po. Eh. How did you transact with the or deal with the four Chinese suppliers. Kasi sabi mo, nirefer ka ni Mr. Yang. So how? Did you go to China? Did they come here? Sabi mo, by telepono lang. Ngayon, ang sagot mo, si Mr. Wang naman ang pwede sumagot noon. How? So I'm asking Mr. Wang. And now you're saying, mag-opening statement si Mr. Wang. Mr. Wang. Yes, Mr. Chairman. So how did you transact with the Chinese suppliers? The first time you were introduced um, by Mr. Yang. I mean, um, 
to clarify one thing, I wish to stay on record that Mr. Young and I have not in, been in direct contact for, for since 2017, March. After that, um, after he introduced to for us to for the my previous employer to invest in the companies, um, we stopped contacting each other. As for the question regarding the, how do we contact with the Chinese suppliers, I think most of the communications were done through WeChat. They will send us samples, they will send us pictures, and um, they will, we will relay to them our requirements of the amount, and then we will ask them for the supposed um, delivery dates and quantities they can met to that schedule so that we can better prepare for our um, uh, proposals. So we're now back to Mr. Ong, because yes, well, as, as you mentioned, after the March 2017 encounter with Mr. Yang in Davao, you never had the chance to see him again or to talk to him again. So we're back to Mr. Ong. And Tanong, how did you deal with the Chinese uh, suppliers? Did you go to China? Political mm -hmm. I, I hate to be repetitive, but uh, you're not answering the questions directly. Uh, yes, well, Mr. Chairman. Unresponsive. Mr. Chairman, yeah, Mr. Chairman, I'm here. I'm here, po. Uh, sorry, po. Last na po talaga. Uh, yung ano po yung tanong nyo? Isasagot ko talaga na maayos. Ang sabi mo, pinakilala na ka sa mga Chinese suppliers. Ang tanong ko, Paano kayo nagkita o nag-uusap ng Chinese suppliers? Apat yun. O, pumunta ka ba ng China? Sabi mo, hindi. Ang nirefer mo ako kay Mr. Wang. Sabi ni Mr. Wang, hindi niya naman nami meet si Mr. Yang. Ikaw talaga yung kausap ni Mr. Yang. O, yun ang tanong. Tama po, tama po. Tama po kayo. Yes po, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairman pala. Hindi tama. How eh? Ay, uh, Mr. Chat. Chairman, nag-uusap nag talaga kami ng mga Chinese supplier through WeChat. Yung app po na WeChat. Bilyon-bilyon ang usapan nyo. WeChat lang kayo ng WeChat. We were really not able to travel that time, Mr. Chairman. M Mr. Chairman, uh, this is such a parliamentary inquiry. What is the status of the warrants of arrest issued against these uh, people? Those who were issued the uh, warrants of arrest, they still stand. Am I correct, Mr. Chairman? The warrant of arrest was based on a contempt of not showing up. You can now issue another warrant for contempt for being evasive. And obviously, the witness is being evasive. And the chair will entertain an motion to cite this gentleman in contempt for lying or evasiveness under the rules. Yes, if I may. Uh, move or uh, uh, issue the, the motion, Mr. Chairman, it's not only Mr. Ong that's uh, being evasive. I, mean, I think Mr. Yang, likewise, is being evasive because we cannot get a clear answer. They're yes, pointing uh, to each other and clearly they're being evasive. So I would, you know, I move, I really would move uh, either, the, either not to lift the warrant of arrest previously issued by the Senate President or issue a subsequent warrant of arrest for being evasive. Well, against whom? Against whom? Mr. Yang, both Mr. Yang and Mr. Ong. That is a, uh, that is a motion. Well, the chair supports your motion, uh, and uh, the whole world will know that there is a pending warrant of arrest for Mr. Yang and Mr. Ong, if the if the if the committee so pleases. Second the motion, Mr. Chair. All right. No objection. The chair here hereby orders that Mr. Lincoln Ong and Mr. Yang are placed under arrest. And there are reasons for it. And correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Uh, uh, Lakson. Mr. Yang was asked whether when was the only time he did not readily say that he presented himself during the meeting in May 17. You had to pry it out from him. On the other hand, this guy says, uh, and he says that he never had any Wala silang, pinag wala, 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 wala silang dealing directly, sabi ni Mr. Yang, sa family. And yet ngayon, sinasabi ni Mr. Long na nagagarad siya si Mr. Ong. In fact, if I may add, sir, with your permission, Mr. Lakson, itong sinabi po ng Presidente, ano bang reklamo ninyo? 
Kasi si Michael Young daw, eh negosyante, negosyante ito. Adre, hindi naman ito sabihin mo na nagtatapol ito ng pera. May contact ito sa China ng malalaking korporasyon at siya ang nagpagador. In other words, uh, siya ang gumagaran siya talaga ng, ng bayad o siya ang magbabayad sa, sa made their entry here. So, yun ang sinabi ng presidente. Which, uh, uh, again, quote and quote yun, which uh, uh, supports the statement made by uh, Mr. Ong na ginagarantyahan ni Mr. Yang so, hindi totoo na wala siya transaksyon, ginagarantyahan niya lahat yung inu-order nila. At uh, dahil dyan, uh, dapat uh, nakita na talagang may relasyon talaga si Mr. Yang sa family. At uh, uh, ang masasabi ko lang, uh, dapat tanongin pa natin si Mr. Ong para masarado na yung uh, kanyang statement na makikita talaga na nagsisinungaling siya. And uh, go ahead, Mr. Lakson. You can go ahead. This is your, uh, this is your time to ask them. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Ang sunod na tanong ko, dahil sinabi nila, binabayaran nila ng money transfer or cash yung suppliers. So, saan kayo bumibili ng foreign exchange? Kasi hindi naman nyo pwedeng bayaran ng pesos, di ba? So, Tama. how do you do it? Where do you buy your foreign exchange? In this case, RMB. How did you secure the foreign currency to pay your suppliers? Uh, proper proper bank transaction po yun, Mr. Chairman. Hindi po siya RMB, Mr. Chairman. US Hindi dollar po, Mr. Chairman. Hindi siya tinatanong RMB. Ang tinatanong siya, siya ka kumukuha ng foreign exchange para bayaran yung mga tao doon. Uh, Siyempre, mag-remit mag ka. Mag-remit ka, di ba? So, siya ka kumukuha ng pera pang bayo doon. Pag dito po sa pag dito po sa Philippine side, uh, we we transact with our bank. Sinong bank? Union, At kay, Union Bank. Union At bank. kailan? Kailan kayo una nagtransak? Uh, we, we have to check the, the, the record, pero continuous naman yung transaction. Ano, sinabi na ni Wang na ang unang transaction niya sa Union Bank ay November. That is a full seven months. Pitong buwan, magbula nung nakakuha kayo ng malalaking kontrata na sunod-sunod na linggo sa nung Abril. Masa record yan. Binasa ko yes. na kayo na. So it took you seven months bago kayo magsanda. Ang hinilam niyo doon, 500 million. Sa so, mga katwid, nagbabayo kayo between that time ng pera. Saka lang kayo umutang nung nagkaroon na kayo ng pera. Kuno, kuno ha, kuno. Hindi ako naniniwala dahil ang tingin ko nagbabayo kayo. Pero hindi nyo masabi kung saan nyo kinukuha yung pera. Galing ba yan sa Ibang sources na illicit? Uh, hindi po, Mr. Chair. Uh, meron po kami mga sariling pondo rin. At, oh, uh, bigla may sariling pondo na naman. O, sige. Opo. So, so, specifically, so, Senator Gordon, kaginong pera, bank accounts, kung saan nang galing yung nirebit nyo sa mga supplier? Uh, if ever kung if ever magre-remit kami sa mga supplier, dapat po talaga magagaling sa ano namin, sa bank account namin kasi kaya nga so a link bank sino ang may-ari nito mga bank accounts at magkano ang ni-remit niyo? Uh, corporation po namin, yung fa family pharmaceutical po. Yung corporation niyo, Mr. Ong, ang pera is 625,000 lang pesos. Ito naman o oh, peso, 625,000 pesos lang. Kaya hindi pwede bang gagaling sa korporasyon ninyo kung milyon-milyon ang binabayad nyo sa Chinese suppliers. Sabi mo, galing sa banko. Tanong ngayon, sino ba may-ari ng mga account na yun? Uh, corporate account po, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, talaga nagsisinungaling ito eh. <laughs> Ay, talaga. <laughs> How can it be a corporate account? With the Mr. account where, yeah, yes, uh, sorry, yeah. Senator Pink. Senator Lackson, go ahead. Very clearly, na ang pera ninyo, 625 pesos. Ang tanong ni Senator Dillon, 625,000 pesos. Ang tanong ni Senator Dillon, 625,000 pesos. Tapos ang nire-remit ninyo, sabi mo, galing din sa corporation ninyo, sa Parmali, maliwanag yan. Hindi sa ibang corporation, hindi kayo ng utang at lahat. Saan ang galing yung perang nire-remit nyo sa China. Sabihin na natin galing sa banko rito. Ang sagot na galing sa corporation nyo. 
Eh, ang late nga ng, uh, ng capital ng corporation ninyo, 625. That's the question. How do you reconcile that? Okay, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, can I, pwede na po ba ako mag, ano, mag, uh, magpaliwanag? Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, thank, thank, you, Mr. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, marami pong kasing series of transaction yun. So, meron naman po kami na iipon na, na pera. So, so that's our pondo. And then at the same time, sa mga sa mga series of transactions, pagka pagka malayo malaki na po yung project, kinakailangan din po namin mangutang sa mga kaibigan. So hindi ko po din deny na may meron kaming mga utang sa labas. Hindi <laughs> naman yan ang problema eh. Bilyon bilyon ang tinatransact niyo. Marami kang kaibigan. Kaya lang paliwanag ko sa rin kinuha ng mga kaibigan niyo yung pera niyan. Mga paliwanag kayo sa Money Laundering Council. Mm, uh, definitely we we sige, sige. Po, sige po. Sige, sige mo. Ay, definitely po uh kinakailangan po namin makipag-cooperate sa um, anti-money laundering. Talaga mag-cooperate ka dati. Po, uh, kung... uh, Senator, Senator Dick. Dick. Senator Dick, yes. you have a question. The, uh, Senator Dick, the first transaction of Fermali is 54 million. Mm. The money that they had was 625,000. All right. So where did the 53 million come from? He said from bank accounts. Whose bank account? Because Don't it cannot corporate. come. Uh, uh, ano? Ano? Corporate. 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 Accounts. Sagot niya. Corporate. How? Corporate yung corporation ulang pera? 625,000? Mr. Chairman, on, on the screen, ito yung timelines, ano? Oh. Ewan ko kung sasisingit dito yung nakasingit sila para gamitin lang pera. Look, and I'd like to address these questions also to Mr. Lau, ano? January 2, you were appointed and sabi mo nag-apply ka. Where is your letter of application? Do you have a copy to be appointed under secretary uh, OIC, PSDBM, at the same time, Executive Director. Um, uh, it should be distinguished between the two. My statement is uh, applied as Undersecretary, which I was appoint appointed to as Undersecretary in DBM. With respect to Executive Director, I never applied for it. It, it was already stated, uh, I think, last year and this year, Senate investigation, that there was a vacuum when the Executive Director was removed from office by reason of lack of um, uh, qualification. Okay. Is alam na natin yon, Attorney Lau. Alam na natin yon. Wag na tuli ten. After he was, after he was, she was removed from office. There was a vacuum. I was instructed to be OIC only. So the secretary of DBM was the one who executed the OIC. Yun po. So okay. Never, alam na natin yon. Never mind. Yes, sir. February four, you wrote the Civil Service Commission requesting that uh, reclassify yung mga employees, yung mga staff sa PSDBM as confidential employees. Why did you do that? When I took into office on January 2020, I noticed that a lot of positions have been vacant by reason of high turnover rate. At ang high turnover rate, mabilis po yung alisan dyan kasi nga walang security of tenure. Second po, uh, when I, I took uh, that position, na notice ko rin po na uh, very few are uh, interested in, in applying. So, uh, ang third din po, when I checked it, there was a structured proposal by um, a consultant of, of the previous executive director, Ms. Edine Cueva, that uh, they have this proposed structure. Kasi nga, medyo problematic yung structure ng PSDBM. In fact, previous to me, uh, PSDBM was being moved to be either demolished or uh, uh, I think, uh, when can sa operations or they will be incorporated as a GOCC. So based on that, as part of my of my professional work, I consulted the uh, civil service commission as to the feasibility whether or not these positions which are crucial can be or may not be considered as confidential positions. It's a consultation. 
However, there was no response for an entire year. Lacking the response, we continued operating the PSDBM in a usual manner based on the existing structure. Po. Mr. Attorney Lau, dahil walang security of tenure, konti nag apply ang solusyon mo, gawing confidential employees. Hindi mo ba alam na ang confidential employees, wala rin security of tenure? No, sir. That's, that's, that's part of it. Kasi ka, uh, the, the purpose we wrote that letter, kasi nga mayroong mga concerns again, it's a point of inquiry. Hindi, we inquired if it can be. Kasi nga, part of the, of the, the dilemma of the PSDBM status yun. Kasi if you look at, at the, now that's a problem eh. Mabilis Ito, ito letter mo eh. Nakapla sa board. Ito ni Lau. Yes. Yes, sir. In spite of the agency status, it is also uh, vital for the agency head to uh, appoint what? officials and personnel with utmost trust and confidence that are capable of handling highly confidential dele delegations on top of the regular functions. Yes, Anong highly confidential procurement yung pig-uusapan natin? It should be transparent. Yes, um, being whether or not they are con confidential or not, Mr. Chairman, it will be transparent because everything is public record and everything is on record. Even all the senator's office have confidential employees, but these are all transparent. Kahit saan po tayo ganun. So these director positions and EA positions, um, as for a formal ED, it's a nature of employment that they can be hired or fired at any time by reason of confidence. Uh, whether slow ang performance, you can be fired. Kasi, di ba, it's, it's an ongoing, recurring issue kasi before. is the sales, the slow-moving items na hindi mabenta, yung operations namin, di ba? It's, it's part of the system. And regardless kasi, it's, it's, being, it's being painted na there is an ill motive. Let me point it to the public. I was designated as OIC. Regardless whether this letter will be approved or denied, it will not make a difference on my part because I am not the appointing authority. The executive director has the authority to appoint, hire, or fire employees in PSDBM. However, I am an OIC based on the designation by the Secretary of Budget and Management. My only authority is to manage the office. I have no authority to hire or to fire. Now, that letter will not benefit me in any manner if it is approved or denied because I cannot hire or fire. But I wrote that letter as part of my function as OIC. In any event that there is a new executive director, they will benefit from it. It's a legal question. Diba? I, the only function, diba? the question is, pinagawa mo yan kasi gusto mo. No, I don't have the authority because I'm just an OIC. It is clear in the designation on my person that my only responsibility is to run the day-to-day -day operations of the office. The authority to appoint was not part of the ones dedicated to me. So whether or not that civil service, civil service letter would be acted upon positively or negatively, it will not affect my, my OIC designation. Second, it's a pure letter. Diba? Oh, what difference does it make? It doesn't make any difference kasi a year after pa ang response ng civil service. On the third point, to say, oh, kasi may pre predetermination yan, may plan plan there. I'll just answer it straight. February 4, there is no COVID. Chairman, Mr. Chairman. I think the plan, magkaka-COVID tayo. Mr. Chairman, Attorney Lau, Go ahead, yeah. sir. Attorney Lau said that one year pa nag-respond yung uh, Civil Service Commission, is that correct? Did I hear him correctly, Mr. Chairman? Yes, I believe so, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. One year back. No, March, March 9, the CSC denied your request. And yeah, no, that's a timeline. And I have here the copy of the uh, resolution signed by Chairperson uh, De La Rosa Bala, uh, Commissioner Lizada, and acting director for Del Moro. Hindi one year. Yes. I, 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 it's, more than it's more than a year. It's more than a year because I wrote the letter on February 2020. So that that's March, March 9, 2021? Yes, March 9, 2021. Po. It's more than a year on response. Sila. 
So I while they did make the response, yeah. we set upon our function in the office remained the same as before I entered into office. So we just continued the, the operations, Mr. Chen. Okay, moving forward, you know, let's go back to the transaction. Anyway, March 20, merong FDA circular. Ang requirement, do sa mga importers ng PPEs, LTO license to operate and proof of application for notification, yun ang sufficient compliance for customs release. And then, on April 6, FDA Circular 2020-547, ang kailangan na lamang, LTO, sufficient na compliance for customs release. And true enough, April 15, eto na yung uh, naward na kayo ng 54 million pesos for the supply of 2.4 million surgical masks at 22 pesos and 50 uh, centavos each. I'm referring to Palmari, you know, of course. And then March 16 or April 16, Dito yung nakasingit pa yung 2782. No? Uh, ang presyo nyo kasi 2250, 2782, and 22 pesos per piece. And then, you know, fast forward, May 28, kasi marami na kayo, 3.8 billion na yung uh, contract nyo ng uh, 1,910 uh, sets ano, of PPEs. Tapos purchase order May 8. May 26, naglabas uli yung FDA uh, circular 2020-018, ano? importers of PPE, LTO shall be sufficient compliance for the customs release. Importers are advised to apply CPN, Certificate of Product Notification, prior to commercial sale and distribution of medical services. And then November 9, LTO and CPN, pati yung CMDN for customs release. No? The, the, the reason why I'm pointing this out, Mr. Chairman, parang there's a grand scheme to really allow Palmari uh, enough leeway to import all these uh, medical supplies. That's, that's the uh, point I'm trying to raise, Mr. Chairman. And uh, again, uh, unless Mr. Lincoln Ong, Michael Young, and the rest of Palmari Pharmaceuticals, the incorporators, will tell us the truth in this... Uh, in this in this hearing, then we can just uh, speculate on what really happened, you know, uh, or the circumstances behind circumstances behind all these transactions. So, I I think I have exceeded my my time, the time allotted to me, Mr. Chairman. Uh, otherwise, I will have to proceed to another uh, matter. Mr. Chair. Well, yes, if you have more questions, the chairman has the leeway to allow you to continue the questions because you're on point. But I see Senator Dion having a question. Go ahead, Senator Dion. Yes. Senator Dion, you're on mute. Yes. Just to go back to Mr. Lincoln Ong, here is a resource person who is clearly lying on the record because he says, the funds were corporate funds, corporate funds of Fairbally. But the financial statement, the audited financial statement, indicates that beginning of 2020, they had only 625,000, which is the paid up capital. Clearly, the corporation had no capacity to pay the initial order of 54 million. So it is not true at all. And there is a deliberate effort to mislead the committee by saying these are corporate funds. We asked him, who are the, uh, who advanced this payment? He said it was from uh, bank accounts of Union Bank or something. Who owns the bank accounts? He is already evasive. This witness, Mr. Chairman, is clearly lying, is clearly lying. And uh, in the uh, uh, case of Arnold, which is a 1950 case, this Senate has the power to detain, as we have detained people until they tell us the truth. This witness is both evasive and refuses to answer or telling a lie. Uh, uh, and therefore, he has been declared in contempt earlier we move that the contempt 
uh, order be now executed and we send our sheriffs, our, our, our security people to arrest Mr. Ong right now. Yes. Uh, Second. Is, some, is that Mr. Lincoln? Are you running, raising your hand? You have a yes, chance yes, to sir. rectify the matter. Uh, will I be allowed to clarify on the Yes, issues yes. And... You have a chance to rectify the matter. You've been very, very evasive. The chair is giving enough leeway to rectify the matter. But so far, you've messed up your mess of yourselves, of Mr. Young's statement and Mr. Wang's statement. Yes. Uh, Mr. You know Chair, what? you know what? Uh, I will change my ruling here. Will you please there, uh, put your mask off? You are alone in the sala. I want to see because you keep looking upward. Is somebody give dictating questions in an earphone to you? I no, 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 po, Mr. Chairman. Pwede ko po ng mask mask. Just, just humor me. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> ano, uh, Mr. Chairman, what are you going to say? Uh, Mr. Chairman, kasi po ang tanong kanina is tungkol dun po sa very specific. Eh. Will it, uh, allow me to take uh, take you uh, point by point. Uh, ang unang pinakaunang po transaction namin, our first ever transaction transaction is a uh, 500,000 uh, uh, surgical mask. That time, I have access to supplier. That the supplier is willing to give us the stocks. Pag nakapagkuha na kami ng bayad sa gobyerno, cha namin siyang babayaran. That same goes to the to the 54 million na uh, to to 2.1 million pieces and ten. Meron bang tibid sa stocks? <laughs> May, meron po akong mga records eh para para po manamin no, 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 i-explain po sa inyo na maayos. Sige, paliwanag mo. Opo. So, uh, for the first ever transaction po na 500,000, may access po talaga kami sa sa inventory ng mga mga importers. Nung time niyan, we, we wala pa kami, I think I don't think we have an importer license. So, yung yung yung, yung, yung importer mismo nagtitiwala naman po sa akin. So, binigay sa akin ng stocks para ma-supply ko kay kay PSDB. And, and same goes on the so, 2.4 at so Thank you're changing you your Thank answer God. again. You're changing your answer again. Bago na naman to, nang hirap uh, kayo ng doon sa may importer's license. Yung bago gusto mong paniwalaan namin? Uh, Mr. Chairman. Ano uh, yan ang mahirap kung nagsisangali? Nagkakatampak-tampak ka sa alakara mo. Mr. At Chairman. saka hindi lang, yung, hindi lang yun, Mr. Chairman. Sabi niya kanina, binayaran nila out of corporate funds. Yes. So, now he's saying that uh, the, this was loaned, this, this uh, face mask and face shields were, I don't know, loaned to them, whatever is in transaction, which enabled them to supply it to the government. Ganun po ba yun? Kailan nangyari ito? Mr. Kailan nangyari ito? Mr. Kailan, oh, kailan nangyari ang uh, pag-deliver pag, pag, uh, sa inyo ng supplier na 500 thousand face masks. Kailan? Nung, nung meron na pong kaming uh, order from the PSDBM, pinadeliver ko na agad. At pag nakakuha kami bayad, babayaran na agad yung supplier. Ano nga kayo uh, kumuha ng bayad? Ay, Mr. Chair, yung, yung itong tatlo pong face mask, ano talaga, as in at, at, at cre ano, on credit talaga, as in pin binigay lang, uh, pinautang lang talaga sa amin ng supply yung mga stocks. Pag nakapagkuha pag nakapagkuha kami ng bayad, babayaran namin yung mga yun, supplier. Yun, yun yung supplier, yun yung supplier na ni-refer ni Mr. Yang. Ay, um, uh, Mr. At, Mr. Chairman, yung po yung kay Mr. Yang naman, yun yung malaking PPE na. Yun po yung kinakailangan namin na tulong ni Mr. Mr. Yang. At doon nilabas so, nakikilala na, talaga si Mr. Yang. Dito sa mga ibang transaction, hindi po talaga. Dito sa malaking transaction. <laughs> Nalunok ko mo ba kami? <laughs> Doon na kinalaya. Kailangan si Mr. Yang. Ngayon, hindi po talaga. Sino ba nilunok? I move, Mr. Chairman, I move to arrest this uh, Mr. Lincoln Ong and detain him until he tells uh, until he tells us, he answers the questions and not be evasive and until he tells us the truth. Second, Senator Lakson? Yes, the same contempt citation should be issued against Michael Yang because earlier, when I asked him what role did he play, ang sagot niya, ang role niya lang was to introduce and then left them alone, which, as it appears now, is not the case because he played a major role in uh, uh, continuously dealing with the supply 
suppliers by way of guaranteeing that they will be paid by Mr. Ong. Yes, yes. Yes, the questions raised earlier by Senator Lacson. First, Mr. Yang said uh, he only had he had no connection with Farmerly and learned only about Farmerly in the news. That's on record. And then after which he changed his uh, position. He said he only met Farmerly in 2017 and never met them again. And then later on, Mr. Wang admits to knowing Mr. Lincoln Ong of Farmerly. And then he says he introduced Lincoln Ong to the supplier. So he's uh, just like the variant, just like the virus, his answers are mutating. <laughs> Mr. Chairman? <clears throat> Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, may, may we be allowed to speak? Yes, of course. This is a free country. Mr. Chairman, what Mr. Yang said is that at that time when he introduced Lincoln to the suppliers, is he also told them that they can trust Mr. Lincoln uh, in terms of payment? that they can make their own payment and this is a chinese way of uh, making or doing business uh, is mainly because of trust they're public funds and they will be liable for it and there are rules about money you cannot just produce money from out of nowhere you have to learn you have to know that the money has got to be explained all right so you know, it cannot be like that. And let me just say, and let me just ask a question to Mr. Yang. Mr. Yang, you do not speak any language except Chinese? You don't speak Chinese? Uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Yang said that he knows a little bit of Tagalog. Yes, all right. But you've been yeah, here he, since nineteen ninety six, is that correct? Yeah. Uh, no, since nineteen ninety six. Correct? So yeah, he was here nineteen ninety nine, Mr. Chairman. Nineteen ninety nine. Okay. I know that you were here nineteen ninety six. I got some information like that, no? But uh you are the I've been appointed presidential economic advisor. How did you connect, communicate to the president then? No, you need to ma. Tang Shen, you should to ma connect. Sure, the president has speak Chinese. Yes, so easy, simple, and very important. We have all the ways. Ah, normally they would be having an interpreter present, Mr. Chairman. All right, let me show you your movie. Okay, can you show the? Ah, your boy. In uh, and I will ask the Senate to please take a look at how familiar the situation is for Mr. Yang. Very confident. Quickly, please, and while we're doing that, show the other picture. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, we didn't hear your question. You were the one introducing to everybody. You had a big smile in your face. Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Yang is saying that uh, his Tagalog has limitation. Sorry? His Tagalog has limitations, Mr. Chairman. Uh, simple ones. But all I'm saying is, uh, do not uh, make it appear that you need a translator because you're the presidential economic uh, advisor and uh, you have to speak somewhere in English or in Tagalog. And if you have an interpreter, which is the corridor of principal power in this country. And, that could, uh, and then uh, you can say you don't understand it, and that's one of the advantages that you may have there you go another picture that shows you're talking to the president or somewhere else 
Uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Yang is saying... I'm trying to make a point here that you can speak to the president in Tagalog or English or whatever it is you're speaking to. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Yang is saying that he can converse casually but with limited Tagalog only. Yeah, that's already pointed out, all right? Yes. Uh, I can ask you in Tagalog and I'm sure you'll understand. After all, you've been here for the last 22 yeah. years. Uh, the, I mean, Mr. Chairman, in terms of Tagalog, he may not be able to 100% grasp the, the proper I mean, meaning. I mean, accept that already. Mr. Okay. Chairman. Uh, so, I'm, saying, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, can you repeat the question? Uh, Sino going back to Mr. Ong. Mm. Mr. Chairman, before we leave the chairman's video, may I just ask a follow-up yes, question? Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Yang, talking again oh, about that video that the chairman showed, the two men to your right in the video, one of them is Mr. Zeng Bing Chang, and isn't the other one Mr. Alan Lim? So, this is my Okay, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Yang is saying that the two person, uh, that is Wan Cheng Ping Chiang and the other one is Lin Wei Xiong. Uh, these are his friends. So is Mr. Lin Wei Xiong the same as Mr. Alan Lin? Lin Wei Alan Lin I don't he doesn't know, Mr. Chairman. I'll leave it at that for now, Mr. Chairman, but I think Mr. Yang knows more than he is answering at this moment. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. He's under contempt. He's not very forthright. I have many pictures of Mr. Wang with Mr. Lim. Uh, can you show the other pictures, please? And now you got this. I did research. I didn't have to research it. I just had to look at uh, some newspaper accounts. There. Mr. Wang, is that uh, Alan Lin again? I wouldn't check a ship with Alan Lim. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Yang saying that uh, he learned, uh, he get to know Mr. Lin Wei Xiong only on 2013 by the name of Lin Wei Xiong. That was not my question. Okay, but anyway, what is his name? Lin Wei Xiong. Yes, Mr. Chairman, Lin Wei Xiong. In fact, he was the same guy that was uh, charged with uh, uh, involvement in drugs. And I'll show you the uh, charge sheet. Um, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Yang. I have to go because, uh, you know, uh, the other senators have said that you're lying. So just want to test your credibility again. Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Yang is saying that he doesn't know uh, about the accusation about Mr. Uh, Alan Lim that you were saying earlier. But you have been friends with him since 2013, as you say, and he's all with uh, you. So, all right. And, uh, uh, Mr. Lin, go ahead, answer. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, uh, I just confirmed with Mr. Yang. He said that, yes, 2013, he met the person by the name of Lin Wei Xiong. Yeah, and uh, you are both uh, uh, in Pai Li Holdings. Uh, you are a director, and I will show you. Please, uh, show the show the holdings of Pai Li and along with the others quickly please yes uh mr chairman mr yang said that yes uh he is a business partner in under Pai Li holdings all right so uh san yung in record na may charge sheet siya yung pinakita uh the colonel sherto di ba and then uh, go ahead uh, yeah yeah there, there you go is this the same man that you're talking about I'm sorry, come again, Mr. Chairman. I'm showing to you a picture of Wen Li Chen. How uh, Lin, Wen and Li uh, initial uh, profile Lin. of the drug personality. Is Mr. that Alan Lin there? Uh, 
we don't have the picture yet. Can you show the picture? He is in the question. 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 He is in the show the picture so that uh, you can see it. There, can you show it now? Can you see it now? Can you see it now, please? Can everybody see it? Wala pa rin? Wala pa rin po, Mr. Chairman. Sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, we'll take one try and then we'll show it again. So, I will ask a question to Mr. Ekman as you're trying to show it. Uh, Mr. Lin, obviously you're good friends, right? Uh, I, there are other pictures with you on the beach. Can you show the picture on the beach, Muna? Again, I got this from uh, these are public. Uh, yeah, 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 there you go. There you go. There. That, uh, uh, Lin or Wen Li Chen or mm -hmm. is he the same man? Uh, I don't know, Mr. Chairman. You've been friends with him for 13 years and you don't know? Uh, 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 Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Yang said he only knows a person by the name of Lin Wei Xiong. But yeah, not... Uh, I'm showing you the picture. Niba, magkamukha ba? As a senator, so take a look at it. Ah, uh, 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 Mr. Chairman, he's saying uh, that the picture is very blurred. He couldn't confirm. Well, I don't think it's blurred, but anyway, I'm sorry I have to ask you these questions. I don't want to put you in discomfort. But I have to ask you this just to be sure. Oh. <laughs> the Senate President was said and, uh, the name of Wen Lin Shen is uh, there. All right? I'm sorry, we have to ask you this. He can't understand the English, uh, Mr. Chairman, so he couldn't you read can. it. You can, right? Yes. Well, just okay. Please. okay. Uh, with Possible true Chinese name, the Chinese name. So, the uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, he said that uh, because what was written. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, he's saying that he only knows Mr. Lin Wei Xiong and that if. Uh, you You're have saying that's not the same person. The government agency to do the proper investigation. You're saying that's not the same person. You should just can check it. He couldn't confirm. He couldn't confirm, like he said. You have, I mean, Mr. Yang saying you have to do the investigation. He couldn't confirm. All right, but again, I show you some pictures again that we got from the public. Uh, uh, sources, uh, uh, these are your pictures together. Uh, are, are you you're supposed to be a good judge of character? You preach in high places, and uh, uh, there you go. You're with the president with him again. Uh, and then uh, again, another picture, I think, on the beach, if I'm not mistaken. Can you show that? I really apologize. I don't want to put you in discomfort, but you know, this is an investigation where a lot of our people are involved. A lot of people are hungry. Yeah, yeah. People have been deprived of their ayuda or help. Here it is. Like, Can you make it a little bigger, please? There you go. Uh, that is uh, Mr. Lin Wei Xiong. Alan Lin or again, and Michael Yang are the two men at the extreme left. Mm -hmm. 
Mr. Chairman, Mr. Yang said that he only knows Lin Wei Xiong and he doesn't know any person by the name of Alan Lim. Well, that's the same person that I showed you, all right? That that is based on your uh statements, Mr. Chairman, but he cannot confirm that. Yeah, he only says that he only knows asking you. I'm just asking you. I've not made any conclusion. I'm just asking you. These are one and the same person. I already replied that I only know Lin Wei Xiong. All right, okay. You are also in a corporation that involves a certain lady by the name of Rose Nono Lin. Familiar with her? Rose Nono Lin. Yes, you're all, you're, yes, Mr. Chairman. In fact, she is the president of uh, a corporate secretary, if I'm not mistaken, Jason Uson in Piley Holdings. Rose Nono Lin, corporate secretary. Yan Hong Lin. And then again, you see Lin. Wei Xiong, Aka Alan Lin, Vice Chairman. Vice Chairman. Yes, uh, yes, yes, uh, Mr. Lin Wei Xiong is one of our stockholders, and, and Rose Nono Lin as well. And is he married to Rose Lin? Come again, Mr. Chairman, sorry. You see the Eco Tai Tai of, uh, is uh, Rose Lin Eco Tai Tai of uh, uh, Lin Wei Xiong, your good friend? Yes, uh, Lin Wei Xiong is the husband of Rose Nono Lin. Thank you. And then Paili Estate Group. Uh, you are there again. Yang Hong Jan. I'm sorry, that's your brother, right? Hong Yang Hong Yang. Hong Jiang, Yang. Hong Yang, Jiang, is brother? Yes, uh, it's his brother, Mr. Chairman. All right. So again, uh, by affinity, uh, Alan Lim's, uh, you know, in this corporation, uh, the wife of Alan Lim, Rose Nono Lim, is also in this corporation, Piley Estate Group. And then the name of Power Megamix, uh, Shown here, Rose Nono Lim again, President. She is, as you say, the wife. Uh, and also in formally biological, Wang Suyen appears again, uh, our president who is here, Rose Nono Lim, treasurer. And there you go. Uh, again, Rose Nono Lim, the wife of uh, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Lin Wei Xiong, right? And then as I go to the left in Shongwei, Shongwei, that is a Pogo Corporation. Are you familiar with that? He knows the company, but uh, he has, he only knows them. He, he knows the company, Mr. Chairman. Sir, I'm not accusing you of anything. I'm just saying these are the things that we find out. And uh, now uh, Mr. Lincoln, Wong, who said that uh, he gets guidance from you to make sure that you can guarantee and the president himself says you are the pagador. Which means that you really have connections with family because Lin Lincoln Ong is able to transact business without any documentation as to where the money came from. Go uh, ahead, I'll allow you to translate. Okay, Mr. Chairman, what Mr. Yang basically did was to introduce Mr. Lincoln to his friends uh, in China for supply, for potential being a supplier. And then he also mentioned that these people that they can trust on Lincoln to be able to. So, to, in to fact, trust it, is, Lincoln. it is not accurate for you to say, and listen to my question because you said, First time you saw them and the last time you saw them was when you saw the president in March 2017. And then all of a sudden your name comes out and now you're saying you introduced Mr. Lincoln Ong uh, and that his credit is good because you are practically, as Mr. Lincoln Ong says, practically a guarantor. Is that correct? Excuse me, Mr. Chairman, if I may shed sunlight okay. on that as well. No, 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 no. I'm asking the question here right now for the moment. I'll, I'll get to you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. 
So Mr. Lincoln Ong is being guaranteed by you. And Mr. Lincoln Ong cannot show any paper trail that you got some money and that he is able to transact all these orders in China without any paper trail. And Mr. Uh, Wang says they have a bank which transacted uh, where they transacted a letter of credit. When I asked him, how did you manage to do that? You have a letter of credit? And I said, yes, very readily. And I said, uh, which bank? He said, Union Bank. Very good bank. And yet, the transaction happened in November. For seven months, pitong buwan, nung una kayo mag-transact nung April. So in between April and uh, April and uh, it November, uh, where was the money coming from? And Lincoln said, oh, I was getting you know, uh, uh, aid from everybody, ganyan ang Chinese way, we're not going to accept that. You know that. Pwede ba yun? Nasasabihin mo na lang sa amin and you expect us to believe? Mr. Chairman. These are pesos of the people's money that are being spent to an unknown corporation, what we call Prima Para, a first-time corporation with only 625,000 pesos. Ang capital. Tapos, you're saying, oh, marami kami inutangan, nagagarantiyan ni Mr. Michael Young na sinasabi nung una, wala siyang pakilaw sa Farmali. And then all of a sudden, nakita natin ang mga connectivities. Tumasok na si Alan Lim. Na si, uh, yan, pumasok na yung asawa ni Alan Lim. Magkakasama sila. In other words, talagang paikot-ikot lang kayo dyan. Mr. Chairman, if I may. I I'll get to you. Uh, no, Lincoln. Tama? Okay, I know that you're chomping on your bit, Mr. Wang. Uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, Chairman, before we leave Mr. Yang, if I may. Oh, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just another question to Mr. Yang. Tanong po kay Mr. Yang tungkol dun sa video na pinakita ng Chairman. Sabi po ni Mr. Hindi akin yun. Ah. Hindi akin yun. Pinakita ah. ng RITM yun. Right. right. That's right, Mr. RITM Chairman. It's right. easily available RITM. on YouTube. RTVN. RTVN. Sorry. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Opo. So, sabi po ni ninyo, Mr. Yang, nakilala nyo si Mr. Zheng Bing Chang sa video na iyon. Inidentify nyo po siya. Uh, bilang kayo yung dating Presidential Economic Advisor kay Presidente, Hindi nyo ba siya pinayuhan, hindi nyo ba siya binigyan ng advice na yung mga tao na connected sa Farmally International ay fugitive na pugante sa bata sa Taiwan kasi meron silang warrants of arrest. Yung mag-amang Huang at pati si Mr. Zheng na nakilala nyo sa video. Uh, so, Tang si Ichi Lian, Tawin Kong Si Si Hao Hao, what's a machi doubt having Shenzai Tongjia, or you who see Sin Sang or Nanang Son at Tower? Mr. Chair, Chairman, uh, what Mr. Yang said at that time, uh, yeah, the company is in good standing and there were no records or anything. Pero siguro naman, Mr. Yang, dahil close nga kayo ni Presidente, matagal na. Concerned pa rin kayo sa kanya. So siguro na nabalitaan nyo na kahit sa dyaryo lang itong mga naging problema ng family, hindi ba kayo nag, uh, na concern na sabihan siya na Mr. President, ito palang kumpanya, eh, ang mga tao nito ay wanted for financial crimes, may standing warrant pa nga sa, sa Taiwan. Hindi nyo ba siya in-inform? Uh Okay, Mr. Chairman, what Mr. Yang said that, you know, uh, during the 2017, he introduced, uh, then things didn't transpire for potential business opportunity. Then after that, they have no more communication. Oh, well, alam po natin, Mr. Chairman, na uh, uh, sinamahan ni, ni Mr. Yang, si Presidente, sa opisina ng... 
uh, full win international sa Shamin no 2015. So okay, at least sinabi ni Mr. Yang na nagkita pa sila nung 2017. Pero I really find it hard to believe po na at this point in time, hindi naisip ni Mr. Yang na importanteng i-inform at i-advise si Presidente na fugitives na at uh, ma, ma price si Presidente na yung mga tao, yung mga kumpanya na engaged yung gobyerno niya ngayong panahon ng pandemya ay wanted for criminal activities. Medyo mahirap po paniwalaan, Mr. Chairman. I'll leave it at that for now po. Salamat, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Okay, Mr. Chairman, what Mr. Yang said that after the 2017, there has been no more communication after. Uh, there's no more business, so there's, uh, and then he doesn't always have an open. Sorry, let me just re clarify. So, 2017, after they made their feasibility study, uh, yeah, after they made their feasibility study, uh, then Okay, then so after 2017, uh, when they made their feasibility study, there's no business that progress. And then after that, there's nothing more to report to the person because there's no more any progress or anything about the situation. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, come again, Mr. Chairman. Pinasinungalingan po ni Lincoln. He, that when he negotiated by telephone, which is really weird, uh -huh. they took their word for it because sila sabi niya, si Michael Yang ang garantor. Ta shuo na, li ndi shuo ma, ni yo bang ta jie shao ma, ta men jie zai dian hua shang mian gou tong ma. Ran hou na, jiu shuo na, ni jiu shuo gen ta men jiang shuo, ta men kai si jie ge Lincoln. Uh, Mr. Chairman, yes, uh, Lincoln may also have his people in China who could also probably uh, discuss and trans uh, negotiate it with these suppliers. Question is, sabi ni Lincoln, pagkausap niya yung mga tao sa China, sinasabi niya, ang backup niya dito, or worse to that effect, I see Michael Yang. And that was okay. Ta peho de chi chi ren shi yang zong. Back up, Yang Tong. Mr. Chairman, may I interject on this part? Just a moment, please. I'm asking somebody a question. Sorry, Mr. Chairman. Okay, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Yang said that he just simply introduced them. All right, so you want to limit it that, but Lincoln Chen denies, Lincoln Ong denies it. So now we're saying Lincoln Ong is lying and that he is showing that you uh, he is misrepresenting your name. Is that correct? Very quickly, Mr. Chair, just very quickly on, on that point that you raised, Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Mr. Pangilinan. Yes, yes thank you. Uh, uh, tanong kay Mr. Lincoln Ong, pag sinabing garan, nag-garantee siya, si Mr. Uh, Yang, i-garantee niya na mababayaran yung supplier ng gobyerno. Tama yun, ano? Kayo, kasi babayaran kayo ng gobyerno. Tama? Tama. Yes po, Mr. Chairman. Yes po. In other words, uh, well, sig siguro ang naisip nyo, ang lakas ni Mr. Yang sa gobyerno, kaya niyang uh, ma-insure na yung bilyong-bilyong halaga ay mababayaran ng gobyerno. Tama ba yun? But yun ang, yun ang, yun ang, yun ang uh, guarantee na binibigay ni Mr. Yang na lalabas yung pondo ng gobyerno. At oh, mababayaran ng yes, Tayo at babayaran ninyo yung supplier. Tama ba yun? That's correct. Anyway, you already answered it. Uh, you already answered yes uh, to my question, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Okay. Chairman, okay. for the record lang about the answers of Mr. Yang earlier. Yes. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mahirap lang talaga maniwala na since 2017, wala nang komunikasyon si na Mr. Yang at si Presidente. Because just very recently, the past days, dinipensahan very emotionally ni Presidente si Mr. Yang. At yung alam nating lahat, yung ganyang mga matagal na at close na mga relationship, reciprocal yun. So kung may care at concern si Presidente kay Mr. Yang, naniniwala ako na ganun din ang pakiramdam ni Mr. Yang kay Presidente. So mahirap talagang paniwalaan na wala ng communication. Just for the record, Mr. Chairman, salamat. Yes, the statements are noted. I just want to say that he was referring to the fact that he never saw Farmali after that meeting, which is belied by Lincoln Ong. He didn't uh, talk about the president. He was, because in fact, he was, as you say, defended by the president all the time. Mr. Chairman. And, uh, He's actually asking about the president. Right, right, right. Mr. Okay, okay, Mr. Mr. Wong. Wong. On this. Yes, Mr. Wong. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So um, to put light to the whole history of what happened, it's after the meeting with the president in March 2017, um, uh, my com ex um, the Taiwan family instructed me to pursue the expansion to the Philippine market. But as we reached the, uh, the end of um, 2018, they started to show no interest to further development of, the, of, of this in the Philippine market. Who so did that, you show no interest? The, my previous company, the Taiwan family, showed no more interest in continuing. No interest in what? To build, the plan was to build a plant a manufacturing plant in the Philippines. So you're but saying you have no more interest in putting up a plant? The Taiwan family. Well, so how can you have a Taiwan family invested when you have already destroyed your name in Taiwan? I'm talking in 2018, um, at the end of 2018, Mr. You had no more interest in investing in the Philippines. Why, Not did me. you ever have that? Is Not that me. what you told the president, you were going to invest in the Philippines? Yes, we told the president. The meeting in 2017, March, was that yes. the Taiwan family, the listed company, was to build a manufacturing plant in the Philippines. Where in the Philippines, if I may ask? They haven't, they didn't decide on it because they didn't. So it was called inkoi, in expectancy. You don't know where you're going to invest. You just say, I want to meet the president because I might invest. Is that correct? There was a uh, intent. That's, what, to that's, that's, that's how I take it. We did look at a few locations, but none was um concluded but i just want to share what, what was concluded you cannot conclude on the basis of an of a, uh of a in a, a desire to invest in something that you have not said so and you don't even know where to invest it uh, mr chairman i cannot represent the entire board of that taiwan yes, family you can. yes you can i cannot i'm only no, no, i'm not going to argue with you that's no, your no, thing sorry, sorry mr chairman i just want to say Obviously you cannot represent anymore because the board's, uh, the, the reputation of Taiwan for Mali has been sinked or terribly destroyed in Taiwan. Is that correct? You only made known of this in in August 2021. Even if you knew it in 2018 or 2020 or in 2094, it is already destroyed because that was a very big scam that was pulled. $50 million was lost, correct? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I just would like to answer on why the, Mr. No, Michael Yang. You're saying that you no longer, you know, as if the Philippines is going to jump at your investment. You know, I got a lot of investments for Taiwan in the Philippines. And they put in their money. They borrowed money. It was all on the up and up, in the open. Yes. yes. And, and when they said I they were going to come over, uh, Lee we said they were going to go south. You're not even Taiwanese, you're Singaporean. That's, that's precisely why I left the company in 2019, well, because I felt embarrassed that a company will make its commitment to a country to do something and not pull through. You know, we're poor. I, I, we're no, a poor country. I, and I you felt very you embarrassed by a commitment, and now you're going not to invest. Is that what you're trying to say? I felt embarrassed by Take my previous... Take investment elsewhere. I you don't want to do business with people who trick the, the, the stock market, where public people or people buy their stocks out of trust for the company. Is that what you're trying to say? We'll answer you right now. I certainly wouldn't want to do business with you. Okay, okay. You don't even know where your father is, right? I, I don't where know. Do where do you think your is. father is right now? I don't know. Probably 
I don't sympathize with you. Because I lost my father many years ago and I still pine for him. Okay? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I just feel like... I, just... I mean, I, I'm not trying to argue. I just want to tell... Who's you... arguing? I'm not arguing with you. I, 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 I may have been portrayed as I'm arguing with you. As, as you apologize. said that. I didn't say that. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I just want to say why Mr. Michael Young said he didn't know about Pharmony Pharmaceutical Corporation. Just after that, after in 2019, when I quit the previous Taiwan company, I was very embarrassed. I was embarrassed to everyone. I don't I'm know. Sure you were. Yes. I was. And so I did not inform Mr. Michael Young when I set up my own company. Well, nobody said that, all right? And I intentionally asked. Nobody said that, but it cannot be denied that Mr. Farmerly, Farmerly came in with Mr. Young directing traffic when you went to see the president. I didn't see you engaging in a very lively talk with the president, and you can speak English. I didn't see your father in a lively conversation with the president, and I'm sure he, didn't, he, doesn't, uh, he speaks English very well because he's from Singapore. But Mr. Michael Young was very, very ebullient. He was the master of ceremonies. I'm not here to defend Mr. Michael Young. I'm here to defend. Uh, that's what I thought you were doing. Uh, no, definitely not. I'm here to okay. defend. I take your word for it then. Yeah. I just want to say on record that um, even though he didn't know about this Pharmacy Pharmaceutical Corporation, when we received the bid for the PPEs and the BGIs, um, the quantum was so large, we seek all the resources we could find. And I asked Lincoln to approach Michael Young to help with the supplies. And so perhaps, you ask him, you ask him yeah. to get help in the supply. And the funding. And the funding. Yes. Why, is he a man of great means? He owns a, a building, I think, in Davao. Uh, he started selling telephones. Because we... Cell phones? We, because he, <laughs> I think he is a successful businessman, a Chinese businessman with a lot of connections in China with all these supplies. And so uh, I, he's very well connected. Okay, we're willing to accept that because I can see that he was even invited uh, uh, to go to China and he gets a lot of, uh, uh, you know, strength from uh, his friendship with our president. So I, I will leave it at that. But I he was suggesting anything, but you're the one suggesting that he's very, but you see, we're just reacting to what Mr. Michael Young said that after that meeting, you never talked with him. Now you're saying that you wanted Mr. Yang to help you in China because he's very well connected, correct? Yes, and he didn't know it was me. Answer the question, yes or no? I asked Lincoln if he could talk to Mr. Michael Yang to help PPC, Family Pharmaceutical Corporation, which he did not know it was owned by me. Well, I have a share in that company. Yeah, but, but, but you were with him. And uh, later on, earlier on, you said, you ask yourself so that because he was such a big man in China and therefore you needed his help. Am I, am I wrong? I do not Did I hear you wrong. I said what Mr. Chairman, what I said is I asked Lincoln to approach Mr. Michael. Yeah, Young. Don't, don't mumble. Just say it. Uh, Mr. Chairman, what I said was I asked Mr. Lincoln on to approach Mr. Michael Young and omitting the details that I was actually a shareholder of Family Pharmaceutical Corporation. There you go. So you asked Mr. Lincoln Ong because you needed Michael uh, Young support to get uh, clout in China. Yes. Did that that's you correct. correctly? That's correct. Okay, thank you. Now I will ask you another question, if I may. Yes, Mr. Chairman. How old are you? I'm 31 years old, Mr. Chairman. Very young. Very young. And... Uh, you know, when you first met the president, that was about what? Five years ago? Four years ago? Uh, in 2017, yes. About 27, 26, would you say? Yes, that's correct. And uh, you're a very strong entrepreneur because uh, you're bidding for billions of pesos worth of uh, uh, medical products such as, uh, you know, uh, masks and uh, PPEs, right? And you got them, right? Yes, we were awarded the bids. Somebody got them, right? Yes, we, the company was awarded. Who was it who told you, uh, who encouraged you to go uh, to PSDBM? 
but you're new here. I think based on our my recollection, there was already um, procurement by PSDPN from the Chinese circle. I think it was maybe referring to that um, military plane and military vessel where they went to deliver the goods. So we felt that if they are procuring in that manner, we should try to you know, put ourselves out there because uh, Mr. Lin. You, you got to use the plane, right? Right. We did not use the plane. We heard about okay, someone using the plane. Then. What does that got to do with my question? My question is, how did you get to know that there were big deals to be made in PSDBM? Who told you that? There was um, talk in the Chinese communities that there is perhaps a procurement by the PSDBM. You're so lucky. Like Mr. Lau is so lucky. You got 8.7, 8.9 billion, right? 8.8 .8 billion, right? Miss, um, a yes. Bit more. Yes. I don't, I don't understand the question, Mr. Chairman. It's very clear. You're so lucky you got 8.8 .8 billion contracts, not including 2021. Um, I would say, Mr. Chairman, that we were lucky to be awarded, but we worked hard to get it delivered. Oh, yes, of course you work hard. You got it without with the 650,000 capital, 625,000 peso capital. I don't think you can get to first base in China with that kind of capital or in America. Or in Taiwan, with 625,000, you can get 58 million pesos. Let's start with that. $1 million contract. And then later on, it went up to as high as 3.8 billion. All right? Mr. Right? Chair, just, just very quickly, one, one quick question. Was he aware, Mr. with your permission, that uh, FD, the FDA did not, they did not have a license uh, to operate uh, from the FDA to import uh, uh, these uh, products that they brought in, that they only got it in, in, in uh, January of uh, 2021 after bringing in billions already. Was he aware of that? He, 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 he is saying they were working hard. You, 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 you know, you were able to get it by cutting so many corners. We have FDA LTOs since March 2020. I don't understand the honorable senator's right? question. Charade, Charade Puno was there in your meeting with the president. So they are on notice that you are, they were brought to Mindanao to meet with you, correct? You had to work hard to get uh, Charade Puno to be there. This is the FDA uh, general, uh, the director general at the time. I believe Ms. Um, director, ex director general Puno was not no longer FDA director since <laughs> I can't remember when. Yeah. Senator Delon, did you have a question? No, I yield to Senator Luxon. Yes. Oh, yes, Mr. Senator Luxon. Just a couple of quick questions. Uh, when you submitted your letter of intent to PSDBM, I will address this to Mr. Ling Yang or Mr. Wang Chu Yen. What documents did you attach to your letter of intent? Mr. Chairman, uh, during that time, letter of intent plus sample only. No, no, no. What did you attach? Ano mga dokumento ang inattach ninyo sa letter of intent? Yung, uh, Mr. Chairman, yung first, uh, first letter of intent namin, it's only, uh, only the, the letter of intent plus the sample only. Wal wala naman pong mga attachment ng time niyan. But eventually, you submitted documents, di ba? Pertinent documents like the GIS or Articles of Incorporation. Hindi kayo na-require ng PSDBM? Uh, that's for the field jeps, uh, field jeps po, Mr. Chairman. Pero after nung namin mag-submit submit po ng LOI, uh, mag-send mo naman po sila ng RFQ sa amin. And then we just have to comply yung mga requirements po sa yes. RFQ. Yes, ano yung mga requirements that you submitted? Ah, uh, na po ah. GIS. Eh, yung, uh, give me a few seconds po. Well, general information sheet, di ba? Paano kayo ma-identify kung wala kayo attachment? Paano ma-identify yung corporation? Just a mere letter of intent with nothing attached to your letter of intent and there you go. You were awarded. 
Uh, sandali, sandali lang po, uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Medyo natataranta po, uh, pero allow me... Uh, yeah, relax lang. ...to pull out the record. Uh, Mr. Chairman, na uh, dito ang... Ang requirement po nung, nung sa RFQ is Mayor's Permit for year 2020, uh, income tax return, uh, NF, uh, net financial contracting capacity, and field jeff's registration number upon receive of a uh, uh, notice of award yun po yun po okay. yung para sa mas po okay so doon sa GIS di ba naka-indicate syempre yung pangalan ng mga incorporators lahat personal circumstances no uh, pati address kung Filipino lahat di ba yes po okay so, I have here your articles of incorporation, yung Parmali Pharmaceutical Corporation. I notice here, si Mohit Dorgani, Justin Garado, and si Wang Chuyen, iisa yung address, 14A, Makinley Place Condominium. Did they share the same uh, residence, the same address? I can confirm that, yeah. During that time po, yeah, yes okay. po. So, ang tanong ko ngayon kay Attorney Lau, di ba sa Bayanahan 2, I know this because I was the one who uh, proposed the amendment to this, ano, Section 4U ng uh, 11469. Uh, 11494. Okay. Ang sinasabi dito, okay, tama lang yung expeditious. Uh, Procurement of the following as the need arises in the most judicious, economical, and expeditious manner. Pag sinabi mo judicious, di ba dito papasok yung due diligence? Yung economical, dito papasok yung mas mababa? Attorney Lau? Yes, sir. Okay. Hindi mo napansin sa dokumento ng, uh, sa articles na iisa yung address ng tatlong incorporators? That was not required, Mr. Chairman. What is required is that it be uh, procured in the most expeditious manner. And we made sure, make, Mr. No, Chairman. No, expeditious is under pay. Bayanihan 1. Yes, we do not pay. Two. Yes, we do not pay unless they deliver. That is the most crush, crucial part of it all. Kasi kung ang concern po natin, paano kung nag-release tayo ng bayan tapos hindi sila nag-deliver? Yun po ang sagot nun, how basic it is. We don't release money unless they deliver. Kung pupunta tayo sa ibang agencies, kahit lahat ng agencies sa buong Pilipinas, they bid. They have all the documents on its face. Pwede niyan i-comply. Pagkatapos nagbigay ng 15%, what happens? They don't show up. Nawawala ang 15% ng government, the down payment. But in this instance, the primary question is this. Kasi ang layo-layo na ng discussion natin. The basic question should be this. Did the government in this instance release money before having the items delivered? <coughs> Did the government release money ben, ng, of, ng, ng supplier? Never in once in the instance of PSDBM that that happened to Farmali. They ben, delivered uh, before we paid, after inspection. Uh, yes, we are being lectured by this uh, attorney Lau. Can <laughs> you yield the floor to me for one second? Yes. Uh, Mr. Lau. Yes, sir. <laughs> Mr. Lau, you are aware of the requirement of that the contracting party, that the supplier must uh, must comply. You might they, that they must show a net financial contracting capacity as required by Republic Act uh, 9184. You are aware of that. Yes, that is for infrastructure yeah. contracts, Mr. Chairman. Yes. That's, yes, that's uh, the answer. Now, is there anything? Yes, wasn't it mentioned earlier by one of you that uh, they, they look for net financial capacity? Okay, so how do you determine the financial contracting capacity of a supplier? That is not um, one of the requirements in a common supply. Mr. Lau, you are not, you're saying it is not a part of the requirement. It is part of the requirement in a infrastructure contract. This in is a supply agreement. In a supply agreement, you're saying it is not required. Yes, during Bayanihan 1, Mr. Chair. It is not required. Doesn't ordinary common sense 
and prudence dictate that you should not award 54 million pesos worth of a contract for a company with 625,000 capitalization. You keep on being technical and say that is not required. But wouldn't prudence, I'm still asking you the question, wouldn't prudence require you to at least raise a red flag when you award 54 million pesos worth of supply to a company with 625,000? Two things to answer that. First point, the 54 million was not awarded one time. Second, uh, three points. Okay. Are, second point, the award was built... Uh, was established time and again, point by point, transaction per transaction. If you fulfill one transaction, okay. it's just your credentials. But the next transactions it build up your second credential. Third point, Mr. Chairman, common sense dictates that we preserve the money of the government. And how did we preserve the, gov the money of the government? We did not pay a single centavo to the supplier until they delivered. That is the highest safeguard that we can do for the country. They Jesus deliver. Christ. Will you it, please stop lecturing, Mr. Lau? Stop I'm lecturing on, 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 oh, okay. Uh, okay, I have, re we have heard you, okay? We have Thank heard you. you. The point remains, okay, how much was the first contract given to Farmerly? I think the best person to answer that is the PSDPM staff. I don't have record right. with me, Mr. Chair. No, because you said there were three. Uh, this is 24 million. It's not just one transaction, but several. Question, what was the first contract? Surgical mask, Mr. Chairman. Oh, yeah. first, okay. <laughs> the ITR for 2019, was it submitted? Yes, for I think. Formally? For Mr. Chairman. <laughs> oh, yeah, anyway. Um, Now, let me shift to Mr. Uh, I'll, 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 uh, I'll go back to you later, Mr. Lau. Um, yes, uh, Mr. Young, uh, uh, are you a? Me sure. Are you a uh, licensee of any Pogo license personally? Awesome. Were you granted a Pogo license? You have this No, Mr. Chairman. Are you connected with any company which was granted a Pogo license? You Remember, you're under oath. No, Mr. Chairman. All right. Do, uh, do you have any relative who was granted a Pogo license? Do you have any relative who was granted a Pogo license? Do you have any relative who was granted a If his relative ever has, uh, it has nothing to do with him. I am not saying that it has something to do with you. Just answer me as a fact. Do you have re any relative granted a Pogo license? Do you have any relative who was he is not aware, Mr. Chairman. Um, you, are, you are not aware. You, uh, earlier, your statement was you did, not exert, you did not exert any influence on the grant of any license. Are you changing that now? Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to clarify the question again. You asked if he did not use any influence. No, he was the one who stated that, not me. He was the one who stated that. My question is very simple. Mm. Do you have any relative who is a Pogo licensee? He doesn't know, Mr. Chairman. You do not know. He doesn't know, Mr. Chairman. He's not involved. Nobody said he's involved. But now, do you have any relative 
uh, who is uh, a stockholder of any company who is a licensee of Bobo? You may or he doesn't know Mr. Chairman. He doesn't know. All right. So let's accept that and I will uh, confront you later uh, next the hearing on the evidence of this. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairman. Yes, uh, uh, yes uh, Senator Andiveros. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a quick manifestation on the uh, related to the interpolation of the minority leader, uh, former Yusek Lau. So I have to call Senator Pagadinan after you so that Senator Pagadinan yes, doesn't Chair. think he's forlorn. Okay. Just Go a brief ahead. manifestation, uh, Mr. Go Chair, ahead. not a question. Go ahead. And Kiko. Um, uh, Yusek uh, Lau said something that was earlier contradicted by uh, a reply given by. Uh, Mr. Uh, Ong, uh, because Mr. Ong earlier said na binayara nila yung suppliers nila sa China from money received from the government. So admission po yun, di ba, na wala silang financial capacity. Walang financial capacity ang formally. So nakakapagtaka, inamin yun in effect ng formally kanina, tapos uh, napaka- uh, maramdamin yung statement ni former Yusek Lau uh, to the contrary. Kung alam yun ng formally, bakit hindi man lang alam yun ng PSDBM? Another sign, Mr. Chairman, of the absence of due diligence. Salamat po, Mr. Chairman. Salamat, Sen. Kiko. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Senator Antibero. Senator Pangilinan is uh, recognized. Please proceed. Sorry, yes, I have a few questions, uh, DBMPS, on the delivery of uh, PPEs. Uh, first question is that uh, there was a delivery on uh, April uh, of uh, PCR, R, R, P, R, PCR kits, uh, test kits, is that not right? Uh, April of 2020 by Farmally. Um, Mr. Lau? Um, I think PSDBM has records on that. Um, no, you, you signed the, the record. Okay. Uh, I, you I signed it. With the government, I will answer to the best of my ability based on my knowledge. But uh, well, I don't this was the first, this was the first uh, delivery, I think, of uh, PCR tests in April of 2020. So, uh, well, the record is there. It was submitted to us. Uh, PCR uh tests testing kits except that the information that we received from ir ritm personnel was that the first delivery in april was incomplete was not a complete uh, delivery because uh the swab the swabbing and the extraction came in june uh in other words the purchase of the testing kits that arrived in April could not be used until the swabbing extraction kits followed uh, sometime in July, uh, in June, sorry. Uh, can the DOH confirm this if Mr. Lao cannot uh, 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 remember? Uh, let's, I cannot answer as to the confirmation. No, no, I'm already asking the DOH. If you cannot answer, I'm already asking the DOH to confirm this. And the RITM, are they here? I ask this because uh, many local governments uh, in April were complaining that they were provided with testing kits that they could not use because there was no extraction kits delivered. And it turns out when we looked at the documents, the documents will show that they first purchased, delivered the testing kits in April, but the extraction followed in June. So from April to June, yung mga dineliver ng April, hindi magamit at halos siguro mag-expire na. Can the RITM or uh, someone from the DOH uh, confirm this? 
Uh, Mr. Chairman, can I ask that uh, Director Salia Carlos be uh, recognized? Yes, please. Before, before you do that, I was called by, I had a call from a very, uh, from Senator Soto because he had to leave. I believe, uh, Mr., uh, with, with all due respect uh, to uh, uh, Senator Pangilinan, uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Wang, he asked me to address a question to Mr. Wang. Yes, please, please. Uh, we will. Mr. Wang? They're still looking for the answer or preparing the answer. Go ahead. Yes. Go ahead, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Mr. Wang? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Lincoln, uh, your man is about to be arrested, and I was about to ask him for his address. Is there anything you want to say uh, that will uh, possibly exculpate him? I think, uh, Mr. Chairman, he firstly he's um, down with COVID and he's sick, so and he's slightly confused. If we are not I, I will beg your pardon. Uh, please speak a little louder and get direct to the point. I just wish to state on record that we did um, re uh, receive Mr. Michael Young's help with um, borrowed money from him to pay for this. You borrowed money from Mr. Young. You're now saying categorically yeah. that you borrowed money from Mr. Michael Young. The company, not personally. The yes, company. Of course, of course, the company. Yeah. I think um, Mr. Lincoln Ong was hesitant to say that because um, it was just courtesy because at a time when we really needed help to source and pay for these things, he offered help. So Mr. Lincoln oh. was just, that's why I want to put it on statement that perhaps it is, this is what caused him to be evasive. And since the money was borrowed, uh, Mr. Lincoln, it was to our accounts and we, we paid for it. Therefore, his statement that it came from a corporate account is correct and factual. So I just want wish the committee to take that into consideration and not cite him in contempt because I think it's just, you know, when someone helped you at a difficult time and you have to say things that might implicate them, you know, it's just very difficult. But um, what he said is factual. We did receive his help, but only after we were awarded the contract. So that is what I want to say. So I hope you can put that in consideration for Mr. Lincoln Ong. Well, I will ask Mr. Lincoln Ong because uh, you are saying that you have knowledge and you have actual knowledge, correct? That uh, Mr. Michael Yang gave money uh, to Farmali. Is that correct, sir? Uh, Mr. Chairman, to be precise, uh, uh, I'll be very honest. Uh, Michael Yang paid, uh, probably advanced and paid uh, the, the stocks. So, I mean, the goods. And how much was that? You're already going uh, to the drowning. Now, please tell the truth. Mr. Chairman, uh, we really need to pull out the record so we can be very precise. No, no, you put I it out the record. Now. I think it's 1,000 plus. 1,000. 1,000. What? I really have to what check the record, Mr. What? Chairman. What? I think he's talking about percentage. I, I have to check the record. I'm not, uh, Mr. Chairman. No, no, no. I'm not this trying is to be evasive, but allow me to pull out the record. Mr. Chairman, I think the arrangement was, uh, since we were not be able to finance these things, and we really needed to do that so that we would not get blacklisted, he offered to borrow us the money so that we would be able to pay for it. And how much was borrowed? Was lent? I don't have the exact number, to be honest, Mr. Chairman. We don't have the exact number. But we would pay him back once we receive the money from the government. Uh, Mr. Mr. Minada Sebiel, you are the certified public accountant of... Uh, yeah. of uh, before, before that, before that uh, Senator Dick, can yes. I just ask him... So at the time that the contract was awarded to you, you had no financing whatsoever because you say it is after the, after uh, uh, after you got the contract that you approached Michael Young. So when you bid it or when you were negotiating to get the contract, you had absolutely no funds 
to buy the supplies. Is we that will, correct? Uh, Mr. Chairman, we are no, no, Yes or no? Uh, no, no. If, At the time that you were awarded, you had no funds yes. to carry out your obligations. Yes, Mr. Correct Chairman. Correct or not? I would say yes, we didn't have sufficient is, funds. Yes, because this uh, law is so arrogant and say that he complied with, <laughs> with all the requirements. So here you are, the basic financial capacity requirement has not been complied, was not available because you, the, the uh, grantee uh, or the one who was given the contract admitted that they had no funds. And then Mr. they Chairman. went to Michael Young. Mr. Chairman, yes. um, there was no requirements submitted to us on the financial requirements. Whatever requirements yes. they were submitted to us, Chige, comply. Don't, and, Mr. Huang, do not argue with me on what the law is. All right? Uh, uh, Mr. So, Mr. okay, so <laughs> we just stick to the facts. The Mr. fact Chige. is you got your financing from Mr. Yang after you got the award. Question, how much was that? For uh, is it, uh, the, the first contract, so 54 million. No, was the Mr. first award. How, how much Mr. did you borrow from Mr. Young? Mr. Mr. Chairman, um, the only contracts that we really seek help on are on the first um, yes. the PPE contract as well as the BGI contract, the first BGI contract. So how much? How much? I don't have that record with me, Mr. Chairman. But out of yeah. surgical mass, we did not seek help from if if I'm my collections are right, I think I'm correct. That we did not seek help from Mr. Michael Young for the surgical mass. And as well yeah. as for the A Star, it was funded by the company also. And for the our contracts this year, we did not seek any more help from him. If we could not seek help from anyone, we would not. But it was a time where I guess the intention was we are three young men. We are greedy. We wanted to bite off a bigger contract. Well, yes. And yes, perhaps you we agree. Are too, perhaps uh, too uh, Wang, Mr. Huang, Mr. Huang, I don't I don't fault you for your ambitions. Uh it is natural that as a young businessman you try to get the the most and the best contract. What we are talking about is from the Philippine side, there were certain basic requirements that must be complied with among which is the uh, financial capacity of your company. You won the contract without a single peso, and that is why afterwards you have to go to Mr. Michael Young. Those are facts, and uh, uh, whether or not uh, uh, that is, uh, uh, it's no longer a question of whether or not that's true, because those are facts established, the matter of the consequence uh, or, or, or the implications uh, let's not discuss that here uh, because we are just uh, looking after the facts and how the law will be applied. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. If I can have a short chairman. reply, Mr. Chairman, if I may have a short reply. We realize that um, we've caused a huge ruckus, but we just want to make sure that people don't think that we are a dummy for Mr. Michael Young. We, are, we have thoughts, we have ambitions, we, have, uh, we work on our resources, we plan. No. So, I never said interested. that you're. We never said that you're a dummy, Mr. Huang. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is that you did not have the capacity to be awarded millions and millions of pesos worth of contract, and that is where we find uh, fault. Uh, not that you're a dummy. I'm not saying that. Mm -hmm. What I'm but, saying is you had no funds available. You got this contract. You went to Mr. Yang and got funds from him, loaned funds from him. So those are the facts. But Mr. Chairman, we did deliver. Mr. Chairman, let me just let me just finish, Senator Luxon. And this is all contrary to what Michael Young said that he never had any dealings with Farmari since May, since March 17. That is very patent, right, Mr. Wang? I, Mr. Chairman, I do not understand why Mr. Young would say that. I thought he did a good thing. No, no, I didn't ask you to interpret what it is yeah. very clear. He said he never had any dealings with Farmali afterwards. And Mr. Lincoln was really very evasive because he could not very well say Mr. Young's name. And now, cat is out of the bag. And up to now, 
I am sorry you're still being evasive. We want to know how much was given, and I'm expecting an honest answer before this committee considers whether to continue putting Mr. Lincoln on uh, under arrest. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, if I may, the two families are not the same family, so I, I just need to clarify. The current the family pharmaceutical creation, its shareholders are accurate and honest. Mr. Chairman. Yes, uh, Senator Lakshan. Yeah, going further, earlier in his testimony under oath, Mr. Young averred that he had nothing to do with the, the transactions made by Parmali except to introduce uh, Mr. Lincoln Wong to the Chinese supplier. So I'd like to just put that on record again, just to emphasize that Mr. Yang himself has been very evasive and he lied under oath uh, before this uh, committee, Mr. Chairman. That's all. That's what I. Mr. Chairman, can we be heard? Mr. Chairman, can we be heard, Mr. Chairman? Let the uh, chairman, uh, excuse me, Mr. Yang, you'll get your chance. Senator Lakson and Senator Dillon are correct. And I thank uh, so far Mr. Wang for coming straight. And uh, now what you have is a situation where uh, it shows, shows that there was no capability to begin with, at least in the beginning, that the financial conditions of a contract with PSDBM was not met. I don't know about the technicals, that is another requirement, and the legal requirements. And now uh, you're saying that, in effect, that Mr. Lau, Mr. Yang actually lied to the committee. And that is not only by me, not only by Mr. Lakson, not only by Mr. Delon, not only by Senator Hunter-Virus, but by the whole world who listened to you. We all heard the same thing. All right? Go ahead. Now you may answer. Just. Just, just for the record, just for the record, Mr. Chairman, on the record, from April 16 to April 20, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, for a period of five days, Parmali got a total of 287,860,000 worth of contracts on a 625,000 capitalization. <laughs> That's why uh, uh, all the protestations of uh, of uh, Mr. Lau uh, will not uh, uh, cover the fact that there was undue favor granted to Farmali, who was not qualified at all, whether uh, by any standard, to be awarded two hundred eighty-seven million. Uh, uh, 860,000 in a period of five days uh, from uh, April 16 to 20. And that is why they had probably to borrow money from Mr. Young. It's just a question of trying to find out how much money they borrowed and how much interest they paid. I don't think Mr. Young is a philanthropist who will lend to them uh, huge amounts of money. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's thank all you, the record. Mr. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Uh, just a moment for the record. Yeah, I would just like to expand on what Senator Delon said, and I've shown this earlier. By May 4, or by let's say April 23, after those weekly transactions made by PSDBM with Farmily, they had already ramped up 1 billion 875 million. 1.8 billion. That is what they have ramped up. And by May 8, 2020, they ramped up a total, and that includes now the famous PhilHealth, uh, the, uh, the uh, PPEs of costing 3.82 billion. And when you add that to 1.8 billion, that went the whole month of March, uh, April rather, April, they ramped up 5.6, 5, 5, 697 million. Uh, Mr. Frank, uh, Senator Frank. And if you go, yes, on, I stand corrected. Yes. And if you go on to June 9, uh, in a period of two months, Senator Delon, they wrapped yes. up a total of 8.5 billion pesos. And so much for 
Mr. Young not uh, helping out uh, and not uh, interfering or not even having any dealings with family. Uh, yes, Mr. Young, you may now answer. Okay, you can answer. Uh, Mr. Lee, wait a minute. We are going to get them in the back. We are not going to get them in the back. I am going to get them in the back. 后面来找我，我去给他们介绍。他们有的人不过，我有介绍借钱，就是帮他们垫资。我没有拿钱借给他们。Okay, Mr. Chairman, what Mr. Yang is saying, ah,、uh, on the earlier part in terms of ah、uh, how ah、uh, in, in the earlier part of the contracts that formally ah、uh, obtained their contracts, we have totally nothing to do with those transactions. Only towards latter, ah,、uh, we did introduce and and eventually. Uh, when they had difficulty, we introduced them to friends who helped them make those advances. Sorry, Mr. Chairman. Okay. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, good. So it's not true that since March 17, you have not had any dealings with farmers. I'm sorry again, Mr. Chairman. So since March 17, when you met in Davao with the president, what you said is we never had any dealings with Farmerly, and now you're saying that in the whole uh, proceedings afterwards, they needed money, and you provided them with the money. Mr. Chairman, it's quite clear. Me. Yeah, Mr. Do Chairman. Do you understand English? You're already raising Mr. your hand. It has not been translated yet. No, <laughs> we, have, we have been translating. You understand English, Mr. Yang, right? No, we've been translating, Mr. Chairman. No, no, you were not. <laughs> You're listening to me. On mute, Mr. Chairman, we were translating. Oh, no, come on. <laughs> Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Yang. Now you're on mute. We're not happy about what's going on here. But... <laughs> 嗯，一七年他们来有做个花米粒，后面他们在做个花米粒，我们是不知道的。Okay, Mr. Mr. Chairman, what Mr. Yang would like to express is that there are two different formally that's been registered. One was 2017, which is totally different from the one that、uh, is in question right now, which is formally pharmaceutical. The one in 2017 was formally、uh, biological. And the it's two very different there. companies, Mr. Chairman. And、uh, if I may, I mean the the argument doesn't hold, Mr. Chairman. Sorry. But Go ahead. You answer it. I don't want to answer it. Go ahead. <laughs> it doesn't hold.、Uh, as earlier manifested by Senator Lacson, that he said he only introduced the suppliers and had nothing else to do with that after the introduction of the suppliers. And、uh, Mr. Lincoln Ong, and now we find out belatedly that he was also one of the funders and the creditors, as admitted. So it, it, the, the argument, that the family of 2017 and the family of 2021, are different. Does not hold water in the in view of the earlier testimony that he did not. He only said he introduced them, and that's it, which is obviously false. Mr. Chairman, before I answer that, the chair certainly warns the interpreter of Mr. Yang. You do not put it on mute. Sorry. You do not put it on mute.、Oh, sorry, Mr. Chairman. Waiting. Okay, sorry, Mr. Chairman. We have a backup interpreter here. Precisely、okay. why the chairman got another interpreter.、You、sorry, apologize for that, Mr. Chairman.、Uh, I'm just telling you, in no uncertain terms, I hold you in contempt. I apologize, Mr. Chairman. You do not mute. Okay. All right. Yes,、uh, Senator Monteveros. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a quick manifestation that、um, although totoo na magkahiwalay na kumpanya ang Farmally Pharmaceuticals at saka Farmally Biologicals, hindi pa rin、uh, off the hook sa inquiry na ito, Mr. Chairman, kahit ang Farmally Biologicals. 
because of the role of Miss Rose Nonolin in that company. So, mas, mas itatanong ko pa yon uh, when my turn comes, Mr. Chairman. Salamat, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chair, just just very quickly, I am yes. I am still I waiting for that. the. Yes. <laughs> Please continue. <laughs> yes, thank you. I, I asked earlier about the uh, uh, the extraction kits that came four months, April, May, Ju three months after the RT uh, PCR kits. You cannot use the PCR kits without the extraction, but the delivery was for three months apart. Uh, this is precisely why we're concerned about the capacity of Farmily, uh, whether it's financial or uh, in its expertise in delivering the needed uh, equipment, the needed uh, supplies that would help us address the, the uh, spread of the virus. Uh, the information, I will repeat, that was relayed to us was the delivery of the PCR test kits in April was could not be used because the extraction uh, equipment was not present. If Farmily was a reputable company, I would like to think they would have delivered both the extraction kit and the uh, RT-PCR kit so that they could be used immediately. Uh, that's why we're clarifying this and uh, uh, a, a USEC from, uh, from DOH uh, should be able to clarify this. And also the, um, the uh, RITM. Is it true that the RITM had no use for those testing kits that were delivered in April or pretty much were useless because the extraction uh, uh, equipment uh, uh, was not uh, delivered at the same time? Mr. Chairman, I uh, believe uh, that uh, uh, Director Sanya Carlos is already on board. Uh, yes. Kindly uh, acknowledge her. Uh, Director Sanya Carlos, please. RITM. RITM Sanya Carlos. And and uh, is she there now? And, and uh, before she answers, just for the record, earlier Mr. Uh, Hang Hang was it Hang said that they had the LTO, which is a uh, license to operate. Yes, they did, but their license to operate in uh, at that time was for drugs importation of drugs, not of medical devices. The importation of the license to import medical devices came in January of 2021. FDA gave them that license to import medical devices in January of 2021. They didn't have that license when they brought in these PPEs. Uh, they had a license for drugs, importation of drugs, not medical devices. So again, maybe Mr. Hang is, uh, Wang is being misled or being given information that is incomplete. Now we go to uh, DOH. Can you answer, please, DOH? Thank you. Uh, just to clarify, uh, Senator, um, yes, yes. We, we are basing on recall because we don't have the documents with us right now. But uh, as far as we recalled in the first SEM of 2020, there were indeed stock outs of extraction kits. Uh, we had difficulty having this available, and uh, however, our operations in RITM at least did not stop. Uh, we had enough uh, PCR kits since there were donations coming in, but there were times that we we really had very um, limited stops of the extraction kits. That's yes, all. in other words, you had the testing kits, but your extraction kits were limited. Uh, from uh, March, April, May, and then by June, maybe end of June, the extraction kits finally arrived. Uh, uh, and that's when you, I mean the bulk, and that's when you were able to use those earlier delivered uh, uh, testing kits because finally the extraction kits that was necessary uh, to use to be able to test properly was uh, given. So you're, you're placing that on record. We have the data. We have the information, we, the, deli the, delivery, the delivery receipt and the inspection reports, uh, and the record will bear us out. Uh, if I may just put it on record, uh, in uh, April of 2020, dated April 21, the RT-PCR test kits, 2,000 of them, amounting to 688 million, 
uh, arrived no? and uh, there was an inspection report. The documents are with us. And then in June 10 of 2020, so April to May, May to June, two months later, no? uh, the extraction kits arrived at 245 million. So those, uh, kung mahusay yung uh, farmali at alam nila yung ginagawa nila, hindi dapat dinelay, dapat sinabay yung dalawa para magamit. Yun ang ating punto rito. Uh, kung siguro mas may kapasidad sila at na-check yung kanilang kakayahan at naiintindihan nila yung negosyo, naiintindihan nila yung usapin ng ano bang medical devices ang importante, ano ang kinakailangan, e eh baka hindi na-delay yung testing. At dahil na-delay yung testing, nagre-reklamo sa akin, tatlong LGU, wala daw silang magamit na, na RT-PCR testing kits kasi wala nga yung extraction. Uh, and this was uh, in uh, March uh, and April. Anyway, that's, uh, we, we thank the DOH for clarifying that. Uh, and this also goes to the question of the capacity of the DBMPS. And the, I, I apologize, but uh, even the this should have been uh, raised immediately that bakit wala yung extraction kit nung dineliver yung... Uh, yung uh, 688 million pesos worth of test kits, hindi ba? Uh, and yung DBMPS, si Mr. Owayan was the one who was uh, OIC inspection. Uh, were you familiar with this, that you were actually purchasing testing kits that uh, had little or no use without the extraction kit? Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may. The the records will show that the test kits were indeed uh, awarded on April. However, the records will also show that uh, the extraction kits were indeed uh, awarded on June. Now, we only procure based on the APR as submitted by the DOH. So if the... Yes, but you, you were the one who inspected. You were chief of inspection. Yes, Mr. Did, Chairman. Did you not? Did you not? Or you're a lawyer. You're not a medical technologist. Or you're, you don't have any background in in uh, medical devices. So I, I would think you probably didn't know that you needed the extraction kit. I wouldn't know. I'm a lawyer, uh, But that's the whole point. The DBMPS had no expertise. Relied perhaps on the DOH. Baka pa yung kung DOH ang nagbid nito maintindihan nila yung pinag yung usapin ng ano yung devices na kailangan isabay na bilhin at siguro kung formally uulitin ko kung expert talaga eh dapat alam nila dapat sinabi nila hindi niyo pa pwedeng gamitin yung testing kit kung wala yung extraction di ba and time was of the essence we were we were we needed to test and we needed to trace and we got 688 million pesos worth at least based on the current based on the explanation and the and the data and the documents, we got 688 million pesos worth of testing kits that were useless for two months. Now, the other question is, were they expired by then? I don't know. Uh, how, you know, uh, was there an expiry date on the testing kits? Was this checked? That, uh, I'm told, may mga expiry ang uh, uh, mga kits na yan. So, baka mag expire na nung binili, dapat mas mura. But of course, I'm just placing that on record uh, for, for the guidance of the, of the chair. Uh, I'd like to go back to Mr. Lincoln, uh, just for a few questions. Mr. Uh, Lincoln uh, Ong. Uh, so lumalabas yung agreement na sinasabi ninyo, na pinirmahan ninyo, Mr. Ong, eh may, may money ano yan, may money consideration. Kasi nga, utang, uh, pinondohan, etc. Tama po ba yun? Tama po, Mr. Chair. Okay. So ngayon, Pero, na, uh, Mr. Na, uh, Chairman, pwede, pwede ko po ba uh, ma-clarify na maayos? Uh, eh, mamaya na. Sige. Uh, mayroon pa ako ibang mga ano eh. Sino ang nagsuggest? Uh, with the permission of Senator Pangirinan. Yes. I think there is a... Uh, I will let you continue. Uh, but we would like to have a recess for one hour for dinner uh, because this is going to be a long hearing and you will continue after the recess. Yes. I think it is important that uh, uh, some of the senators also would like to talk. 
uh, to each other uh, so that the next hour will be very important, if that is okay with you. Right. Otherwise, I will let you finish. No, no, it's okay. I will, uh, I will yield to the chair's uh, uh, motion that we suspend. I cannot move. You have to move. Oh, sorry, uh, <laughs> congestion. Uh, and we will move that we suspend uh, upon the advice of the chairman. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, I, I see the Lisa Antiveras. Are you seconding the, seconding the motion? Yes, Mr. Chair. I second the motion. Thank you. There's no objection. So we will, it's now seven, uh, seven minutes after seven. We will uh, come back at seven minutes after eight. Uh, so, uh, all you kind hearts and gentle people who have the highest interest of the country at hand, if you want to listen, we will be back seven minutes after eight o'clock. So, all of you can have a very, very, uh, you know, collected dinner, if you will. Thank you very much. And we will now recess. Session is suspended until 7 after 8.
be, you know, uh, be the source of more stress for him at this time. Uh, maybe we can uh, uh, suspend uh, or uh, uh, suspend the hearing and then resume on Monday. Um, I, I have a number of questions that might be uh, precisely uh, uh, would focus on Mr. Lincoln as well as uh, uh, the inspection reports uh, of the quality and uh, and it might take a, a longer time, Mr. Mr. Chairman. So uh, we don't want you know our uh, resource person to uh, to not be able to uh, uh, well you know uh, he he has COVID he has to rest. Oh. We don't want to further strain him, but we we hope. Uh, we we if we can resume next week, Mr. Mr. Chairman, then uh, proceed with the questions uh, and give the uh, uh, Mr. Lincoln uh, on the chance to rest uh, over the weekend, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman. For the record, uh, since I'm on deck, uh, uh, I I don't want to be the one, Mr. Chairman, to uh, continue to stress him out at this point, knowing that he has COVID. Uh, but I'd like to. We're all interested in the truth. Let's get him to rest over the weekend, and then we can resume uh, Monday or Tuesday, whenever the chairman calls it, uh, so that we can resume the the uh, uh, the, the hearing, Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, uh, the chair. Uh, thank you, Senator Kiko uh, uh I I kind of agree with you uh, that uh, uh, he has COVID, and the Senate is a. Uh, we have a lot of humanitarian people in the Senate, and uh, we're not going to stress him in uh, such a way that uh, he already has en enough stress. I'm sure a lot of people are hounding him right now after what he has said here and what uh, Mr. Wang has already stated. And uh, uh, he is under arrest. That's a parliamentary situation right now. Uh, yes. And I'd like to see uh, Senate President Soto, I see him. Uh, if he can give me the thumbs up, he's already under arrest. So. My position, Mr. Chairman, for the, uh, recommended to the body is that uh, we send the USA there uh, so that he will not be allowed to go out uh, and he will be there. Uh, and if he has to go out, uh, uh, we have to provide an ambulance for him in case he gets sick. But so far as I'm concerned, Mr. President, uh, he, although he's under arrest, uh, there will be custodial guards there to watch him. I. Uh, I hereby order, for example, I hereby order uh, uh, Mr. Lincoln Ong. Are you there, Mr. Lincoln Ong? Yes, Mr. Chair. I want you to send me your, uh, or send the, the committee secretary, uh, the Director General, uh, Mr. Kimbo. Uh, Director General Kimbo, you have the number of Mr. Lincoln Ong? We have his, we have his contact email, Your Honor. Contact email. I need his yes, cell sir. phone. I need his cell phone. He, he can, for privacy sake, sir, he can he can email that to uh, us and his Mr. address Ong, too. I want you to, uh, I want to request you to send your, to uh, call Mr. Uh, the Director General so that it will be confidential where you are, uh, and uh, send him your number and your address right away. Is that okay with you, Mr. Ong? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for understanding. Thank you. I will do that. We're not monsters here. We're trying to uh, just find the truth, and that's all we want to do. Uh, thank you. And the moment that uh, Director General Ong, uh, Director General Kimbo has stated that you have sent him the address, your address, and your phone number, you will be. Uh, he'll have custod custodial uh, uh, people from the USA, uh, our security group in the Senate, uh, so that you can be uh, protected as well as placed under effective custody of the Senate without bringing you to uh, the proper place of custody. Now, you must remember that uh, under decided cases, you can be placed by the Senate in uh, in any uh, uh, jail that uh, would be of our choosing, so long as you are comfortable and have safe keep, uh, not comfortable, but certainly under safekeeping. Uh, Senator Risa, you have a comment, please? Mr. Chair, yes, um, I'm, I'm not going to object to that, but just two quick points. The first, the, the chairman is actually already um, ascertaining that it will happen. I just wanted to say in a, the the motion to place under arrest that per, that person, uh, which was moved and seconded and, and carried by the committee, 
I'm assured that it will be done uh, tonight. And then, Pangalawa, Mr. Chairman, of course, I still would like to, um, I'm still in line to ask questions. I still would like to ask questions of our resource persons. Uh, hopefully, Rose Nono Lim, if she will appear upon Sabina in the committee. Questions for Mr. Michael Yang, for Mr. Huang Suyen, for former USEC Lloyd Lau, and for USEC Uwayan. Uh, Just for the record, Mr. Chairman, that I still want and to Leon. ask them questions on so, the and Monday. The, uh, and, the, and Mr. Leong, right? Uh, Mr. Leong. Mr. Leong is the former undersecretary that is now in the Ombudsman. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Yes. Thank yes, you, Mr. Chairman. Is that it? Yeah, Mr. 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 Yes, I would like just to manifest uh, my support to the manifestation of Senator Isanteveros that instead of suspending the hearing as a, as a, a motion of uh, Senator Pangilinan, why don't we just excuse Mr. Lincoln Ong uh, for today's or tonight's hearing and let's continue with the uh, questions. Uh, to be propounded to the other resource persons because Mr. Huang uh, testified on something that's very significant and interesting before we go on break, uh, Mr. Chairman. So, yes, I, uh, while, uh, while I yield the floor to Senator Tiberos to propound her questions, I will reserve to ask uh, also my questions and I'd like to address those questions to Mr. Huang. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, points are well taken. Uh, <clears throat> let me uh, uh, just ask the other members of the committee what they think about it. Uh, because uh, we can continue, but uh, we can also no, 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 no. until Monday. Uh, yes, uh, well, so uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Um, yes, Senator Dillon. Oh, oh, yes, I'm sorry, sir. Senator Jelong, I, I, Senator, Senator President uh, Soto is uh, raising his hand. I, uh, you understand? Yes. Senator Soto? I agree with uh, our colleagues. Uh, we can excuse, uh, not practically not really excuse uh, Mr. Ong, because if you so order, and it is within the power of the Senate, uh, a, a person who is uh, under arrest can be designated to be kept somewhere. And no. the de designation that I, I, I hear from you is his residence, his place of residence. Therefore, uh, we can excuse him and uh, we will make sure that the uh, office of the sergeant at arms um, keeps him safe uh, wherever he is. You know? um, and then uh, we could perhaps give another hour for, uh, for uh, some of the others mm -hmm. so that we can get rid of the other uh, questions already by our colleagues. And then you can resume on Monday or Tuesday for the rest. Perhaps uh, just give uh, uh, a little more time to our colleagues. Yes. Uh, thank you, sir. Senator President, uh, Senator Gillon. Uh, well, I will be candid to my good friends, uh, Senator Ping and Senator Soto, Senator President. Pagod na po ako. I mean, I've been here. So if it will not harm our uh, hearings, May I propose that we suspend until Monday? Uh, you know, I don't think it will do our 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 hearings any harm if we just rest for the weekend, have resumed on Monday morning, and uh, and, and call back the resource persons. That's my submission. I am willing to submit. Uh, to the chair uh, on this point. Uh, the chair will have a ruling with the uh, permission of my Senate president, our Senate president. Uh, and with, uh, with all due respect, I think the points of Senator Lapson are also well taken. But I think many of us are tired. You can see by the voices and uh, by everyone. It's not only Senator Duran. It's tired. So uh, uh, insofar as this representation is concerned, my feeling is that we should adjourn another uh, recess until Monday morning. Uh, give everybody a chance to rest. Uh, uh, the, as I said, the parliament situation, situation is that Mr. Young and Mr. Uh, uh, Ong is under arrest uh, from the Senate. And uh, uh, with the permission again of the Senate president, uh, I'd like to send some uh, USA people uh, over there to where he's at and uh, uh, put a guard under him uh, for the next uh, 
a uh, few days until uh, we're ready to go again on Monday and uh, depending on uh, uh, what transpires. It has been a good day as far as I'm concerned. Yes, Senator Lisa. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Since it looks like uh, we, uh, by the words of the chairman, that we will be suspending, but just to express my uh, maraming salamat po uh, to Senator Ping. Salamat po. Salamat, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, uh, Senator Delon, did you raise your hand? Oh, yes, I did not. I thought uh, you did. Yeah, and so, I know I did. Uh, just to be sure, and please guide the chair if I forget something. Like I said, uh, these people are under uh, uh, Senate contempt. Con they're under contempt and they're under arrest. Although, in so far as the uh, Mr. Ong is concerned, he has COVID, and we will not, uh, out of humanitarian consideration, we'll let him stay in his home. And I'm still waiting for the signal from the Director General whether he's gotten the address already. Uh, uh, Mr. Ong, have you sent your address and your cell phone to? Uh, the Director General? Sir, it has not reached me yet. Hi. Mr. Ong? Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, uh, nakikinig pa pa ako sa, sa Senate hearing. Sige po, i, I reach out to uh, uh, Director Kimbo now na. Please do it right now because I might change my mind. <laughs> okay, okay. Sorry about that. Okay, okay. So, uh, I'm doing this to protect you uh, because of what transpired this afternoon and for others. No? Uh, so send it and as soon as a uh, way forward by the director general uh that he has gotten it uh we will uh, proceed uh with what uh has been suggested here today suffice it to say that it has been a good day all the senators have been given a chance all the witnesses have been given a chance to expand on what they want to say and uh i think uh uh we thank uh uh mr wang for coming out and making a, a statement that uh, really uh, comes out uh, as we reach closer to the truth. And as they say, the truth will all set us free. And uh, Mr. Wang is a young man, he's got a great future ahead and he should start clean, along with Mr. Lincoln Chen, uh, Lincoln Ong as well. So uh, the, uh, the chair would like to announce to everybody that all of you will have to come back on Monday on Zoom on, on, on uh, Webex, and uh, we will all uh, call on you uh, to continue this hearing. It's a very difficult hearing, as you can see. Uh, a lot of issues have to be undertaken, and I'm just speaking out here so that uh, uh, the Director General can inform me if he has already gotten uh, the text message. Not yet, Your Honor. Still waiting. Well. He can also send a private message to Mr. to Attorney Kimbo. Uh, through We're the, checking the email now. We're opening the email.